I don't trust the press anymore and all this stuff. And See, there's a note of optimism. <laughs> Good. You shouldn't. So I don't know what they're telling me is true. Are we having trouble there? Are we not? It's like this pipeline thing. I don't trust this press. What has happened to the state of the United States journalism? Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. My name is Ari Shafir. Oh, it is a State of the Union address. So I had to leave the country to be able to say all this stuff. I'm in Berlin. Berlin, uh, right now, East Germany. Um, what a wild place this is. Guys, uh, this is, I don't know, Dave Smith's seventh or eighth uh, um, State of the Union address. We've been doing this a long time. And I'm glad we did it. He made a time for his day to come do it. You know Dave Smith from Part of the Problem Podcast. And from a podcast that I'm the president of, Legion of Skanks. Um, now, uh, we talked about a lot of stuff uh, that's going on in America. Um, I'll tell you one thing that stuck with me and bugged me a little bit afterwards was um, the trans thing that's going on. I, I feel a little bit like I'm worried that everybody talking about it is, is uh, acting like the fucking people... In 2003, 4, 5, gay marriage, when they're like, they're going to teach in our schools. It sounds really similar. It sounds really similar and fucking kind of like a little lame. And in Berlin, I'll just tell you this. They're so far fucking past us with gender. They're so far past us. They're not even thinking about the shit we're thinking about. They're like 10 years past us. It's just like they all dealt with their fucking queer shit a, a, a decade ago. And now if you're like, you know, I've just had a lot of time to think about who I am. Everyone's like, oh, fuck off, dude. I'm talking about the fucking trans people, the fucking non-binary people. They're so far past it. They're just like, give me a fucking pronoun. They go to they instantly. They ask, uh, what, what, what's your dog? What, what's, what's their name to your dog? It's just a natural thing. They don't even think about it, and it's very refreshing, so they don't really even talk about it. I mean, it's like talking about, like, do you think black people should be able to vote? You know? They're like, could they be trusted with the vote? <laughs> We're so far past that. I don't know what you even mean. Anyway, uh, Dave and I did a great episode. I have had a blast on the road. I did... Dude, when, every, when everything you've taken into your body hits at the same time and then you smoke a cigarette, I start. you ever get this thing where you just start sweating at a club? You just start sweating and you feel it out of the top of your head, sweating, sweating, sweating. And then, uh, and then you know, you got to take a knee. And then people are like, you all right? And you're like, yeah, but really no. <laughs> but like, you can't bother everybody. You can't tell everybody, like, no, no, I'm not all right. <laughs> I just need some fucking air, dude. I'll be over this. I need my first rodeo, as Diaz would say. Um, oh, can't wait for Romania. Can't wait for Athens. And uh, guys, we got a more pre-sale. I think it's coming May 16th or May 17th. Louisville is coming. St. Louis is coming. Omaha is coming. Um bunch of fucking bunch of fucking cities boston is nearly sold out in february chicago is nearly sold out in november uh get tickets for that uh madison minneapolis I'm trying to think what else you guys gotta get tickets for uh madison minneapolis <sighs> i had all these iowa city and then we're doing fort wayne will be on that pre-sale um, I don't know. Some other shit. Pickups. Hi, everybody. The Wrong Side of History Tour is announcing new dates. That's right. 
new dates. Uh, October 21st at Parks Casino just outside Philadelphia, PA. Uh, use promo code EVIL to get those tickets. They will be on sale May 17th. Um, also, um, Foxwoods Casino, February 3rd in Connecticut. That's right after my Boston dates. And St. Louis, Missouri. Um, oh, Foxwoods, Connecticut. Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri at the Pageant Theater on November 12th. Get tickets May 17th. Uh, you know where. Um, use promo code EVIL at 10 a.m. local time. Also on sale then will be uh, Omaha on November 1st. Um, I don't know when and what days, but it'll be... Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oklahoma City for November 7th and 8th. Springfield, Missouri, November 6th. Fort Wayne, November 13th. And Omaha, we did that. Okay, that's in addition to... Here we go, here we go. What's already on sale? Minneapolis, November 2nd, the Pantages Theater. Madison, November 3rd, Barrymore Theater. Chicago, November 4th, almost sold out at the Vic. Hurry up and get tickets. Those are already on sale. Iowa City, November 5th. Um, Kansas City, November 9th, at the Uptown Theater. Iowa City is at the Englert. Um, a couple more. Indianapolis, November 11th, the Close Memorial Hall. Long live Jimmy Close. And Boston, February 2nd. Two shows. We already added a second show. Uh, the first show is almost sold out. Second show is getting to be almost sold out. I am a bigger draw in Boston than I thought. All of this will be new material, not in Jew. Uh, get tickets now on my website. Um, and that's it. Let's start. Uh, our, it's ourishfear.com. I guess YouTube says you're not supposed to say it, but I, I said it. Um, but jump on those pre-sales. We got uh, 50 seats at uh, except for the clubs. Uh, at 20 bucks a seat. I'm saving for the poor people. Up in the nosebleeds. But if you're a poor person, probably your nose is bleeding from cocaine anyway. Um, all right. Let's get back to the episode. And guys, I don't know. Let's just start the episode. I think we're having a great time. These guys are going to fucking bother me. So there's no sense of uh, continuing to do it when I'm this embarrassed. Um... I guess this shows that this is not a green screen. That'll be a good way to show that it is not a green screen. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think let's start the episode. We went on for about five hours. The The uh, cameras did die. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. The cameras did die about 30 minutes before the end. We went long, bro. So I don't know. Put a fucking American flag up there at the end. That'll work. Um... Can you imagine getting over this thing? Seeing freedom on the other side. Again, you know, me and Dave talk a lot about negatives because that's what comes up, but there are some positives in America. We need to have a fucking cross a wall. Oh, cross a wall to try to get their freedom. People died the week before, I think, getting shot up trying to cross this motherfucker to freedom. What were you going for? The best party, no, the best parties are probably, no, no, the best parties are up here. <laughs> or maybe they're in Kreutzberg. I don't know. <laughs> this place is so fun, dude. If stand-up comedy was, was like more going on here, I would already have moved here. Oh. Uh. <laughs> you just dance. Nobody cares. I can imagine crossing the wall this way and be like, dude, I heard the best fucking warehouse parties are in fucking East Berlin. I got to get over there. How does it feel? That's how the music was. To treat me like you do. Um, all the music was that in Berlin at the same time in America. It's like, girls just want to have fun. <laughs> Thank you, Reagan. Uh, that's not him. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm having a blast. Uh. Okay, let's start the episode. Ari Shavir Skeptank, episode 515. The State of the Union Address with everyone's favorite political commentary, commentator, Dave Smith. I'm going to cross the street and get right up towards the fucking whatever while we do this. Um, yeah, right? I got nothing else to say. Let's start the fucking episode. I'm sure I forgot something. Do an insert! Dave Smith, the 2023 state of the... That's a weird year number. It seems like a big number, 2023. 
Yeah? What do you mean? I just like, I, I had a calendar when I was little and it, and it was like when I was a kid and I had like put up like pictures of like from like magazines. 1954? Of, shut up. But like not that far off. It was like, <laughs> it's like 1985 is alive with like bright bubble letters. I, I had uh, my my wife got me so I'm turning forty in in a week. Don't do it. And uh, I'm gonna I'm thinking about Don't it, do backing it. out of it. Yeah, it's not worth um, it. It doesn't seem good. It doesn't. Uh, although I'm I'm actually fine with that. Turning thirty freaks me out a lot more than turning forty really? does. Because I had nothing going. I was like twenty nine, and there was something about turning thirty with with where no I like, prospects. I have nothing. Like, I'm not fuck. making any money. I don't have anything. You know, yeah. I don't have anything. At least when I'm you're like, twenty nine, you're like I'm a kid. Yeah, thirty, you're like. I'm a worthless adult. Yes. That's kind of what it felt like. It felt like at 30, shouldn't you like have something, you know? Yeah. And so that really freaked me out. And um, I actually remember random. I remember Rachel Feinstein. I remember talking to her at Eastville Comedy Club about this. And I said something about, I was like, how I'm fucking, it's fucking with me that I'm turning 30 in a few weeks. And she was like, what? She goes, <laughs> everything is better in your 30s. And she was like, everything was better for me in my 30s, like professionally, romantically, yeah. ev everything you could think of was better. Because you are a man. And it did make me feel better. And uh, looking back at it, she was 100 percent right. It, 30s I think were it's way the better. best decade. Yeah. I'm yeah. about to finish my 40s. I, and I'm most successful now, but I think because you still have the youthful vigor and 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 less responsibility wearing you down. In, in, but also, like, you're still looking ahead to things and not behind. In our business, at least, like, the money is, like, money is kind of, like, in your 40s and 50s when you actually start, like, oh, okay, I'm making a little bit of money yeah. now. But in your 30s, you don't need you it, don't need it yeah. like, as much, you know? I mean, unless, I guess, you settle down and have a family real young or something like that. Sure. But if you in your 30s, it's just kind of like, oh, like, you start not being broke and you you don't have like the responsibilities and stuff and then you kind of like at least for me then i i you know i got married i had kids i did like every, but now turning 40 i'm like oh i'm really happy with where yeah. everything is i feel good about it all so i'm not like i don't know it feels right it's like yeah i'm supposed to be 40 already okay well that's anyway the oh sorry yeah. but the point i was making that i got distracted from was that so we had like a little a small party and uh, my wife got me this thing that's the the year you're born it's like a little wall piece and it would just be like you know, the top movies, the top music. And then the one that really was interesting was, uh, she goes, the, it was like prices. And it was like the average home was like $30,000. Gas was like 89 cents a gallon. You know, like eggs were like fucking, I, f I forget exactly. But it was like everything you're like, oh, man, that's just 1983. Like, that's not that long I remember ago. First Gulf War and it was like, I was like. Oh, we'll get into that. And somebody, yeah. <laughs> and somebody was like, "You found gas for a dollar ten? How?" I'm like, "There's one spot on the way home." They're like, what the fuck? Which which way do you go? And it was like, "Well, wow, okay, it was up to like a dollar seventy. If you found gas for a dollar ten right now, you'd be like, "I will take seventy two barrels. I'll take it How all. much? Just give it to me. <laughs> give me all the gas." Every once in a while, you go to a third world country and you get a money exchanger, but they just they have the math wrong on the board, <laughs> and you're like, "What? Oh, everybody, give me your money." Oh, I'll trade. yeah. <laughs> But this actually, you're saying the 40s is good, brings us into a, a, a good way to do this 2023 State of the State of the Union, which is probably our sixth, seventh one we've done. I don't know we how many. We skipped one or two. I think so. We missed one or two. We've done, we've been pretty good we've about pretty doing good. it every COVID. year. And, but I do remember, because I was, well, I don't know if you want to talk about whatever, but I was thinking about, because I, that I, the first time I did this podcast, was not one of the State of the Unions. We just called it uh, Fuck the Government, I think was the title of it. Yeah. That was the first time I ever did it. Then we rehashed it, was, it. We're like, hey, let's do that again. Yeah. Let's fuck yeah. the government. You're right. You're right. You're and right. Then, and then it, it it evolved into like, okay, well, let's cover like the last year of yeah. what the fucking government's done and shit. But that was like, dude, this this podcast really means so much to me. That, that was a huge thing for me. I had, uh, I think it was in 2012, uh, I might be wrong, but it was right around there. Yeah. And I had this is before we did. We're doing Legion of Skanks, or at, right at the beginning of it. Whoa. It was before I was doing part of the problem. I had never talked about political shit on a podcast before. I was literally, I was just, I was obsessed with it. I had gotten real into the Ron Paul 2008 campaign, and then all those years, like 2009, 2010, 2011, I was just obsessively reading and following the news. And then me and you were like, we became friends when you moved to New York. And LOL, and we, we did a lot yes, together. And we started talking about this shit, and then you were like, oh, you should come on the podcast and do it. And I had no following at the time. I think I had, <laughs> I mean, I may have had 150 Twitter followers. Like, yeah. there was no one. 
and it was and we did a long form thing where we were talking about politics and I got like a great response from it. And then you were like, dude, this is like one of my most downloaded episodes. It's like doing great. And you weren't and you were nobody. They just went to the content. Yes, it was it was no I was absolute nobody. As much of a nobody as anyone you could pluck off the street right. probably has more than 150 right. followers 100, on Twitter. Right, exactly. You know what That's I mean? A good, I and like and uh and it was like a it was like a real thing for me. I was like, oh, there's like an audience for this. Well, like, I remember I was talking to LOL. Was interesting. I remember I was talking to LOL and, and, and you're telling about libertarianism. And I was like, uh, trying to understand it because I have similar views, like a lot of overlap, but also like, but but you got to shake what you were raised as, you know? And so it's like, yeah, but Dave, okay, fine, you're a libertarian, but you're more Democrat than Republican, right? And you were just like, I just remember the way you say like, no, I see one party wants to take 34% of my money to do with it what they want I don't want. And the other party wants to take 37% of my money to do yeah. with it whatever they want that I don't want. It, fuck them both. I was like, oh, wow. And yeah, also that the, what they what both of them want to do is so fucked up. Right, like, right, you know, right, right. I'm not like, into either one yeah, of like, them. Yeah, like, I mean, and, and, there's so, and then there's so much overlap on the worst things that both of them want to do. Like, they're all like, it's like the two parties will just be like, Whatever, like o Obama will be like, uh, George W. Bush will be like, you know, we want to rob your money to go murder a million Iraqis. And Obama will be like, we should do that, but also some health care. Right, right, right. And you're right. like, wait, what? Wait, like, can we not skate skate, these, or skate over the, the this, one these thing? These are my choices. Yeah. Like, I, just... <laughs> no, I say we kill Afghanis. You but say then, we kill Iraqis. And then every year, at the, you know, when we did it after, like Rogan found me on this podcast. And it was, I still to this day, at so many, almost all the time when I'm out doing shows, if I'm like taking pictures afterward, there'll be someone who's like, "Oh, dude, I originally found you on on Ari's podcast." And it's all, always been like a huge thing for me. So I'm, uh, I don't know if you've announced anything yet, but it's, I'm, I'm, I don't know. You this can one, go for it. It's fine. All right. So this is my last one. We're not <laughs> yeah. friends anymore. And Ari said he's not having me back on. He said the last two have been subpar, and he's not interested in doing it anymore. So I got to go my own way now. Well, I saw you at Skanks, and I was like, and I was like. Hey, I I was I realized I was like, oh shit, I gotta get you on because you you did it this summer a lot. I don't know why. I think we just like fell out in the summer. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta get you on quick. I'm like, why quick? And I'm like, oh, I'm ending this. And you're like, what? Oh, I'm busy, but okay, yeah. Let me fucking clear some schedule. It's always I've I learned this real early on in a uh, stand up comedy. So when I first started, uh, Wayne Rada was booking stand up New York. And he, I was like in with him, you know, for a new comic. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm brand new. Met. I mean, like, that's where met. yes, yes. When you the there. first time when uh -huh. you came out to, yeah. to uh, New York, way before you moved here. Yeah. Uh, so I was like six months into comedy wow. or something like that at the time, just figuring it out. But Wayne, I, for, uh, you know, Wayne, I, I caught his interest for a few reasons. And he was like managing Jay at the time. I was real good friends with Jay and he was managing Patrice. And like some, he had like a real good stable. He had Rich and Bonnie, oh, yeah, and, stuff. and like right. he had, he actually had some good comedians. And so I just got a ton of stage time at Stand Up New York, and it was like awesome because it was a great club at the time. And I was just figuring out how to do stand up comedy. And then he got caught like stealing from the club or whatever and got <laughs> fired. And so like in one day, your whole like career you're pursuing is like gone. And they, I remember it was the first like chapter that changed in comedy for me, and I was terrified. I was like, "That's it. I'm done." And then, like, other things popped up and, like, yeah. you know, and and that's happened so many times since then. But you always kind of, you realize, I guess it's true in life in general, but, like, there's always chapters. And it's kind of sad when one turns. You kind of, like, mourn the last one a little bit. But you got to you gotta kind of just take it in stride and be like, okay, and now the next one begins. And yeah. that's kind of fun. And at least for me, the next one's always been better than the last one so far. Yeah, you want to, like, oh, but I like that. It's like, it's okay. It's like throwing away your favorite pair of underwear. It's like yeah. you'll find a new favorite pair and you won't yeah. remember the old pair. And that and and sometimes you're like it's not really your favorite pair anymore, dude. There's a big hole in the ball sack That's right. area. You're a like different it's, it's, it doesn't work now, you know? You can't hang mm -hmm. on to it. Speaking of Wayne, I remember going to one of his barbecues um in that like courtyard area mm -hmm. and as I was either on his floor or the or the courtyard floor coming in or out of the elevator and getting a text from Rogan, yes. who I who I really sent over the top. Um, the bump. And he goes, dude, that podcast you did with that guy, Dave Smith, was so fucking good. I think I already showed it to you. You handed me the phone. <laughs> really? You handed me the phone, phone. And it was it just because, uh, you know, one of your shitty flip phones, yeah. way past the point where you should have had a shitty flip phone. Yeah. And you handed it to me. And it's just Joe Rogan. Dude, this fucking Dave Smith guy is awesome. And I was like, dude, no way. That's insane. 
And then uh, and then he had you on. And then he had me on. Yeah, and, then, wow. and a bunch more since then. And, and then, then you got these talking head things. One thing led to another, and I wasn't behind on rent anymore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, okay. Let's start it then. Yeah. I want to do, I don't know if we'll do it up front or not, but what you, the way you talk about like go heading into your 40s positive and whatever is like, I don't want this to all be dire and fucking, could easily can be. So we got to gotta start with or save some time for what are you hopeful for? Sure. What's awesome about America? Well, I think let's do that at the end. Okay. Because okay. you kind of like, in order Wash to be- Wash your palate. Well, in order to be optimistic without being naive, you kind of, you have to like, you have to swallow- the the terrible reality yeah and then come to terms with that and then go okay but w- you know like what is there that we can be optimistic about going that's forward? how i feel so. about a guy like kobe bryant Where instead of going he's going great he's so great he's so great and then it's like <laughs> what about this other thing shut up it's that like damn he fucking raped that chick and then his, the defense team yeah. just completely be smirched her to the press it's like yeah it sucks but man did have a good fade away. <laughs> she goes, instead of, before we can mourn Kobe Bryant, yeah. we first have to, in the immediate wake of his death, we must trash him ruthlessly, show people, no human emotion. People are still mad. It's so funny. And, she goes, and then, after all of that, you can go, remember that time when Shaq fouled out in the finals against the Pacers, and then Kobe went on like an 11-2 run, and they won game three. That was really the difference in the that series. That really was great. So that's, yeah. yeah. All yeah, right, man, people were angry at you. People were so angry. It's so funny, too, and coming we got to start. But coming in the <laughs> Legion of Skanks, and go, I'm still like, the world is like different now suddenly where I'm like, oh, fuck, I was taking death threats in the clubs. The fucking ladies at the at, at New York Comedy Club and the stand are like, I'll fucking kill you. Just some women. You're just threatening women. And I'm like, whoa, this is weird. And then you go into Skanks and everyone just starts chanting, Kobe. Kobe. I'm like, oh, all right, we're good. Yeah. We're good. We're but good. you had a little <laughs> while there where you walk in and you see some big black dude and then you're like, uh, and then he's in like a Spurs jersey and you're like, thank God. Okay, thank God. Right, thank God. Oh, he's, he's just cool. robbing the place. Okay, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Not my business. Not my business. Um, <laughs> that's one of the great Freddie Stevens lines. Uh, you call, you just like, you would just walk through the back of the room and you're like, you just be like, this is racist, no matter what he's saying. And he'd be like, ready for it. He goes, racist? What the fuck? Dude, I would... What the fuck? When's the last time you were in a car with a black guy? I was last week. Yeah, I was part of the sheriff's ride along program. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, let's start. Where the fuck should we start? Do you have an in or not? I um I can start you if not. Well, I mean, I don't know. We could whatever. What whatever you want to do. Hey everybody, me and Dave Smith are stand up comics. That's kind of the reason we did this podcast in the first place. Uh, we do live stand up comedy. Say wild shit. Uh, Dave, where are you gonna be? Well, funny you should ask, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> June 2nd and 3rd, I will be in Sir- Syracuse, New York at the Funny Bone out there. Uh, and then in August- Did I hear right? Did you? Have I you heard, heard some whispers? wild stuff about uh, Legion of Skanks. Legion of Skanks breaking up in August. Wow. That'll be the fun. No, we're not. We never will. <laughs> but we are doing our first ever theater run. Three nights, three theaters, August 10th, 11th, and 12th in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. The Wilbur? So come on out. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're really wow. looking forward to that. It's going to be uh, stand-up comedy, live podcasting, and it will be, there's a portion of it will be recorded, but there will be a portion that will not be recorded, will not be put out we'll anywhere. never see the light of day. It will be the most offensive, the most ballsy Legion of Skanks episodes that you can only experience if you come out live. Whoa. ComicDaveSmith.com is my website. It has all the ticket links, and I'll be adding a bunch more shows uh, for the summer there, too. So go go check that out and come and uh, don't see forget us live. Uh, part of the problem is podcasts. Well, it's great. Uh, and, of course, Legion of Skanks. Um, and Legion of Skanks, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about my dates, Dave? What about my dates? Yeah, I've got some, too. i got a pre-sale going on. On May 17th, it's one week, I got Parks Casino just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, October 21st. Use promo code EVIL to get those tickets at 10 a.m. local time. Same with Foxwoods Casino on February 3rd in Connecticut, USA. Um, 10 a.m. local time. Use promo code EVIL to get tickets. And St. Louis, Missouri, only at my website. St. Louis, Missouri uh, on November 12th at the pageant. Use promo code EVIL to get those tickets, as well as Omaha, November 1st. Um, let me see. Oklahoma City, November uh, uh, yeah, November 7th and 8th. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, November 13th. And Springfield, Missouri, November 9th. Um, plus, the tickets that are already on sale 
You guys will love. Well, I'm on tour right now. So Vienna, Ljubljana, Bucharest, uh, Cluj, Naboka, Athens. And then I'm done. Um, and then my vacation starts. I don't count that Austin Rogan show as work. That's just fun. My buddy owns a club. Um, Minneapolis, November 2nd at the Pantages. Um, Chicago. Wait. Oh, Madison, November 3rd at the Barrymore. Chicago, November 4th at the Vic. Almost sold out. Hurry up. Uh, Iowa City, November 5th. Uh, Kansas City, November 9th. Iowa City at the Englert. Kansas City at the Uptown. Indianapolis, November 11th at the Close Memorial Hall. Boston, uh, February 2nd. We added a second show already. First show is nearly sold out. Second show is getting to be almost sold out too. Uh, so get the fuck tickets. If you want in on those $50 tickets, you got to fucking go fast. You got to be there right when they, uh, the pre-sale goes on sale at 10 a.m. local time. Use promo code EVIL. I did not use the promo code EVIL for the Austin shows because I wanted to last more than two minutes. But everybody else, use promo code EVIL on May 17th. Also, probably Louisville. Also, maybe Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, you know, Greensboro, Greenville. Who knows if we do an East Coast announcement. Otherwise, it'll have to be September. But definitely check back next week. And um, that's it. Dave's mine. Back to the episode. That's almost done. Oh, hey. Hi, everybody. I'm Ari Shafir. Uh, let me let you in on a little inside knowledge. It's a little backstory on today's episode of Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. Me and uh, my guest, Dave Smith, uh, well, we were sitting there having an engrossing and amazing conversation. We both realized we had to go to the bathroom. And we read it on each other's faces. But what we didn't realize is we both had the shit. And we didn't want to leave the conversation. That's what we did. We shit. We shit right in our pants. We filled them up with the warm poo. Yeah, chunky for me. More moist for Dave, as we found out later. Now, as it happens, we're both wearing sheath underwear. We we both uh, work for sheath underwear. Um, they don't pay us in money. No. Um, retired Colonel uh, out of Kentucky. And Colonel Sanders pays us in sheath underwear. If you go to sheathunderwear.com right now, use promo code R, you can get 20% off your order. But I'm not here to tell you to order sheath underwear. I'm here to tell you about the value. So we both shit our pants. Now, I don't want to skate past the idea that sheath underwear uh, stops your balls from chafing uh, against your legs when you're going on long walks around magical cities across the globe. No, I'm here to tell you about some other things. About the way it holds poop in. Yeah. Now, I'm wearing right now what I call a replacement pair. I put this other pair that I shit in on the podcast into the washer and dryer. Well, just the washer. Dryer's for later, once it's washed. I don't have to tell you how the washer and dryer works, but in case you don't know, what you do is first you wash, then you take some mm, whatever, dishwashing detergent of some kind that you get here in America. You put it in there, then you run the cycle, and then it'll be all wet and clean. And then you stick it in the dryer, and it speeds up the drying process. You can also do it by the air if you care about the environment. But I do not, since I'm sponsored by someone who used to work for the U.S. Army. Well, we don't have to care about the environment. In fact, we don't have to care about people anywhere in the globe except America. U.S. Army. We're signing up people right now. Now, uh, so what we did is we shit in our pants. And we were both discussing how well these sheath underwear will hold shit in your pants. Let me tell you about another thing, too. Uh, it also makes your junk look really good. This is me not using it. Now, here, I always miss this out of the shot, Marissa. Don't cut it out with... Ooh, I'll definitely cut it out if I... Hold on. If I show dick, you got to cut it... Oh, I'm almost going to show dick there. Oh, I got to it. So now, this is the balls. This is just... This is just the balls, but then if you run the dick right into the dick hole here, look, okay, look, look, see my package there? Now imagine this with pants, and then here it is with the dick in the dick hole. Look at my package, dude. You telling me you're not going to fuck some random chicks at a fucking nightclub in uh, Birmingham? Wait, I don't know. Uh, Boise, Idaho? That's a fucking package, dude. But I'm not here to talk about the way it makes your package look delish. I'm here to tell you about the way it keeps shitting. So me and Dave both had shit in our pants. And uh, we were discussing how well it does it. He goes, well, I think uh, uh, my pair is great. I'm wearing these. Uh, usually I wear the fucking camouflage pair because it really holds shit in. And I don't have to wash them. I really don't have to wash them. You save that money. Save that money on detergent. Detergent from America. And we were discussing whose underwear holds shit in the best. And I said mine. He said his. 
you know? And Dave is a very fair man. So like, well, let's, let's, how do we decide? So we ran across the room and we just kind of ran each other and popped butts. We'd pop butts over and over again. Yeah. We pop butts over and over again until we realized whose sheath underwear holds uh, poop in the best. Turns out neither one gave. Neither one gave. They both held the underwear in, and we kept fucking popping butts against each other, popping butts against each other. Alternatively, yeah, I'd get hard and then he'd get hard. You touch shit to shit, dude, and butt to butt, it's enticing, especially when you got that fucking package out with the sheath underwear. Not yet. Butts to butts, over and over again. Hard cocks, soft cocks. Hard cocks, soft cocks. Go to sheathunderwear.com right now and get 20% off your order. So, me and Dave both realized that our shit was not going to come out of our underwear. Good job, Colonel Sanders, for designing an excellent pair of package fucking, uh, uh, you know, brightening uh, underwear that holds shit in and stops your balls. My, especially my balls, they're fucking, they go down long. You know, she thought we didn't make boxer briefs. They just made boxers until I showed uh, Colonel Sanders my, my balls. And he's like, oh, I'm like, you see the problem there, right? They're going to come right out of the underwear. And he goes, I see. I do see your problem. I do see your problem, Ari. And he made boxer briefs after that. They're long enough for everyone's balls. The pouch also is extra thick. If you have big balls too, that pouch will like, it's like water in a glass. It will fill the area. So Dave and I kept popping butts. No shit came out. Eventually we realized, well, dude, we really rubbed it in. So then we had to shower together. At that point, I blew him for a while. He blew me for a while. We were going to come, but we were like, let's not come because we won't be fresh in the podcast. So um, we got back to it. We got back to talking what we need to talk about. And you know what got us there? Sheath underwear. Thank you, Sheath underwear. And thank you, Colonel Sanders, for making amazing fried chicken and amazing underwear. I'm Ari Shafir, and this is the way I do ad reads. Don't forget, go to sheathunderwear.com right now. Use promo code Ari. You can get 20% off your order. That's one fifth. Let's get back to the episode. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Gas prices. We already talked about that. And I guess the economy. Yeah. What's going on now? It seems like, I mean, from certain things like eggs cost a fucking nutty amount which might have nothing to do with the economy, might just be like, oh, it's a fucking chicken disease. Or, the ga- I mean, it, stuff's more expensive. Sure is. Home prices, not just in New York, not just in LA and Chicago, whatever. Paris, London, across the world have shot up. Yeah. What's going on? Well, I mean, I basically, well, let me, here, I'll start, I'll put it like this, okay? So, I don't know, I may have mentioned this on a podcast past, but I love this thing. It's a, There's an old, uh, like, poem written by this guy, Leonard Reed, called I Pencil. And he writes it in, like, poetic form. But basically the concept of it is, like, to understand economics. And he goes, uh, you take a pencil, and you realize that no one in the world knows how to make a pencil. And at first you kind of, you'd be like, you know, I don't know. I know a guy who works at a pencil factory or something. Yeah. You know, but, but none of us do, but imagine we did, you know. But the point is, like, okay, so you have, like, the graphite, and that has to be, like, mined out of the ground. And in order to mine that, you need to have, like, some type of drill that needs steel. And in order to get the steel, you need this. And in order to get the rubber, you need that. It all has to be delivered on a truck. In order to get a truck, you need to make that. And you realize oh, yeah. there's, like, millions of pieces of information mil- that so it's spread out amongst so many people. And then and there's no department of pencils. There's no czar of pencils. There's no one shouting out instructions of you f- you do this and you do this and you do this. It's all just completely decentralized and it comes together with these millions of pieces of information and at the end of it, you'd be like, so what does a pencil cost? Like $2 billion? And you're like, no, it's 10 cents. You'll see one on the street. You won't even think about it. Like it's, In other words, the, an economy, especially an advanced economy, it it has like billions of components to it all working together harmoniously, voluntarily, in a completely decentralized manner that all of us take for granted every day. Because that's just a pencil. It's true for every single thing you could look at and see in this room. And when you fuck with an economy with something like lockdowns, 
Like you're like, we're going to shut down the global economy. You fuck up so many different things that it's impossible to even calculate. And that's why people are like, wait, why are there labor shortages and supply chain <sighs> issues and all of this? And all, and why is it persisting for years? And the other thing that, so it's, this is all fallout from 2020, 2021. Yeah. It's lockdowns. And the other major factor is the just printing of trillions and trillions of dollars. And they did the same thing. And that thing. devalues the actual dollar. Yes, so exactly. If, if I have $50 out there, and I'm like, okay, they're worth a certain amount, and it costs one to get a, a whole chicken or something like that. And somebody's like, uh, let's just make it a hundred instead. You're like, all right, well then now it's going to cost two to get a chicken. Yeah, yeah, because money is just kind of a medium of exchange. Yeah. So if you check, and and of course the European Central Bank did it as well as the Federal Reserve, our central bank, and so these that's why you see these problems everywhere that they did. Why do they this. print money? What does that mean? What? Well, they uh, well because basically when we shut down the economy in the middle of 2020. They're like, well, I mean, if you just feel the pain of this, it's going to be enormously painful, and you'll realize we're not producing things anymore. And so what they did was they printed, I think it was like $4 trillion in, in 2020 alone, and then they just the Congress spent it. Most of the money was like corporate giveaways. A few pennies went to people. I remember um, some of that was like- But it was PP, the biggest spending PPE in the history loans of the world. Where, where it's like, hey, we're going to give you 20 grand, keep your employees. Right. Or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then like, hey, it's a loan, but you don't actually don't have to pay it back. And it was like, okay, I filed for it. And it was like, it helped me keep Marissa and Kyla in business, you know? But at the same time, it's like, I didn't make that money. Yeah. It was just given to me to give to them. Yeah. It's all, it's all a game that kind of kicks the can down the road. So you don't feel the pain right now, but it's inevitable that you will feel that the same unemployment. pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it will, it kind of like it, what they do is they distort market signals so in a way, like the signal is like, oh, my business is still going and my employees are still being paid. But the reality is you're not making anything anymore. You know, if you if you reduce it down to like its basic, like think like de like Desert Island economics. I like doing that because it just simplifies things. Yeah. Um, but so if you imagine that, like, you know, whatever, say like we're on a desert island and there's five of us and we all take up jobs. One person's going to catch fish. The other one's building a fire. The other one's building some shelter. The other one's collecting some berries. And then. Everyone, let's say we agree to like trade, you know, in rose petals as, as currency or something like that. Because, you know, sometimes the guy who wants berries and you have fish, but you're like, I want berries. But the guy who has fish is like, I don't really need berries. I need shelter. So take these rose petals and then right, that right, guy right, will, right. will yeah. give you, you know. So, and then at a certain point you go, OK, everyone just stop working, but don't worry about it. I'm, I got a ton of rose petals for you. And this might, in the moment, you might feel like, oh, okay, I still got this, and the fish guy's still taking your rose petals for you, and so you don't feel the pain right now, but at some point, you're going to realize none of us were actually producing anything for a while. Now, it's much and more that's complicated. How, that's how they, you have to produce stuff to it, sell stuff, to buy yes, stuff. Yes, it takes longer to realize that when you're talking about like a crazy advanced modern is that economy. Why the, is that why the war helps so much with the economy? Because like we are, we're forced to produce tanks and stuff. It doesn't help. It just gives the illusion of helping. It actually hurts, wow. but it's just because in the moment you're like oh yeah this guy has a job producing the tank and this yeah. guy has a job but then at a certain point you realize this didn't produce anything that made anyone's life better it doesn't matter if you're just producing things otherwise i mean we could just like if war was just so great for the economy we could just close every like business and just do nothing but build bombs and then go drop them in the ocean and then like just be like oh look the economy is great that's 1984 i just finished it the right. first time since high school and it was like oh we just need we need to say they attacked us here so we can like build bombs and then we can give everybody rations and chocolate but uh -huh. we, we need to keep making weapons and now, he goes, he is, goes hey, right and they said they'll just dump the weapons they really did that they were yeah. like just dump them it doesn't matter we just need to have an excuse to build them now also it sh i should be clear like when you say the economy like there's when i say that i'm kind of saying like it doesn't help like the general public but like yeah like if you're like an investor in lockheed martin then like yes it's very good for your economy yeah if you keep a, the war going if you're a mexican who builds outdoor seating it the covid was very good for you right yeah right yes <laughs> you know? there are, so there's always like little nooks <laughs> the, right, of right, the economy right. like that yeah yeah it just see right it's just like that inflation is just like damn you see the gas price. I don't fill up my car with gas that much, but when you see it, you're like, what? Oh, that's way higher, right? Yeah. Well, and then you realize where it's like, um, it, it's like it's not until you start seeing price inflation really hit that you realize how, how important that is 
and how yeah. keeping the cost of goods and services as low as possible is not just like some cosmetic thing but that it actually like oh yeah no there's like like the working class and the middle class have been just decimated by this inflation <laughs> you know i know people like who are making six figures who really feel it you know what because i mean like, like oh shit it's like kids i can't get yeah, by now yeah, oh, or i got by i had a vacation before now no vacation but you know the guy who's making like 50 grand a year and has two kids is just like destroyed over this shit and it's really it's horrible dude so you know there's like an open air market on on 14th and first uh-huh and and i bought <clears throat> just like a shitty cornhole set and, and it reminded me of like you know southeast asia markets or, or latin america markets so i'm like oh how about 20 no come on how about 10 whatever <clears throat> and they're like okay fine 10 and you're like sweet and then you're like and then she goes i don't even want to do this i just got to pay my phone bill and you're like oh you're not a homeless person who stole this you're like you were getting by now you're not yeah. getting by yeah it's like a real it's sort of human thing where i'm like oh fuck you're failing now yeah and the most disgusting part of it is like it really was i mean the if you look at where the vast majority of the the money printing went it was to like big banks big corporations like it, it's so disgusting i mean i know i've talked about this the last couple state of the union the lakers took but, like took like a yeah. seven million dollar thing and then like we're just like kept it and people like what and they found and out they found out and, and they like, no no it. we yeah. didn't mean like but there was tons, for it. there was tons of that dude and there's ton and because the rich make so, the laws and the rich have the best tax attorneys it's so disgusting like i can't even put it into words like what a profound crime that was like committed against the american people by their government that they go hey there's this once in a hundred years pandemic we need you to sacrifice just give us 15 days and like that's all we need they said 15 days the COVID emergency ended last week they they took three years wow. under this this federal emergency they said give us 15 days and then while then they made it a crime to work for if you were non-essential they made it they made it illegal to give your father a funeral and see like your dying mother and like all these things the most intimate details of your life just went full totalitarian and in this moment when the american people were the most vulnerable they went here's an opportunity to bail out the ruling class like to bail out the elite Get them corporate the most money. class just rape you. Now we're just going to rape you financially. And, while and it's you're like, it's like none of them, except like a Bernie Sanders or a Ron Paul or some with or uh, what's his name from fucking Hawaii, um, Tulsi. Tulsi. Get, and I'm sure there's others too. None of them go. No, guys, that's not we're we're not here Bernie to make a profit. Bernie we're, didn't say shit about it either. He didn't stand up. None of them. Bernie and AOC and all those like progressive Democrats. None of them were good on it. The the guy who was really good on it was Thomas Massey who's, in my opinion, the best congressman in the country. Where is he from? He stood up. He's from um, uh, Kentucky. He uh, he stood up and, like, completely opposed it. In real, This was, like, a thing where, like, you know, they, it was the height of COVID. Yeah. So they were, like, going in to Congress, and they were like, we got to make this quick because it's dangerous that we're even here. And, you know, like, everyone's wearing masks and socially distanced and shit. Yeah. And he was, like, he was like, we need to have, like, a formal vote on this. This is the biggest spending bill in, in history. And then Trump... Uh, totally threw him under the bus and wow. demonized him and sent all of his supporters to go like shit on him and was like no you need to do this for the american people and, and you know trump was just like and then when they finally signed it trump just bragged about how big it was he goes it's the biggest bill that's ever been signed and i'm signing it and it's yeah. just huge <laughs> two trillion no one's ever signed a bill this big and that was like thank you for your profound understanding of economics here yeah bigger okay Make it twenty trillion, then. Yeah, right? it's like you're trusting humans to like be cool about it. And it's like, oh, this is actually isn't for me. You guys go first, you know. And it's like they're not gonna. Do, they're just gonna like. I'm sure he's even like the thought at first was we gotta bail everybody out. And it's like sweet, yeah, we gotta bail everybody out. Oh, sh can I just can I just grab this? Oh, yeah, I'll just grab some. Well, the way it works in D.C. is that anytime there's something... It's like taking well, soup first at a soup kitchen. Well, but the th what they do is that anytime there's something that, like, people really need, that's yeah. like, you're really going to be, you know, like, okay, we're forcing people not to work. We got to give them something. Yeah. You can't force them to not go to work and not pay them. They'll starve. So, like, we got to give them something. And they go, oh, okay, so no one can oppose that. So, in the proposal, we're going to attach all of the other things to it that we want and then if you vote against that we go you're voting against you know like helping these people they do that with that they did that with the, the relief Simpsons? fund to the 9 11 first responders they'd be like oh and it's attached to all these other like things it's like uh, that's Simpsons the whole did game. that when they were trying to evacuate uh springfield do you remember that one 
They're trying to. I there's don't. a meteor coming to hit Springfield. Yes, and so yes, we yes. Got to get out. The, and then it like they turns blew into up the bridge. So they can't get the out. Comes, yeah. yeah, it ends up not being yeah. anything. But they were like, uh, "Let's build Congress, evacuate the good people of Springfield. All in favor, say aye, aye." And, it's, and one guy is like, "Oh, I propose we uh, put a gay porn uh, amendment on that. Uh, so gay porn for kids." And they're like all opposed. And they're like, "Oh no!" And he goes, and then the, the Kent Brockman was like, and "This is why democracy doesn't work. Yeah. You're attaching bills that have nothing to do with it, right?" And then you get to say. You oppose this, like no, no. I oppose this small part. I always go back to that thing you said, where it's like you. Somebody was like, "You support guns in schools for teachers," and you're like, "No, I'm a teacher in Alaska where bears attack. I'm, I support it just for that." Yeah, there's you don't, a lot. Don't of put that. words in my mouth. There's a lot of shit like that, but it's really it's um. You know, and and of course, the, the whole system is just like so utterly corrupt. It's like you know all these people who are there. You know, there's like you got these guys like Nancy Pelosi. Um, the Clintons were like this, Chuck Schumer, like all of them. Their net worth is like it's like tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. Like and they all make of them. Grand a and year. they've and they've been in, in public service their whole life. It's like, so what the fuck's going on? And then you realize what's going on is that it's like, oh, all of those people who they insure all of these huge like handouts to, they, you know, they make sure they stay very rich. It's a very, very corrupt. When I was system. like really into TSA and how shitty it was. I got way too into it. I just hated it. And I let it affect me. But I, so you do research on it, and you're like, oh, the head of the TSA at the time owned the company that did the scanners. So he's saying we need the scanners, and it's his business. And everyone's like, no, you got, you can't have another 9-11. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but you should at least not be able to buy your own company stuff. You should yep. be like, well, I can't. I recu Like a judge would be like, I recuse myself. I know this defendant. Yeah. Someone yeah. else should do this, here. and it's oh, that shit is all over the place. You know, yeah. it's like at every it's inch corruption, of government, basic yeah, corruption, just blatant corruption. You know, is where Obama will appoint like a banker-approved Fed chair, and then appoint like a Goldman Sachs guy to head the Treasury Department, and then he gets out of office, and then they're giving him like six hundred grand for a speech. Right. You know, with this, you're like, oh, this is so blatantly just like a, yeah. When a, Bernie like, was like to, to Hillary Clinton, was like, hey, can you tell us your speeches that you made to the banks? She goes, I'm looking for those, and then like two months later, he's like, any any uh, luck on finding those speeches you made? You wrote them down. There aren't there aren't uh, computer somewhere yeah you typed them and then there was like wasn't one of them i think got leaked where she said the thing like where she was like well you know you have one public opinion and one private yeah, opinion the and, rules aren't gonna apply you know, to you guys and like and because and she was out be, she was saying things like no bankers too big to jail like as if anyone believes anyone believes a single fucking banker would have gone to jail yeah. if hillary clinton was president like come on just but saying they just, just like but she happy. was letting them know she was like guys guys I, i'm gonna say I'm a lot saying, of crazy shit yeah, but saying, like don't worry about it don't worry about it you know like i'm saying yeah i'm gonna say some shit that might indicate i'm for the people but just no wow <laughs> i am certainly is, not is there anything to be done about that about that kind of corruption and that kind of like well, I mean, that kind of like they're just like 9-11, it's the same thing where it's like, even if it's not about taking money, it, it's still like, shit, this 9-11 happened. Oh, can we take a bunch of like civil liberties away from people now that we got that opportunity? Like, is there anything to be done about this corruption? Well, it's OK. I mean, this is my libertarian bias speaking, but I think I'm right. Um, but the only thing to, that could be done is to drastically reduce the size of government. It's the only thing that will matter. Look, it, when you have so the the government now, I, I forget the exact numbers. I, we topped, I think, $7 trillion the government spent in the COVID years. I think we might be a little down from that now, like $6 trillion, something like that. But it is the, the U.S. federal government is the biggest organization in the history of the world, by far. What do you mean? There's most never people. been an organization that spent seven trillion dollars a year by any metric. Okay. Uh, the most people employed, most money spent, most just raw power, biggest military can kill anyone across the world. You know, this is is the world empire is above international law. You know, like by any metric is the biggest, most powerful organization in the history of the world. And when you talk about seven trillion dollars, there's if if you have an organization that's this powerful. People are going to be fighting over who controls this power. And th so there's just the only answer is to, like, just reduce the the amount of power that it has. That's why it's so it's so silly. I mean, it's their it, their hearts in the right place. But a lot of like left wing progressive types will be like, you know, we need campaign finance rule. We need to get the money out of politics. But even if it's illegal to buy off politicians, it's not like you're gonna have seven trillion dollars and someone's not gonna be vying over how to wield it. You know, I think I've said this before on the show, but it's like, you know, it's illegal for Saudi Arabia to donate to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, right? So great, we have a law against that. 
Still but they just donate to her foundation. They just give their foundation $10 million. Right. And, you know, and, and they'll you always find a way there. around it. So the only answer is that now... That, that's what Ecuador, they had a rule. So go ahead. No, well, I say that might be... Now, that's the answer, is to like reduce the, the size and scope of government as much as you can. How you do that is a very difficult problem that I don't necessarily have an answer for. Like, my best answer to that is, like, try to talk about this shit and, and you know, like, kind of wake people up to realize that's the answer. But there's a lot more than that. Probably what would need to happen is you'd need to have some, like, fucking badass billionaires get on board with that. And real, I think you need, like, powerful elites to, like, get on board with the, like, oh, we actually want to save the country, which is, is harder. They said Yao Ming was one of the few dissidents that were allowed in China. Because right. he was too big to disappear. Not his height, but his name. Both. Yeah, yeah, Both exactly. Physically and... But like you couldn't just disappear a guy like that. He was a national hero. So you're like, oh shit's gonna shit's gonna be bad for us if we disappear right. this guy. But also, Yao, limit what you say. Because if it gets too much, we'll take the We'll heat. just take right, right, right. You know? Right, yeah. mm -hmm. Um So in Ecuador they have a rule, one of the only countries in the world where they have laws protecting nature. It's part of their constitution. And you're like, damn, that's really fucking awesome. And then we talk to people there, like, oh, yeah, but there's more illegal mining going on here than anywhere. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. like, it's just a rule. It doesn't mean it's followed. Yeah, well, I mean, rules. That's that's laws. We we have an idea in America because there's other places in the world that don't even have like written constitutions. Like yeah. England doesn't really have a written constitution. They are kind of governed by precedent. And to Americans, that that a lot of times that sounds like kind of crazy. Like you'll be like, well, what do you mean? It's not written down somewhere. You're just all kind of agreeing to this, and that's but that's actually how governments work. Like it doesn't. The fact that the it's like, oh, okay, we have a bill of rights that has words written down on a piece of paper. That's nice, yeah. but it only matters if someone chooses to enforce it. So like, you can have okay. There's a First Amendment. First Amendment's pretty goddamn clear. Okay, it outlines like several liberties that can't be infringed on. Right. Like okay, you have the right to say practice your religion. It's like okay, but in the middle of COVID lockdowns, you didn't. And you know why? Because they were shutting down the churches. And that's like that's just that. And you have the right to a free press. But Julian Assange oh, is going to die in jail. Right. That, you know what I mean? Like so, what they'll is, do is. It's, so it's not that simple, right? I, same thing with like when they say abortion, it's a woman's right to choose. And what I don't want to get into whatever. But it's like, it's not just that. It's not a tattoo. Right, you, right. You know there's a deeper argument than that, right? It's not just, there's more to it. Yes. Um, And same thing with like religion, but you can't, it's like, but you're not saying this religion's banned. It's like, no, no, all meetups are banned. It's not quite the same thing. And with Julian Assange, they go, he's not a, he's not press. And you're like, oh, that's your way around it. Right. So it doesn't, re what doesn't, we're not actually governed by a piece of paper and what's written on a piece of paper. What we're governed by is what the last guy did and whether he got away with it or not. And if he did it and got away with it, well, then now you're allowed to do that and you get, there's precedent. So we're really governed by precedent. And Until you get a, a seismic shift. Right. Or right. Or there's a line where it doesn't work anymore and there's Can, enough people who resist it and then they go, okay, I guess we won't do that. Let me tell you, small economy. Mm -hmm. um, so- People started the door guys and the and the and the and the uh, booth guys at the store began stealing from the store. There was a system of checks and balances. I'm in the booth. I bring up a ticket. It says paid or comped, and then I give it to you, the door guy, and you go, "Wait, why is this comped?" And you go, "Well, the hotel next door. If they send them over here, they get free." T so you go, "It's a hotel thing." You go, "Okay." Now, if I do that ten times, you're gonna go. Ten people came from the hotel next door when you get one a month usually, but all we have to do is be like, "Hey, dude, you want to go in cahoots?" Yeah. <laughs> and then it's no problem. People start stealing more and more and more. Eventually, Renazisi paid his fucking mortgage off it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> really? Yeah. Me and my friend Sean were like, we're just going to steal enough to get Doritos and ice cream for our shift. That's, That's it. That's how it starts. Yeah. But, I mean, it re oh, they were bank and bank. But, and then the, the, the talent coordinator was making some, and eventually they caught wind of it, and they're like, hey, we stop. We're putting cameras in. Ben, wait. Oh, dude. <laughs> all right come on in they put right. cameras in and then once they put cameras in he kept doing it tommy kept doing it and he goes what the fuck we always is i'm like dude they put cameras in it's over yeah it's over yeah. You, you got it's a seismic shift it's well over. yeah that's kind of that's kind of what we need we need the comedy store to put some cameras in the united states of america yep yeah. um let me ask you this the slowdown and the that's also part of the economy that you can't get fucking good employees anymore. Is that just a function of? I know you hate certain people, and this, but I like to say that there's everyone's a little richer than you expect, 
not richer, I mean deeper. Right. So I saw this analysis of uh, of uh, female characters in video games. Um, and it was this lady breaking down how every female character is just bosomy or a female version of the male. She goes back to Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man has nothing new. It's just right. Pac-Man, right? It's just a analysis, whatever. Okay. Uh, and she goes, and then her big prize is marriage. That's the big prize. You get to marry Pac-Man. Or Tomb Raider, it's like you just fucking busty. So what's the point? She had it too good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she goes, as she's doing it, she made this great point. She goes, hey, just so you know, you can attack one part of something and still be a fan of another part of it. Doesn't mean you have sure. to like discount them all. When Barry Weiss was like Tulsi Gabbard's a, a a toady to the to Syria, and and he's like, and Rogue is like, what's a toady? And she goes, um, Jamie, look that up. And he goes, what's a toady? She goes, Jamie, look that up. And and Rogue is like, just tell me what you just said. It. What does it mean? She goes, Jamie, look that up because she's just repeating a talking point. Now that was shitty. But Barry Weiss also has some great points. And does yeah, some great yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. You don't I, write I her agree. off completely. I I agree, but that was such a shitty. thing. That was shitty. It's a really. I I also find that because I get this, you know, thrown at me a lot. The same thing, Assad, and then Putin, Saddam uh -huh. Hussein, whoever. But I hate the claim that like, ugh, there's something like really profoundly shitty to say that someone because they oppose your war that you want that they're loyal to like this other dictator yeah. in a faraway country which is also so ridiculous in a way yeah let's like, go get like, pizza i want really? chinese why do you hate pizza yeah right why, like, don't, why don't you support this but pizza place? You, but like if you were like against the war in iraq which everyone admits was a mistake now you'd be like what are you you're working for saddam or something like that yeah. but it's so funny to me like when people say this about me, they'll go, "Oh, you're you're spreading Putin propaganda because I'm against like the war in Ukraine," and you'll be like, "You really think I'm like, I'm sworn loyal to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> like, like what? the fucking emperor in Star Wars? Ridiculous! Ridiculous! Yeah. This claim is I'm yeah. getting my information from him somehow. Like, what are you talking about? The fucking most of the Russian media is banned off our internet. You can't even get it if you want to get it. Wow. But like, what do you? But so that was such a shitty thing that she did you. to Tulsi. Now yeah. I, I will tell you also though, Barry Weiss is good on some of the campus woke shit and stuff like that, and she's got some interesting things to say about that. But yeah, but that that it almost seems she like she should go public. Right? Of, It'd be of, like, hey, that. earlier I was realized I was repeating a talking point of a bought out newspaper. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't really think about it, and then I just I've said it. About comics, I'm like that guy sucks or that guy's great. I'm like, what's his best joke or worst joke? I'm like, I've actually never seen him. Yeah. I'm repeating yeah. talking points. Yeah, I get uh, it. Anyway, I forgot exactly where I was bringing up how you can like some of his stuff, but not. Oh, the female. Uh, oh, uh, I know. Uh, AOC. Video games. You can think whatever you want about her, but she made this great point at the beginning of COVID, where she's not as popular as a lot. Of, but she goes, everyone's saying we got to get back the economy back, we got to get back to our jobs, get back to our jobs. And she goes, no, we don't have to get back to working 62 hours a week for some guy who's never going to support you. We have to revamp the system completely so we're working for our lives instead of these fucking big billionaires. And I was like, oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, so I uh, think what happened was people were off work and now it's just like, I'm done with it. Yeah, but I don't know if that's entirely a good thing. I mean, look, there's some truth it's, to the fact that, like, the, so, like, my response to that would be, like, okay, so get the fucking billionaire off welfare. Stop bailing out the billionaire. Like, right. that's kind of the answer to it, right? It's like, yeah, this system is completely rigged for the powerful. And, like, AOC, you're voting yes on the bills that rig it wow, for the powerful. So, so, like, maybe, like, stop doing that. But... There's something really it's like they fuck you on both angles because they're they're like they're rigging the system toward the billionaire class. But then at the same time, they're also undermining this kind of like work ethic where it's like, no, you you can't accept the idea that I just don't have to work and like everything will be OK. Like, fuck it. I don't want to do that. It's like, all right, well, then you got to find your way some other way. Like, I understand not wanting to have a boss. I don't want to have a boss. That's why I don't have one, you know, but it was a lot of work to get to that place. Yeah, you got to eat ramen for a while yeah like for a long time so like are you prepared to do that because yeah. if not then like you're probably i mean maybe you'll get there but maybe you're more talented than me and you'll get there quicker than i did but like it's just, so i don't know i now i do think there's some truth to the fact that there there was like some silver lining to the nightmare that was covid which there's always a silver lining to every Look at the nightmare positives. My whole and, and some of it it was like yeah there was some re-questioning of things like do i really need to go into the office 
you know, five days a week. I mean, if I was able to do the job from home, yeah. maybe now that Can't we're back, we I can only that? go two exactly. days a week or something. Exactly. Maybe it doesn't need to be this like rigid, like structure of like, this is, this does feel kind of outdated. And like, you know- 40 hour work week, why? What am, I'm not getting anything done between hours 30 and 40. I, 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 yeah. I it's mi- diminishing returns. Can I just go play with my kid? Yeah. Can I There's just There's a like... lot of people who started homeschooling their kids and continued to do it afterwards. Like, you know? oh, They're like, like, oh, yeah. actually my kid's doing better at home than he was in school. And you know what? Now, if we want to go take a three day weekend, we could just take it. I don't need right. to worry about that. Like there, there are silver linings. I just what I hate is that I think people like AOC kind of like they play on this feeling, this like impulse of like, oh, it's so unfair that my boss has more than me and I have less than my boss and this and that. And then it, without any real understanding of how like economics work. And it's like, yeah, like there's Obama, some truth to no. it, but it's not entirely true. Obama said in a speech I heard in the car in L.A., and he was saying how um, he goes, rich people, they're not just villains. Like he goes, Steve Jobs has invented. He goes, honestly, two or three of the most important inventions of the last of the 20th century. Yeah, and he goes, you should be rewarded financially for that. You shouldn't just not make any money off that. Well, if you're not going to be rewarded for it, you're going to disincentivize it from happening. Oh, this dog can't make up his mind. It's actually pretty good for this. Um, well, and and look, I'd I'd go like quite a bit further than Obama on that. Is that I'd say like if you're within, it, as long as you're not getting like handouts from government, yeah, okay, or special privilege from government or something like that. If you're within the market making a ton of money. The only way to do that is to provide something of value to people. So if you're selling like a product, want they want your product. Yeah. Like when, if me or you go and we spend whatever the, the five hundred bucks or whatever for an iPhone, I don't know what an iPhone costs these days. I don't even remember. About that, but maybe. something like that. You, well, like you're saying, I want the iPhone more than I want my five hundred bucks. Like right. I'll trade this to you. Right. If it's too expensive, so, you're like, oh, nah. And you're, yeah, then you go, in my estimation, it's not worth it. So you don't. But the only way you're making a ton of money is by providing a ton of value to people. So I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's nothing wrong with getting super, super rich. I think, in fact, society needs it. And the reality is that there are people who are uniquely gifted. And because of that, make the world a much better place. We all benefit from that. And like LeBron I, James should yes. get paid a lot because we will yes. pay a lot to see him. Yeah, play. exactly. Because people value that. Value is subjective. Right. It's like people value that. And and who are you to say that it's not worth the price of admission for them to go see right. LeBron James play? Like they want to go because he's there. They want to buy his. And jerseys. you feel like these tickets are crazy now. It's like well then you don't go. But if you think the stadium is going to be empty, you're wrong. It's yeah, just yes. not. It's just. Yeah. And people fall into this um this fixed pie fallacy of like an economy w- where it's almost like they think that because someone's super rich, therefore someone else has less than them, which is not the case at all. Yeah. Like it's not. And so people will be like, well, you think that guy should get so super rich and then someone else out here is is like really not doing well at all. And you're like, yeah, but that guy getting super rich might be bringing that guy up or it may or, not be putting him down him being rich or not being rich has nothing to do with that other guy right but i'm just making the point i'm making the point that it might actually be making that person richer True. which True. is quite which is quite often the case yeah and so it's like no i'm not like i don't like it's not like like i, I don't like the politics of envy i don't like the politics of like they should pay their fair share because that's all like that's silly it's not real life what is fair is to go that guy shouldn't get bailed out by the system like they this guy shouldn't be like he should play in yes. the system yeah there shouldn't i don't believe in redistrib- uh, redistribution of wealth yeah but it's right now we have a redistribution from the working class to the billionaire class yeah. which is the most insane form of redistribution top up yeah dude th- so the, the, we saw there was a me and uh, this guy from comedy central were talking about how we we're smoking weed at montreal and just like talking about how certain people are just on a track to success and it's like no matter what they do they're just going forward gerard was on it schumer was yeah. on it you could just see like everyone out it's like i don't know how they get on that it. it's either from being hot being a, being like little sisterly little brotherly whatever it is and we're like there's certain people that are just like no matter what they're succeeding it's almost like when you're learning how to ski and you get on that little like magic carpet it's like you're just on it and everyone else is trudging up the hill right. on skis and you're just like going and then as we were doing that, we we're like, how was roast battle? And they go, this one lady lost, but someone else didn't want to like write a new roast battle, so they just advanced her anyway. And you're like, oh, right. You didn't actually advance. You lost your roast battle. <laughs> and you're still going to the next round because you're gaming the system. 
You didn't deserve it at all. And that's the problem with the, with the economy and these billionaires where it's like you're not playing the fair game. Right. Right. You're not actually providing value like in the marketplace. You're just rigging you're just the rules so that you get it even though you're not providing that's value. That's how China is where it's like, oh, do you live in an apartment next to a general? You can get shit done. Yeah. And if yeah. you're just a normal guy, you can't. And it's not. It's, I hate it. Um. Anyway, but what ends up happening is a lot of these uh, Gen Z, millennial, or everybody, it's just like, they're just done. Yeah. So what's going to happen? I'm yeah. trying to add a show in Manchester, and they're like, nobody wants to work for an extra show. I'm like, I, I sold out. I want to add a show. And they're like, nobody wants to come early. I'm like, can you hire some? I'm ready. I, I, what? I don't know entirely like that I, that I completely know what that situation is. But I do find it very disturbing, and I think it's um, it's probably a mix of several factors. Um, it's certainly, at least in part, that there is this mindset that younger people have kind of come up with, where there's I deserve it. yeah, let, feel very entitled to to things, and feel very much they have these very oversimplistic narratives about who's oppressed and who's wronged and why we all kind of should just have all of these things. And and I guess it's kind of easy to feel like that when you're in a society of so much abundance, you know, and there's so much wealth and resources around you. It's like, yeah, we could all just have this if we wanted to. Um, but it's there's really it's I, I think it's also probably partially related to like the disintegration of the family unit. People aren't kind of brought up with these values instilled in them of like hard work and you have to actually go contribute something before you should feel the the right to take uh -huh. something out of the system. I think it's also when you get like a you get to see a really smart thinker, an academic, and he's talking about something and it's like, oh, you really thought out every angle on this. Yeah. But then everyone else is just doing like what I call black and whiteism. Where it's it is this billionaires are bad. You're like no Ben and Jerry are great. They right. donate whatever. It's like no billionaires they're bad. Rich people are bad. And it's like no no no. Generally that, but you have to look at individual cases. And like the idea is like everyone should get it. Or there's been a systemic which there's somewhat uh, 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 making it harder for black people to get ahead. Okay sure, but that's not the reason you didn't get up today. Or that's not the reason. That's you can't just make it across the board. Yeah, is it whenever you're thinking in this so kind like, of one size yeah. fits all thing, you're gonna miss all of the new. There's just like a new comic who who was like a superstar, and and it was like she sucks, but I remember she was like, she was like, I'm, I might be putting words in her mouth, but I could tell the the idea was like I've been doing this for four years. I know what I'm doing. I'm like oh, we were at open mics till seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, in your world, you do deserve it. I well, get why you think that. And there's it's not real. And the thing is that it's like it doesn't hold up. Well, it's like why and why should you just get it? Yeah. Why shouldn't you have to compete to get this? Like, especially just talking about the world that we know the best, but like being a stand up comic like that is a sweet job. Lots of people would rather do that than do like some grueling blue collar job. You know what I yeah. mean? Lot, yes, lots of people How would come rather I can't just. Do it? It's like, it's like it's I don't know because you gotta it. fucking you gotta earn it. And like, no, it's not a perfect meritocracy. I'm not saying it's like it, it's fucking everyone gets exactly what they quote unquote deserve, whatever that means. But it's like this is the game. Human beings are flawed, and you gotta go make it happen for yourself. You're not owed this, right? And even and that's that's so you true. gotta tell your kids like, that's true for just other jobs. Like even even some job in an office somewhere where it's kind of like well i don't know you're not roofing in the summer you're not like doing like you're not mining like you're sitting in an air we, conditioned we room been. yeah you're sitting in an air conditioned room getting paid you know whatever 75k the a year or something entry. like that yeah like no one in me and gets to do that <laughs> like right and and i'm not saying i'm not saying there's not real struggles to that i'm not saying everything's like that's perfect or anything i'm just saying that it's like why the people have this attitude now that it should just come to them yeah. it's like it's like everyone's like raised on this kind of like self actualization philosophy yeah. where you kind of feel like that the good things are supposed to happen to you in the end of this movie but like the lesson is supposed to be like no you got to make those things happen so anyway i don't know but it is very disturbing that there are uh, it seems like a whole like the the whole young generation uh is but again, speaking in in yeah, generalities, general, there's plenty who like work hard to yeah, get ahead. Plenty, plenty of exceptions, but they seem uh, very sensitive and frail and entitled, and that's not a good thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I do see some of it as important. Like in Germany, it's a stand. You don't get two weeks vacation; you get four or five to start, and it's like you almost need 
the standard to change a little bit to where it's like livable. You know, well, yeah. I don't want 20 weeks, but like something in the middle or uh, in, in Germany as well. And maybe in second Switzerland too, you can't fire people. They protect workers really well. So you can't, if you have to downsize, you do it by seniority. So you'd be like, well, I'm going to keep this kid who works for less. Like, no, that's not the side we want to live in. We actually, actually, if that guy's got two kids, you got to fire him last. Right. Because we want right. our society protecting people who have kids and a family. And if you're a single 24 year old, like you can handle this being yeah. unemployed. Well, I mean, look, I'm sure there's there's issues that come along with the system yeah. like that, too. Uh, I think that there's what you want is like you no want child labor laws. Well, so you we want did that. Well, you Sorry. want it. So we could maybe use some kids working. Yeah, right. <laughs> so like, yeah. You know, I don't think I don't <laughs> yeah, want them working like grueling laws. conditions, but like maybe like getting you know more job. of a like yeah, have a summer job. That I might be you know think we could use a little more of that. I think that you want a society to be prosperous. Yeah. You want it to be like you want to like minimize corruption and maximize prosperity. Um, but you also kind of one of the things that's been lost and i found this out like very late in life i think this is part of the reason why people like jordan peterson blew up and became so huge amongst young people and even part of the reason why like andrew tate and guys like that have become so huge is that there is we we kind of as a society we really live in like a prolonged state of childhood like people grew up much quicker in previous generations than right. they do today you know my my grandfather at 18 was an adult I mean, there was just yeah. No, you're like, working. You got a had, kid already. Had already fought in a war. Right. Already had a fucking right. job. Was already like there was no you know like yeah. debating it. Um, he wasn't like kids. You know, there's 30 year olds today who are not nearly as living at home as, as yeah. he was. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But I'm just saying that we, it's we haven't like instilled in people like how great it is to be a grown up. Like how great it is to actually like take on the responsibility and actually like like you know like. Uh, take on the responsibility and fulfill it it's actually it makes you much happier living in a prolonged state of like adolescence is not what's fulfilling and meaningful it's like it might be fun in the moment but even it's darwin the, even those people i always picture like 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 um the people all the great discovery people you know it's like they had just rich dads so like go travel around and like see how like oh well, animals change in different places but like they're not just eating grapes all day at home yeah. They are still like, well, let me take this privilege I have and let me go do something. Yeah. And like, that's kind of what, you know, we're like, you should feel some sense of obligation to do something. You know, you you're by the by nature, you're already you are withdrawing a lot from society. Like the, in your first, say, like 10 years of life, you're not really giving that much back. You know, you might give some joy to your parents or something like that. But you're taking the benefits of like thousands of years of what people have worked to do. And you should feel some obligation to like, all right, let me contribute something to that something in back. my day. Something back, you know, and that could be anything. But like my theory something. on why school shootings are better than adult shootings because kids don't contribute to the GDP. So, <laughs> so it's like it's a overall doesn't matter in any way. Um, <laughs> he was a net tax train. Like, I, mean, mm, I get your point, but um, um, yeah, my friend Rachel, she does girls' leadership stuff. It's her whole career. She wrote the book that Mean Girls was based on, and like whatever. It's just brilliant. But like, uh, she's like, you don't teach. I don't teach my kid that an A is valuable. An A is valuable, but I teach her way more that doing your homework is valuable. Yeah. And sitting and working hard is valuable. Because if you just skate by, then you become Johnny Manziel. You become like, oh, I don't work hard. Enough. And then it's like, it works until the pros, and you're like, now it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, well, that's Hard why, like, work is the reward. Yeah, that's why, right. So, like, the essence of that is why you wouldn't be happy if your kid was like, hey, look, I found a foolproof way to cheat. No one can possibly catch me, and I'm going to get straight A's now. Isn't that wonderful? I'll get straight A's and be able to go to any college I want to. And you'd be like, no, no the point because you're going to fail out of that college yeah. and you're going to fail at life. Like, because it, it doesn't matter. It's like you're not actually earning it. And yeah. now you're learning the worst, most perverse lesson you could learn for life. Um, it's a and that's why exact perverse but, lesson. But that's why and that's why padding grades and participation trophies and this whole kind of like, which is almost become a silly kind of catch all phrase. But there is a lot of that. And that's why we're really doing a disservice to young people. Like, failure, that's not failure helping. is good. So when, when I really start growing my stand-up act, I, I had this theory that every bit I do must bomb seven times before it's good. And so then I went from going, fuck, that was bad. And I still feel it no matter what. But on bomb three on a new joke, I'm like, four more. And it's well, going right. to be a good bit. Will you at least and find so a you, mechanism to keep yourself moving forward? Yeah. You know, to like, yeah. And yeah, it's true. I think almost anyone... 
anyone who is successful it, to any degree in life, I think has probably learned that lesson that they're the process of success. And, and it's not just like it's not that you only learn from your failures because there's also like value in like, say, when you were a young comic, like crushing and, and kind of oh, believing yep, in yourself yep. and being like, oh, yeah, I can really do this. I'm really good. You need that, too. Uh -huh. You need that, too. But there's no question that a part of that process is a burning like awful failure feeling right. like that, that I don't ever really want that hurts. again. And I you never learn, want that again. You just learn from it. You're like, Oh, this is what I did that led to that. And okay, I got it. How can I avoid if that? I don't want to feel this again. You do that socially too. Where yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I fucked my friend's ex shit that now it's going to lead to this. And the next time she's flirting, another person's like, I've been in this before. I'm not doing this. Yes. You, you know? feel like yeah. shit. Your friend's pissed off mm -hmm. at you. The whole thing. You're like, this is bad. Yeah. I don't want to touch or this stuff like, again. I'm doing this right now where I'm like, I owe someone an apology. I'll tell you afterwards. And it's like, I'd rather just avoid it. But I'm like, I've done this before. I will feel better getting it out of the way. All right. Well, I can't let's, just avoid Let's just do it right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ari is sorry, Jay. He shouldn't have put that special out. It wasn't ready. It was not up to, uh, to stuff, you know? And Over 1.2 million on my first production. Um, it was actually very, very good. Thanks. Um, in uh, in my Bible, my uh, uh, the, the, the Fountainhead, um, mm. it talks about like, Desi like deserving things or whatever yeah. and there's this point where Howard Rourke the true artist mm -hmm. talks to Peter Keating good, good memory Ari um, no yeah. weed today yet you do better than me he eventually he's way more successful as an, as an architect Keating but he's a he's just like a he's just like looper he's just a phony he's just like f fine paid by numbers he had success because people gave him jobs mm -hmm. and eventually now he's 55 and he's kind of done with it and he's like you know what I always want to do paintings and he goes and does his paintings and he shows the real true artist who never made a lot of money, Rourke. And he's like, what do you think of these paintings? And Rourke just gets nauseous because he's like, he sees instantly, this is your true passion. It's too late. You can't start this at 55. Same thing with comedy. I've always wanted to be a comic. It's like, you, you should have done it at 22, man. That's really sad. It's wasted. It's, yeah. it's, there's nothing sadder. But like, sorry, I took a chance when I got out of college. And you didn't. And I was jealous of you guys when you were getting promotions and I was couldn't eat anywhere except ramen. Yeah. And now it's worked out. Yeah, you know? it's like not things don't work out perfectly for things everybody. Don't work out that's perfectly. not you know, but yeah. at the same time, that's like you have you ought to have a right to your life. And to pursue your, you know, happiness and yeah. to, and that you're like, look, we all gave this a shot and went at it. And the people who are successful, it's always a mix of like yeah. good fortune and being in the right place at the right time. And usually there's an element of like doing some of the right things also. Not always, but, you know. Yeah. Also that right. If you work hard, you'll get ahead. It's like sometimes not, though. Yeah. Sometimes somebody just hires their kid. And yeah. you're like, what? I, I, but I wasn't. It's like, yep. And also but sometimes. If you keep working hard, overall it'll work for you. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, um, you're just not good enough. Like, that happens There's too. That you too. work hard and you're just not talented enough. There's that but too. But I do find it, you know, again, just speaking about kind of the industry I know more than any other one, stand-up. Like, I just know that I, myself, I was very guilty of this in my early years. And I know a lot of other people always complain about, this isn't fair. This guy got this and I didn't get it. And I deserve this and I didn't get it. And you're like, as I zoom out and I look at the, the stand-up comedy world, it's like, it's not a perfect meritocracy, but it's a pretty damn reasonably close to one. Like, you really can't, I, I don't really know anybody who's very talented and very hardworking, who stayed with this for a long time, who has nothing to show for yeah. it. I don't right. know it's anyone like, like, it's like that. It's like, how come that guy's doing arenas and I'm barely, you know, like making whatever at a club's like, but, so you're making money at clubs doing comedy? Yeah, like you're- That's right. crazy. I That's mean, so like, good. There's guys like, I mean, who I think are like, like I think Mike Vecchione is amongst Vecchione the is best I always comedians. Think Vecchione, Adrian, there's just, Vecchione is who I always think of. Look, Adrian Appalucci is another one. They're two just excellent, excellent stand-up comedians. Like anyone who, any stand-up comedian looks at like their jokes and goes, fuck, that's a really good joke, man. Uh -huh. Like that, you're, that's really well read. And then there, there'd be years- where I was like, man, they really deserve so much more. But now I'm like, oh, Vecchione just has this new special that Nate produced that's great. Adrian's mm -hmm. fucking rocking Madison Square Garden. That like, you're so like, crazy. oh, like, 
you know, it's like, like this thing, I'm not saying it's perfect and you could argue they deserve to get some stuff quicker than they did. And I, I, I right. would agree with that, but it's also like, given that it's human beings who are constructing They've all got of an this, apartment. that's pretty, yeah. And they're like, that's a lot better than a lot of people right. are doing. It's like, this is out. not, it's, it's, it's reasonably what is within reason to expect pretty damn decent in terms of like a system. Dude, she at Madison Square Garden was, it was, it, I mean, it was just like, I, I it was, cra it was so, it filled me with so much joy. She was better than Louie. To, and no offense, yeah. you know, it wasn't like Louis bad. It was just like this lady who nobody knew. Just fucking. It was just like they all got. She got him on their wavelength it, to her hometown major. You know, it's not like me doing it. She grew up here. Yeah, that's yeah. where she wants to see the Knicks. And just getting him all on her wavelength, her dark, dark wavelength, and then just firing back, and everyone's like loving it. It's a perfect it was crowd like, for her. Who too. was it? Yeah, because well, Louis, Louis is like a right. dark, yeah. like you know, like they're, they're not into like, that. Yeah, and like that's because she's like for people who don't know, she's like a really dark, you know, yeah. comic, but so funny. It was um, just like I saw her afterwards. I was just like, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. God, it was good. By the way, speaking of like uh, AOC's voting on this, whatever. There was one time I got bumped by fucking fucking uh, fuck fuck Franken, whatever his name is, um, doing forty five minutes Franken. of uh, Klobuchar impressions of I don't know what the fuck this is. And at some point, he starts talking about um, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical prices and how high they are and it was fucking lame or whatever. And then I got up afterwards. I gave him the thirty seconds to get out of the room, like I like as a human. But I'm like, you. What are you telling us for? <laughs> you do it. You were in there. What the fuck are you complaining? <laughs> we're yep. just people drinking. Yeah, really. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. You want to do Ukraine? Ukraine, let's Taiwan. Do it. This is Ukraine has become kind of my major thing that How I'm many like years been married already? to. What Ukraine? How many years? What has the war been going yeah. on? Over well, a year, it's right? It's over a year that this war has been going on since Vladimir Putin invaded. But there was really like a civil war in the country going on since 2014. Whoa. And then, you know, Ukraine's been Ukraine's been fucked over a lot. They got fucked. The, you know, the Nazis invaded. They got the, the Stalin genocided them. The star intentionally starved them to death. I mean, they've had they've had a rough go of it for <laughs> a long time. But this latest chapter um you know, is the the worst of it's been going on for the last year plus. Um, and I don't know, this is like become there's like certain issues that just kind of like become my issues. And I, I kind of choose them, but they kind of choose me in a weird it's way. Also, like, once you start knowing enough about it, Rogan, I think Rogan did this with COVID, where he's like, I've talked to enough scientists and doctors where I feel like I I know more than the press is letting on. So I, then it becomes like, and he was right. Thing, yeah. and, and if you measure his like where he was on top of this verse now, and that's an important thing to do that I think a lot of people don't do is it's go, OK, but like look back in real time and like, what was this guy saying? And what was this guy saying? And like, which turned out to be more the case than uh, like, who's more? Right and it's not like you're here. like, yeah, but you were just guessing. Like, no, he wasn't just guessing. He was no, he was talking to experts. Yeah. He was he was like, you know, that COVID was a big one for me too. That obviously not on Rogan's level, but that was like a thing that I really talked about a lot. And I'm pretty proud of my track record on that. Um, but yeah, and I mean, you, I'd put Rogan's track record up against Fauci's any day. Let's yeah. go through all the points of what they all said. Like when Rogan was saying to young 20 year olds, like the most important thing is to like exercise and be healthy. Fauci was saying, get the vaccine, because if you get it, you can't get COVID. I mean, like <laughs> put them up against each other. Like who who's aged better and turned out to be correct. Um, anyway, with the Ukraine stuff, you know, you could look at. So basically, and I think we talked a little bit about this uh, last year, but I, I'll go through it a lot because I think it's it's really important for people to know a little bit about the history of this conflict, because for what basically the corporate press and the official narrative is like this started last year when Vladimir Putin invaded for no for reason, no reason went in there yeah. unprovoked is the word that they all say. They all say unprovoked over and over, like Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or uh, Mitch McConnell or the, like every time they talk about it, they always say unprovoked, which I've lately been thinking is a very interesting. It's kind of a tell in a way. Like, why are you even saying that so much? Why do you keep it's don't, like they'll it's like, use words sometimes. They did it for this January 6th. They go, um, I, I think deadly insurrection, deadly insurrection, deadly. And you see like. You know, whenever they do those mashups of like 30 different news things mm -hmm. saying the same they exact all say the same thing. thing. And yeah. you're like, you're all using the same adverbs? Yeah, and I find the unprovoked one is an interesting choice. 
Like, uh-huh. why is this the one that it you seems all go with? Fair that they go with. Said, well, why, yeah. But why would you even need to say that? You was know, it in a like, war room? They say, "What word are we going to choose here?" Well, I think my thing is because it was totally provoked. So they have to. It's it's kind of like if you went like, okay, if there were some kids and your dog bit, like your dog bit a kid, and they go, "What happened here?" And they go, "He bit a kid after we didn't throw rocks at him." Right. Yeah. And you're like, but why would you even need to say that? Why was it even necessary yeah. for you to make the point? Yeah. And, there's, and then everyone has to say that over again. And no one threw rocks at the dog. And no one threw rocks at him. The, and after no not throwing rocks that. at this dog, this dog just bit this kid. And you're like, I think you threw rocks at this dog. I hooked up with somebody. Had an sex, and it was not a dude. It was not a dude. <laughs> yeah, you're like, and why, I hooked up with why a Why do you ch- keep saying chick, this? Ju- but not a dude, though. And I, we had <laughs> anal sex, but not a dude. <laughs> I grabbed onto his not balls. Yeah. <laughs> grabbed onto his not balls. It was clearly labia. Um, <laughs> it's like something like that. But- you know, so so if you go back as far as like, um, so let's start with the fall of the Soviet Union, because th- this is like really That's where it all starts. That's how far back it goes. So like, you, the Soviet Union, it starts to unwind. I mean, was the Berlin Wall comes down in like eighty nine, in in ninety, you start having these kind of like movements toward breaking away, and then in the end of nineteen ninety one, the Soviet Union dissolves, and it's like the greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of the world. You know, like the evil empire in a largely bloodless revolution. You know, like the people take back and communism's over, and they're not doing communism anymore. Right. And it's like this this menace that ruled over half of Europe that is responsible Palpatine. for responsible for more deaths than Adolf Hitler. You know what I mean? Like is gone. And there was tremendous goodwill in Russia at the time. This is like a lot of people like like talk about this. People who like like scholars who went over there and stuff. I even think even amongst the people who will like disagree with me on the current Ukraine crisis, I think yeah. most people like agree on this that basically the Russian people they liked America at the time, and it wasn't like it at wasn't what time uh, around the fall of the Soviet okay. Union, early nineties, let's say. And it wasn't so much that like oh like because you know we like our war in Vietnam or something like that, or because of like any of our policies, it was like our system, even as corrupt as American capitalism is, it just worked a lot better than communism. And they wanted like our blue jeans and our rock and roll music. They were like, so we want a better so that's life. That's why I remember Gavin um, McInnes, uh, not McInnes. Yeah. Gavin McInnes. Gavin McInnes. I think of a Founder Wake Forest Vice player. Magazine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Hey, he was like, what do they say about us? And I just got back from like traveling. Out of respect, I went vice, not proud boys. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the yes. right way to do it. Um, he goes, uh, what do they say about us in these other countries? And I'm like, they don't. And yeah. he was like, what? And he goes, yeah, they have their own thing. But I'm like, when they do talk about us, it's when I would like, they're like, oh, you're from America? Like Schwarzenegger. Yeah. You know, oh, you too. Yeah, that right. it's like well, neither one of those guys are American, but like, but like they love but it's rock our and roll. Culture. It's right, they our love rock music. and roll. It's our and Hollywood. They love that shit. And we're blue Jeans, right? That's the cool part about America. So, so basically, and and I say this, people like I, the the people who are way on board with the the Ukraine war, like the Ukraine flags and their bios. And I talked about this on Rogan's podcast, and it went super viral. Joe I've Rogan, gotten, like, check a, it out. It's uh, a, about to get that skeptic tank bump. He's uh, well, that's why he's so big. Yeah. From the skeptic thing, yeah. um, but uh, he, um, but so if it, th- this clip like really blew up, um, and so I've gotten a lot of people who are like for this war who will try to argue with me about this shit, but like it's not even there's no debate. The documents have been declassified. Like you can go read the minutes of the meetings and see that. Hey, it before was... you do this, in terms of declassified, there's just medical research that they've mm-hmm. done that they say even when you teach a doctor that there's new research, and so it actually goes against like they're like uh, uh, red meat's great for you. They're like oh, actually red meat's not great for you. You take it in. Doctors will take this in for a bit and then go back to their old teaching. Yeah, well, they, they're unable to there do might, it. There so might be something. If you make to an that. opinion and they're like, well, now new documents have come out. Like, I already made my opinion. Well, because this, so because this was denied for years. The official line was that this never happened, and okay. it was only fairly recently that the documents have been so declassified. What so what happened was at during in 1990 and 1991, there was a series of meetings between the Soviet Union, between Gorbachev and the leaders of NATO in the West. And they were given assurances over and over again by all of the major players from uh, the Baker, who was the secretary of state at the time, uh, from um, uh, what's his name? Uh God damn it makes you sound less smart when you can't remember a name. Robert Gates, who was the head of the CIA at the time, George H.W. Bush, the president at the time, the leaders in NATO, the chancellor of West Germany, um, uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher, who was the prime minister in Britain at the time. They, and they told all Russia gave what? us that we would not move NATO eastward. 
if, where that, if NATO they, east the, NATO at the time was drawn right down the middle of Germany. It was Western Germany was a member of NATO. Eastern Germany was a member of the Warsaw Pact. They were with the Soviet Union. Okay, and we said they said that if you allowed German reunification, if you let Germany be one country again, we would not move NATO one inch to the east. Now, what they I mean, were we saying, we don't take over Poland. We don't take over Ukraine. They, they specifically say. In the declassified documents, they specifically say, because we're saying this, Poland and the rest of them can't come in. That They were also talking about Germany itself, where they were saying, basically, the deal was, and they kind of put pressure on Gorbachev, where they were like, okay, look, if you allow German reunification, you know, the Berlin Wall comes down, Germany can be one Germany now again. Mr. Germany's, Gorbachev, tear down that yes, wall. Germany is going to be a NATO it's country pressure now. pressure ever done. It was so solid. <laughs> so Germany is going to be one country now. Yeah. And Western Germany was a part of NATO already. So they were like, look, it's going to be a part of NATO as a country. Because it's going to take move... over. So we can't say Eastern is still part of Yuga. you got to let that now the way, well, Now, the way, well, the way they got him to agree with it was uh it wasn't just that it wasn't just like well we can't say this is that they kind of lean on him because you can read it in the declassified like you read between the lines a little bit but it's clear what they're saying where they're kind of like the americans and the british are almost like um well would you like germany to just be independent like maybe they won't be a part of nato at all and we'll just have an independent germany how does independent germany sound to you russia and you got and you know independent germany scares the shit out of everybody Basically, uh, yeah. from the first two world wars. Right, right, so you're, right, everybody's right. just like, how does that sound? Well, or no, maybe be, watch them. No, so, no, no. I would definitely now, watch them. So this is <laughs> yeah. how they got, you know, understandably. This is Look, the agreement was never, Germany was never going to be independent. I mean, they may claim they're independent, but like, they may say they're not occupied. We got a whole bunch of military and NATO bases in Germany. Like, G Germany is going to be locked down. That was known yeah. after the Second World War. That was So, basically, he agreed to this. Now, what they'll say... So, at first, the argument was this never happened. This never happened. These assurances were never made. Then, once the declassified documents came out, they changed it to, well, they never got an official treaty. They never got an official treaty that said that. So, what, it doesn't count. Because so it was just promises. It. Right. So it's like somehow like like your the promises don't mean anything, you know, which is a f interesting admission. It's like my in old itself. podcast network with all the promises they made me. <laughs> like I get the shares you said. Like, oh. Yeah. Well, but also, you know, that ignores kind of the fact that first off, a lot of dipl diplomacy is done through assurances and also the fact that we will also break treaties if we feel like breaking treaties. So it doesn't none of that really matters. But the point is just that like this is what was told to the Soviet Union in their final in their waning days. Then the other argument people said make we is, won't advance. It, we won't won't okay. expand NATO, our military alliance. Now, now, then the other What's argument the other? they'll make is that, well, it doesn't count because that was the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore, so we didn't make that promise to Russia. We made it to the Soviet Union. All of these are like... No, we made it to disband. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, dude. Like the And look, if you had bought into the Russia propaganda... Russia was the Soviet Union, same way England yes, is the UK. Yes. So now, if you had bought into the propaganda for the previous 50 years, they would have told you that when... The Soviet Union, if the Soviet Union went away, NATO would go away. The whole point of NATO was to, uh, was to make sure a, 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 a military alliance that if the Soviet Union invades any one of us, they've invaded all of us. We'll all defend everyone. So that was that was the justification. That's what the propaganda. But it's a government program. So like any government program, when the reason for existing went away, Let's it expanded. Reason. It gets bigger. It's just, so then there were the, the first round of NATO expansion happened in the late 90s under Bill Clinton. And at, like, just to be clear about this, I know. Well, some countries were like, "I want to join NATO so that Russia doesn't build up power and take us back." Yeah, no, there's no question. A lot of countries wanted to join NATO for a lot of reasons because you get right, guaranteed protection. The EU because they're like bail us out. Well, every you two get years. yeah. I mean, you get like your defense subsidized. You get guaranteed protection. Like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of reasons why people want to join it or countries want to join it. But at just to be clear, like at the time when NATO was expanding, it wasn't just like. Um, say like Ron Paul and Noam Chomsky and Pat Buchanan who were like this is a horrible idea like you're good it was like within the national security apparatus like there was a huge debate about this and all of like the wise like people were completely against this against and what NATO expanding uh, As, and it was the, and the neocons so I don't know term. how much. Love that term. We explained it once a long time ago. Well, you, you ever heard? You may know about this shit. There's a lot of shit lives. to talk about, but you know about the um, the project for a new American century. No. This became real big in like the 9/11 truther world, or like the kind of conspiracy world during George W. Bush, because they basically it was this think tank in the the late 90s 
um, and they wrote uh, like a bunch of these like big documents that came out. And they were always they were basically it, it was like George W. Bush's entire staff. It was founded by Robert Kagan and Bill Crystal. Um, and then, but the love, si the si love city slickers. Yeah, he was great in the movie. His foreign policy sucks. Oh, yeah. uh, but he's um. But and the the signatures on on it were like it, it was like Paul Wolfowitz and Dick Cheney and I think Rumsfeld was on it too. It just like all of George W. Bush's administration, mm -hmm. and they were calling for a regime change war in Iraq. And this was in the '90s, so the conspiracy oh, theories wow. really jumped on this after 9/11, where they were like, "Oh, it was all done to get this war in Iraq." I think that might be overplaying it it's more like they always wanted this war and then they got the opportunity and then they went in and did it but one yeah, of the i don't believe 9 11 happened but like um i'm in the minority sure, sure that's true you don't believe it happened but if it did it was the jews that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, <laughs> i love people like uh, jews planned it like just shut up jews couldn't have planned it. i'm like well we could have planned it. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, come on. We could easily do it. Our we history, do, we, we do, we're great. We could give you a dozen 9-11s tomorrow if we <laughs> yeah, wanted to. Yeah. I'm just you saying, I don't, us? Think, I don't think we did. <laughs> yeah. You want a 9-11 off right now? <laughs> you want I'll a 9-10? What's coming up? <laughs> so anyway, so the, these neocons, which is like, <laughs> this was a big part of what they were pr proposing in the Project for a New American Century as well, was also NATO expansion. Like, this was the foreign policy that they envisioned. In the same way, all the wars in the Middle East were a disaster. Why would NATO expand when you have no reason for NATO to even exist? Well, they're, they're, uh, yeah. well, look, I mean, the real reason is to expand your military alliance, to expand your power base. And and the what they would have said, the neocons, was basically that we have this opportunity right now. They have what they were calling the unipolar moment. The Soviet Union has collapsed. We're the only big power left. So right now we got an, an opportunity to take over the world, to remake the world in our image. Now, they wouldn't have said it in that language. They would have said more like, this but is where we can, you know, assert global leadership and protect American values and like, all, but really, but also it's all like, code for empire. Let's take over the world for either monetary reasons or also just like, so we can just run it. We, yeah. Let's just let's run. And also, I mean, this is like in the UFC, you're down three rounds to one or three rounds to nothing, and, and then you rock a guy. Like, don't wait. Right now is your chance. Well, well yeah, some, something like that. It's like, this this is our moment. We can really take over the world in a way. There's tremendous hubris involved in this. But look, just like all of the policies, like in like the war in Iraq, which everyone now admits was a complete disaster, these policies were also a disaster. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is that there, there were like really – major figures not like the kooks like me who are like critics of everything the government does but like major figures within the national security apparatus who opposed this in like the most passionate way wow. and like people like george kennan was the uh he was like the founder of the containment strategy that they say ultimately defeated the soviet union he was the biggest cold warrior like he was the biggest let's fight the soviet union everywhere all on board with all those wars in Vietnam and, and Korea that I would have been against and shit. And he, there's this interview you can find if you go look back at it. It was in the 90s. It has been 99. It was in the, in the first round of NATO expansion. Thomas Friedman's interviewing him for the New York Times. And here's George Kennan, who is the Cold Warrior. Yeah. And he's in his 90s at this point. But he is so furious. And he goes, he he's like talking to Thomas Friedman in the New York Times and he's like what are we doing we just won the Cold War and now we're starting a new one why would we what do, you do mean this starting a new one? because he's like this is going to be seen as an act of aggression by Russia we're, we're advancing the anti-Russian military alliance closer to Russia and he said he goes we're treating he goes we weren't fighting Russians we were fighting communism these aren't the communists these are the heroes that democratically overthrew communism like why are we picking a fight with them who the the new Russian like right, government the new right. like Russia was at least flirting with democracy in those days and he's like so why are we picking a, a fight with them and he says and what he he said was this he goes this expansion will continue until it continues to russia's borders and then russia will react and then when russia reacts the people who supported the expansion will say see this is why we had to expand all this time and he goes but they'll be completely wrong and he right says, just keep bullying them until they fight back and they're like just fucking yeah, he bull. said and he yeah. was i think he was 94 at the time when he said this and he goes they're literally throwing away my life's work or no, something really? to that something to that effect that my whole life's work was to bring down the Soviet Union and now we've done it and look at what you guys are doing now and this continued wow. the NATO NATO expansion continued under every president um under from Bill Clinton under Bill Clinton so expansion what they brought in more countries. countries more countries coming in more and more countries until there's countries right on Russia's border 
um, that that are, are are in NATO. I mean, like there's uh, I think it was the old Hillary Clinton where line. it should have been according to these guys. It should have been those are just independents. Yeah, well, I mean, according to them, it should have been independence. They they always objected to the NATO expansion. I mean, they took the early rounds lying down a lot more because they were much weaker. Um, and that's be, like the early the, rounds. What do you mean? The, like when the Russia early rounds of, of of NATO expansion, Russia didn't really do much. They grumbled, but they like, didn't do much. Like they that. were upset. I don't like that. Boris yeah. Yeltsin was very upset with Bill Clinton over it, and they were upset with every you know like every like new expansion. But Russia was well, very it was, weak it's, at the it's time. It's kind of like tell me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like hey, Russia's got nuclear weapons. Okay, yeah, what can we do? But it's like hey, we're putting something in Cuba. Like oh no, that's way too close. Oh well, okay. So that's a perfect actually example. So the up. So in and part of this, by the way, is also why Russia went in a more right wing direction. I mean, this is part of the rise of Vladimir Putin also. Um, But so so fast forward to 2008. In 2008, there's this uh, this cable. It was in February of 2008. There was this cable that was sent from uh, Burns, who is currently the head of the CIA. At the time, he was the U.S. ambassador to Russia. And he sends a cable back to Condoleezza Rice. This is the last year of the George W. Bush administration. Condoleezza Rice is the Secretary of State. And he sends a, a, me- a memo back to her. By the way, we only have this because Julian Assange leaked it. This was not something he put out to the public. This was what he was saying behind the closed doors. Like, this is what as his job as ambassador is informing the Secretary of State of this. Okay. okay. So he goes, uh, Ukraine at the time was interested in joining NATO. And he said in this cable, it was titled, Nyet means Nyet. And he says to Condoleezza Rice, he's like, look, the last few years I've been all over Russia, and I'm talking to everyone, and Ukrainian entry into NATO is the brightest of red lines for them. Like, he's saying this in, like, diplomatic terms, but he's basically saying they will not stand for this. And he says, he says in the memo, he says, I've talked to everyone from the farthest right wingers to Putin's sharpest liberal critics and it is unanimous to a person that Ukrainian entry into NATO is nothing short of a direct threat to Russia like this is their red line this is their Cuban missile crisis and one of the big things that they were really upset about was that so another thing I should add in this when Bill Clinton expanded NATO the first round he promised Russia that even though they were joining that these countries were joining NATO they wouldn't put any military equipment into these countries and then he broke that promise and then well or maybe he broke the promise but the promise was broken later it might have instead been instead of just going it might have been w bush it just broke it. going we're not gonna really stuff like that but if you attack them we're attacking back right but they're in our military lines right. okay but then they broke that promise and then george w bush is one of uh putin's big criticism uh, big uh, complaints is that he put these dual use rocket launchers in poland which evidently, and I'm no expert on like military equipment, but this is what Putin says, and I, I've heard a lot of other military people say this, that those can be, you can put like missiles with H-bomb tips in those. They can be used offensively, like they're dual-use rocket launchers, and that this could be used to nuke, uh, uh, like in theory, this Short cuts range. down the time that they'd have. of like. Uh, so Putin's very upset about this. This is one of the things he demanded in December of uh 2021 before the invasion a few months before the invasion he gave this big speech and he demanded that they 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 go, be they they uh they hold true to the promise that was made in 1997 that he want he's like i want all this military gear back to where you guys originally had it and they just all laughed him off like 1997 no one's going back to 1997 dude this is way over like it, it might as well have been 1597 like the right. response like we're not going back to that um so anyway so the, so it's in like this an Israel, memo, like God promised us, like God, what? Get out of here. So back to the memo that Burns is writing to Condoleezza Rice. He's basically saying that that's Ukraine is the red line for them. Like this is going to be. And he says in the memo, he goes, if we if this is going to be lead to fertile ground, he's saying in very diplomatic language, but he goes, this will lead to fertile ground for Russian intervention in Crimea and Ukraine. So he he's telling and this guy is currently the head of the cia so like he knows damn well what happened here so this is in february of uh of 2008 he writes this memo three months later the bucharest summit at nato they announce that ukraine and georgia will be joining nato so right after they said this is our brightest of red lines they announced that ukraine and they go thank you for your advice we're doing it anyway for your advice we're doing it anyway and a couple months after that Vladimir Putin went to war in Georgia. 
So whenever people start talking about, I'm just saying, I'm not, again, because people get, I'm not justifying him going to war in any of these places. I'm just saying, this is, this is how it went down. It. Right. This is how it went down. And basically the, the Georgia war started with this uh, this uh, breakaway province, uh, South Ossetia, uh, which is very ethnically Russian. There was a whole conflict there. Vladimir Putin said, I'm making a statement here. We're not taking it. He fucked up Georgia. Um, and then that, so, okay, so that's that. In 2010, uh, Viktor Yanukovych was elected president in Ukraine. And these elections were verified by the EU. You know, take with that what you will. But no one was contesting the results of these elections. He was the democratically elected president of, of which Ukraine. Country? Of Ukraine. Of Ukraine. Now, Yanukovych, who, who he? He, he ran as being kind of like, a, like neutral, you know? But he also was saying that he wanted Ukraine to join the, the European Union. Now, this wasn't the red line of NATO. It's not the military alliance, but it's the economic, you know, okay. uh, uh, group. And then in, in um, 2013, I guess it was, he went back on his campaign promise to join. There were a lot of factors involved in this. The EU kind of changed up the deal on him and they made it a much tougher deal. They were like, you have to take these loans uh, from the IMF. You have to do all of these like austerity measures. You got to cut your pensions and your benefits. Putin came in. And said, he basically did a good cop, bad cop thing with him. He goes, you make this deal, we're cutting off all trade with you. You don't make this deal, I'll give you the same loan, interest-free, no, no red tape, no restrictions, no austerity, no IMF, nothing. And Yanukovych went, we're going to go with Putin's deal. Now, some people were pissed off about this. And these protests broke Gotta out. Gotta make them a better deal. Late in 2013. Now, the thing is here, this is where the very beginning of what's known as the Maidan Revolution. Now, these protests break out. They're some, somewhat organic, somewhat not so organic. And in fact, George Soros, on his website for the Open Society Foundation, they brag about how their funding was instrumental in getting the people out on the street at the very beginning of the protests. Now, the protests are pretty small. And it's going into the winter. In Ukraine? In Ukraine. Okay. So there's they're protesting Yanukovych, who's now made the deal with Vladimir Putin. It's going into the winter. When you say they're protesting, it's another one. It could be anything. That could be, like, if the American version of that is like, oh, there's 30 people outside the White House, but nobody really cares. It's more than or, that. Or it's like the whole country's up in arms. It was nothing, nothing close to that. This is in late 2013. It's a few thousand people out protesting. So we don't like this guy. But we're going into the winter of uh of um uh, in ukraine and so they got to figure out how to keep the, so there was let's just say tremendous western support for these protests because they're US, like we're going home u.s taxpayer dollars flying in victoria newland who was giving uh, scarves and stuff victoria newland stay is out, out there they i mean dude so much more than that heat lamps tents rock stars celebrities they turned it into a freaking event to keep the protest going meanwhile u.s taxpayer dollars are fun are funneling in there victoria newland okay just to break down who she is very quickly victoria newland is the wife of robert kagan who i just mentioned earlier was the founder of project for new american century so the neocon who his whole plan was the wars in Iraq, the wars in Iraq, the war in Iraq, the wars in the Middle East, and NATO expansion back in the 90s. His wife, who was appointed by Dick Cheney and then promoted by Barack Obama, because fucking of course. And so now she's running the Ukraine policy under o Obama Biden um, in, in 2013, going into 2014. She's going over there and handing out snacks. John McCain's visiting, Senator Murphy's visiting, all types of Western backing of this protest movement and then yanukovych uh starts cracking down his cops are really cracking down hard on the protest movement really fucked up violent shit yeah. worse than like what our cops did to occupy wall street like real fucked up shit um, ukraine's a fucked up country um and this has the this lets the, the this makes the protest grow and grow and grow however there's some really ugly elements in these protesting groups which are the fucking neo-nazis the Azov Battalion guys, C-14. These Who are they? Guys, what do you mean? What do they want? These are like the grandsons of uh, of the what is it, the SS Galatian. There were the, the you know the Nazis invaded Ukraine, and some of them fought with the Nazis. Yeah. Uh, some of them were like on the side of the Nazis, and these are like their grandsons. This is the stuff where you'll see like all the dudes with swastika tattoos. I don't know if you've seen any of that online. 
about like uh, the guys in Ukraine. Ukraine. Well, they've now been absorbed into the Ukrainian army. But back in 2014, Wait, they were actual Nazis instead of like instead of like real deal Nazis instead of like whatever like no no no, no. these are like words. I worship Adolf Hitler that we have to exterminate the Jews and they were part of the protests against Yanukovych yes they were part of it they weren't yes. it wasn't them but they were part so they were in well, there there was a faction in there going hey we also don't want them well the, pro the protests are turning more and more violent and according to at least one c14 guy there's a video of him talking about this where he's like yeah look he goes we were only like 10 percent of the protests but if it wasn't for us it was the gay pride parade like we were the ones who were making shit happen right. we were the ones who were fucking killing people right and it gets more and more violent it's hamas the versus, thing gets, like, yes, versus like plo gets out of control so now you have a uh, like a street putsch that is backed by the West using real deal neo-Nazis. Then eventually the EU comes in and brokers a deal. And the deal was that Yanukovych would agree to early elections. So he would stand for election if the protesters pulled back from the government buildings that they had seized and he pulled his police forces back. So they worked out this deal and Yanukovych pulled his police forces back and the protesters advanced and seized all the government buildings and Yanukovych fled for his life. Wow. So this is how so now there's more information in this. I mean, one of the things I played on um This has all been declassified now? Th this is all fact. There's nothing here it's that so was so interesting even... when a government decides like we're gonna use terrible stuff. They talk about this in Still Life with Woodpecker. They're like this is outlaw character and he goes like every political person not just means politics but also like i'm for animal adoption or whatever like if you have like a that thing he goes every one of them left right or center will eventually let the ends justify the means and that's why i'm not political so it's like in uh in parts of malaysia and borneo they were like hey these people that have been cannibals they were like during world war ii i think they were like but they hadn't been for 100 years they came in britain whatever like start cannibalizing again we'll get behind you you just got to do it to these people yeah well yeah i mean there's something there's some and they're like they don't that. stand behind yeah. cannibalism but they're like we can use it for our advantage yep. then we'll use it yeah we don't like nazis but like go ahead we'll support you for yes. a little bit well that's right and, or and, or al-qaeda or whatever where it's like we'll support yeah you. well and obama the first black president armed both of them the neo-nazis in All ukraine right. and al-qaeda in syria Damn. um so now there's a few other things here that i could mention just to like add more to this like i played this on rogan where oh, i mentioned it and then rogan was like pull it up and played the whole clip of it um because it's really damning to see but there's this video of on the old colbert report um gideon rose is on um and this is in early 2014 and he gideon rose is the editor i don't know if he still is at the time he was the editor of foreign affairs uh, magazine which is the publication of the council on foreign relations like the most powerful foreign uh um foreign policy like group it's all a group of like military members and bankers and congressmen that all of the big people like go take advice from and talk to it's like the okay. it's like the shit alex jones always talks about but they're real they're a real group um and he is just openly talking about it on the show about how look the game here is to steal ukraine away from russia and he says so we'll they're kind of like robin to, to russia's batman and so we're going to try to steal them away and they're going to join the west and we got to kind of distract vladimir putin so he doesn't flip over the chessboard is how he says it so we want to be like hey putin you did so good at the olympics blah 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 and he's trying to like be funny and joke around about it but it's insane what he's saying through the whole thing that like this is the game wow. there's also this victoria newland phone call that got leaked Probably by the Russians. Uh, we don't really know who's for sure. Victoria Newland. Victoria Newland is who I just mentioned, Robert Kagan's wife, who's kind of overseeing this mm -hmm. whole thing. And on the phone call, mm -hmm. they're plotting out who should go into government and who should stay out of government. Um, now there's a what little. Do you mean, what do you mean? In where? In Ukraine. Okay. As this revel, as this coup, this revolution, whatever you want to call it, is kind of underway. It was a, a the tape comes out like two weeks before Yanukovych is overthrown. Now there's the. Some people have argued, which I am not convinced of, that the tape she's actually referring to like a deal that Yanukovych had offered at one point. Like at one point, Yanukovych, it was only like a day that this could have happened because Yanukovych offered like some of the uh, he offered a position to people in the like the protest leaders uh, in the government, if that would end the protest. And they immediately turned it down. Um, but either way, it's a tape between this guy um uh, the uh, an ambassador, I'm blanking on his name, Pyatt is his name, and Victoria Newland. And the tape starts with Pyatt going, we're in play. 
And Victoria Newland goes, okay, great. And they start talking about who sh who's going to go in government, who's not going to be in government, what the timeline needs to be. They go that, they say, uh, they go, this goes, she confirms that this goes all the way up to Joe Biden, who's the vice president. She says, uh, she says, Joe Biden's willing to get on the phone with them. And why do they want Yanukovych out? out? Because Yanukovych is doing, he, wasn't, he, he, he wants was, to make a deal with he Russia. He bailed on the EU deal and made a deal with Russia. Right. And so they're like, well, we got to get him out of there. So We're we trying to steal Ukraine. There. We're right, trying to steal right, Ukraine right. into and the West. He won't let us, right. he won't let them join us. And this is all in the back drop that a few years earlier they said ukraine is going to join nato like that this is going to happen right. all right so um so now so anyway so they yanukovych flees for his life new government comes in and takes power immediately the white house recognizes the new government as the legitimate government even though yanukovych who fled for his life to russia gets on tv and he's like hey i'm still the president of this country i'm said the i was democratically the democratic elected. Elected i am president. the rightful leader right. of this country Whoa. they go nope we're recognizing this new government the new because government that's the comes one they in. wanted yeah now so the new the whole time russia's like are you out of your i mean what the fuck are you doing to yes. us now there's uh we made a deal fair and square with these guys yes with we're fair as fair and square as politics is you know we bribed yeah. them better than you bribed them i mean right. again i'm not even saying any of russia's intervention in this is fair i'm saying it's the country on their border you know it's like in the world of governments meddling in other countries if we're meddling in mexico as we do quite often if we're meddling in mexico and then fucking Russian politicians and Russian taxpayer money is flooding into Mexico to overthrow the government that's friendly with us. It's like, no, you get the fuck out of here, man. Like, we, this is why it's comparable to the Cuban Missile Crisis. I'll get more into this, but it's like, we have a Monroe Doctrine that says no faraway power is allowed to come meddle in our sphere of influence. You're not allowed to do that. To come to China Canada. can't come fuck around in Quebec. Right. Uh, Russia can't come fuck around in Mexico. Russia can't put missiles in Cuba. What's it's that like, called? No, the Monroe Doctrine. Um, and and then Russia is saying we also want to have a Monroe Doctrine, and they're backed up all the way just and also to Ukraine. You told us you weren't going to do this. Yes, yes. There's also that aspect to it. You're forcing um, our hand here. So now the next thing I got to hit on this because there's mm -hmm. a lot. But so the next thing is Crimea. So Crimea is this little area. It was under technically a part of Ukraine, but you know if you think back a bit, Ukraine was a part of the Soviet Union. Um, and then Ukraine got its independence in 1991, but they worked out a deal that there was this Russian naval base, and I believe it's their only year-long warm water port, so it's a very strategically important naval base to them. But they signed like a huge lease, like I think a 40-year lease or something like that when, when, they, when uh, Ukraine became independent, and Russia's always had its naval base there. It's also the areas like majority ethnic Russian, and it's just, it's, it's technically a part of, of Ukraine, though. Yeah. Um, so when the new government comes in, uh, they immediately uh, say they're gonna we're getting rid of this lease. So Ukraine Russia, ba Ukraine get is like ships and get out. Get, yeah, you got to get out of uh, uh, Crimea. And Vladimir Putin said, "No, we will not be doing that." We had a deal. And we so had they deal. well, they go. He they say Vladimir Putin invaded Crimea. That's how you'll hear it, um, like in in the news if they talk about it. It's kind of true. I mean, he certainly sent in reinforcements, but what really happened is they left their naval base. Who like, left their naval base? The Russian, the Russian naval base. They went outside with their guns, and they were like, this is ours now. And it was essentially- Wait, 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 wait. So in Crimea, where they had this naval base. The Russians went, were expanding there. Well, not even expanding. They were just like, we're not leaving. Like, you're, you're saying you're tearing up our lease, and we're saying, we live here. This is ours. And they went outside. And they sent in more. So it would almost be like, hey, we're going to invade your house, your building here. And they're like, hey, get in there and help support them. Like, yes. get in there with guns. They sent like, in you're some not backups. In but really, they probably could have taken the thing without the backups. They had a huge naval base there. Like, it wasn't like, you know, the, the, it just, it wasn't even like, um, it's what it, it's what was what's known as a coup de main. It's uh like sounds it's, good. Well, yeah, it's delicious. It sounds delicious. Uh, yeah. But it just means like it's like they took it by overwhelming force. It was essentially bloodless. There wasn't a battle. There was so much in there. Like oh, there, there was just like yeah. There's no. It just wasn't happening. It's kind of like um the way the Taliban took back Afghanistan. They just, they just took it, it yeah. and everyone just let them take it. I think I, there were maybe three or four people died in like some little protest that they had. But Where? there wasn't like a battle Taliban. when they took Crimea. No, no, no. Oh, when oh. when Russia took Crimea, so they just took it. And they were like, no, this is ours. Like, sorry, it, The oh, whole Crimea. Yes. And it kind of always was theirs. And Crimea's you know? a region? Yeah. Okay. It kind of always was theirs. You know what I mean? Like, it just, 
that now it's it's it used to officially be Ukraine's, but Russia had their naval base there. Now it's officially Russians and Russia has their naval base there. And th so they took Crimea. Um, now the other aspect here is that there is Russia was a vi uh, Ukraine rather was a very divided country. So you have the the portion in the uh, eastern part of uh, Ukraine has a lot more ethnic Russians, and then the portion in the western is much more ethnic Ukrainians. And so the the eastern part in the Donbass region. Uh, they overwhelmingly voted for uh, Yanukovych, the guy who was overthrown, who fled for his life. Okay. And so when he got overthrown and the new government comes in, they were like, we don't recognize this new government. And they started seizing a bunch of government buildings there because they were like, hey, you seized a bunch of government buildings and got this guy out of here. Well, we don't recognize this new government. That's who we voted for. We're seizing a bunch of government buildings and doing that. And then there was like a civil war that raged on for – Went until Vladimir Putin invaded, so from 2014 to 2022, something like 15,000 people. In Crimea, people all over, all over Ukraine. No, uh -huh. not in Crimea. Crimea was peaceful. That uh -huh. was just under Russian right. control. Uh, but the, but within all of Ukraine, there was the civil war that raged on. Something like 15,000 people died, um, and Vladimir Putin, you know, kept talking about how this. This was a big problem for him that ethnic Russians were being targeted. Now, I should be completely fair. During this civil war, Vladimir Putin. Definitely sent in like special ops. Like there, there were Russians fighting in that civil war. Also, really? he didn't yeah. full out invade the country, but he definitely sent people in to back up. So the fucking... we both were doing that. Yeah. Yes. No. At the same time, once this new government comes in, Obama, although he backed this neo-Nazi-led, you know, street putsch, he wouldn't arm them. He he refused to arm them. What did he do? He well, he went. Well, we did what we did for you, and what, what, that's what that. did we do for them? We helped you overthrow the government. Right, right, That's right. that. You know, we we supported your the, your revolution. He wouldn't arm them. Okay, wouldn't send him weapons. There were calls to, and he wouldn't. And I think probably, I think he may have even said this somewhere, but I'm not sure. So don't take this with a grain of salt. But I think he even said somewhere that like he knew how dangerous some of these guys were, and he didn't really want to arm them. He's like, we did this in in Iraq and Afghanistan. Whatever. Well, like, yeah, like maybe maybe so that like, was part of it. We're not doing that again. I don't know, but. Uh, so he, I mean, he was still arming at the time, was still arming Al Qaeda in Syria. So I don't know if it was learning his lessons, but at least in this case, he didn't want to do it. Um, now maybe he was concerned with what Putin would do. Now, then as the Trump years begin, NATO starts working on military exercises and training, uh, with the Ukrainian military while this. N yes. While this civil war is going on. The civil war is going on, and it's the new government who overthrew the Yanukovych government. The Poroshenko government is in now. And uh, Poroshenko, or maybe uh, Zelensky comes in a little bit later. I don't remember the exact time frame there. But I think it started before Zelensky came in. They started doing the military exercises with them, training up uh, the, the Ukrainian uh, army. And then Trump. Now, if, if you remember, so if you remember famously what Trump got impeached for was holding up an arms deal to Ukraine. Holding up an arms deal. If you remember, it was the uh, the quid pro quo. So Donald Trump said that he wanted them to investigate the the Bidens. This is now Zelensky's in now. And he said, I want you to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden, or maybe you don't get this weapons deal, was kind of the thing he said to him. And that was the big scandal that like, they made hey, out of it, that, that you're basically, you know, it's kind of a debatable thing, but they were saying, well, you're trying to get them to come up with dirt on your opponent, your opponent. and th there was and dirt you can't on be them. trading fucking right so, yeah you know now y trump could make an argument that like no this is in the national interest to know what's going on there or something like that it's not yeah, my yeah, personal but, interest but not like but then we won't give you these arm like eh, it's a, it's yeah a, it's, 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 a, it's i don't a, like it. I, i'd say at least there's a case to be made yeah. that it was a little like yeah a little bit of a faux pas if nothing else um but i mean there was dirt on the bidens there right like the the so basically this this company burisma I know there's a lot of shit to throw, but it's all like kind of important. So this company, Burisma, was an energy company in Ukraine, like a crony energy company that was totally in with the Yanukovych government that had been overthrown. And so when the Yanukovych government got overthrown, they were real worried. And they were like, oh, shit, the government that we're in bed with just got overthrown. What do we do now? And so what they did, what this is how the whole thing started. What they did was they hired Hunter Biden. They hired the vice president of the that sun. Was, yeah, they went right to the source. Instead of just bribing the new government, they were like, we're just going to put the vice president's son on our board. So it's and like, oh, no, fucking... leave those guys alone. I know they're part of the old government. But that's, they're actually cool. They're, yeah, so that that was their way of buying Dude, one time, one They put time, a CIA guy yeah. on their board also. Wow. So, they, so they bought in like that. So And now it did come out on the 
the Hunter Biden laptop, there was at least some stuff that seemed, you know, the big guy. I, I don't know for sure, but it certainly seemed like they were talking about kickbacks to Joe Biden. And Hunter Biden's business partner claims, and he told the FBI this, that he met Joe Biden before the kickbacks were going to Joe Biden and that Joe Biden knew exactly kickbacks. what they were doing. Meaning they were paying Hunter Biden this money just to sit on the board. The guy doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know anything about energy. He's just getting paid a check because his last name is Biden and that basically his dad was getting some of the money. That he was taking some and then giving it back to Joe Biden. Now, if that's Whoa. true, which I, I do think circumstantially... That's even, it's, like, it's even worse than the Trump thing. But Trump's like, we're going to hold back arms for you if you don't do this. Well, the point is, they're like, we're just going to pay you if you do this. Well, the point is that Trump was trying to get them to investigate that. Right. He was like, I know that's what's going on. So now, but the bigger story than any of that, that never got talked about much in the impeachment. And that probably the reason what he should have done is I'm just thinking sure. this out loud because I'm just hearing about all this like fully. What he should have done was I'm giving him the arms. Hey, FBI, I need you to investigate this thing. Well, he should have not given him the arms for other or reasons. Or whatever. Whatever he was going to do for his own reasons, for his own yes, political yes, reasons. Yeah. Yes, it but shouldn't it should have been. should be unrelated to this. Yes, sure. That, fair enough. But what a lot of people you know, kind of didn't focus on there was that Trump caved. He didn't hold up the arms deal and demand that they investigate the Bidens. He didn't get the investigation into the Bidens, he and he gave it. them the arms he anyway. Tried it. He basically just tried a mafioso tactic, didn't really work, and he caved and gave in the weapons. There's Comedy Central deals where it's like, uh, you're like, you do a story on my show or do whatever, and it's like, we want your material forever. And you're like, yeah. no, you can't have the material. Like, All right, we'll do the deal anyway. And, right. And Exactly. And so... That, so then, so Donald Trump, NATO is now doing exercises with the Ukrainian military, training them up. Donald Trump sends in these major weapons packages as the civil war is raging on. Donald Trump loses in 2020 the election to Joe Biden. Joe Biden uh, comes back in. The, the vice president, who was the guy who given the attaboy to the, the bloody street push that charge. overthrow, is now the president of the United States of America. And then Vladimir and Putin, it seems like Vladimir Putin essentially concluded at this point We're that fucked. you guys did it. Even though you didn't officially make NATO a, a, a Ukraine a member of NATO, you basically made them a de facto member of NATO because you're doing NATO exercises with them, you're arming them, and you you know were instrumental in overthrowing the, the government that was willing to do a deal with me. And he said, that's it, and he fucking invaded. Now, wow. none of that is to justify Vladimir Putin invading the Ukraine. Why it happened. But don't tell me it was unprovoked. Wow. This is such fucking bullshit. Now, a few other things just to keep in mind here. Again, I know this is a lot. Danny said this, Polishek, uh -huh. because he he's Canadian. So he was like, when they were busting up the truckers, right? And they were like, hey, there's Nazis in those truckers. The truck or whatever, like we're not gonna go to work unless we get a better deal. Uh -huh. And he goes, "There's Nazis in there." Like, no, oh. they were just they just wanted the the COVID mandates ended. They right. weren't even out asking for a better. They were just like, "Let us go oh, to work." Right. Okay. Like, yeah. You know. That's that is it. But then they go, "Okay, we gotta listen to them. We gotta listen to them. They're blockading cities, whatever." It's like fine, but they're just they're just like they're 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 camping out. They're having a fun time. They're truckers also yeah. doing a lot of meth, having a good time. And good, um, good people. But then they go, "Hey, there's some Nazis in there. We gotta stop this because you can't have Nazis." And Danny's like. So Nazis in Canada can't be allowed, but Nazis in the Ukraine are fine. Uh huh. I've actually heard people. It was really funny. There's a uh, there was a debate online about Ukraine yeah. um, between uh, Kathy Young, who writes for uh, the Bulwark, I believe, mm -hmm. and she's real in support of it, and Scott Horton, who's uh, uh, like the biggest anti-war genius on foreign policy on the planet, just incredible. And he uh, he starts giving it to her about this. You know, like he's like, she goes, there was at one point where there's like a back and forth and she's like, look, I don't really want to get into the whole Azov battalion thing. We could talk about that for hours. And he's like, of course you don't want to get into it. Of course <laughs> you don't. And he goes, let me ask you this on a scale of one to 10. How much do they love Adolf Hitler? And she's like, well, it's complicated. And he goes, 10. The answer is 10. <laughs> and like, there's this great exchange with them. And she goes, she goes. Well, it's it's true that they were founded by a Nazi, but they've reformed since then and they've now been absorbed. And you're like, oh, my God, you will make excuses for them that you would never make for a right wing group in America right. today. Like, even if it was just founded by like a racist, you'd never make those excuses. Even Gavin McGinnis right? is like started this like weirdo group. Yeah, Whatever. you'd never give and then him as soon that as they're like, Oh, they got violent. I was out. As yes. soon as they got violent, I was like, hey, guys, this is not my thing at all. I just wanted to like not masturbate for a while. I thought it'd be funny. 
Kathy uh, you, you Young. You guys are doing nuts stuff. And people are like, you started this group. They would never show that much charity to Gavin McGinnis for the Proud Boys, which were never like sworn loyal to Adolf Hitler. You know what I mean? They were yeah. nothing like they these guys. The yeah. C-14 militia is named after the 14 words in 1488. Like it's the the uh, we must protect a white future for the white. Pe- it's it's the neo Nazi slogan or whatever. Damn, okay. Like these are real deal swastika tattoo wow. Nazi. You know. So yeah, all that shit's crazy. Um, but the other thing that I just wanted to mention on the topic of like provoking Russia is that also during these years, right? This is all while this is happening. Is that the American, which you know, you got to look at it from outside the perspective of the empire. Have a little strategic empathy, as John Mearsheimer likes to say. Like, just like think about this from their perspective. From whose perspective? Want, the Russian perspective. Right. If you want to understand this conflict, right? By the way, Obama was good at this too. I remember him saying that you can't just negotiate. You have to say, what are you guys looking for? Well, you can't be like, we want all this, we want all this. But but in general, it goes if you're going to negotiate with Iran. Well, what are you looking for? Like, well, we just want this. Or if you're going to negotiate with, like, whoever, just go, what are you looking for? Yeah. The, the, and then you're like, oh, okay. Well, I can see how this goes against that. That's your main thing? Oh, we can give on that. Obama was really good at giving speeches about this shit. Yeah, he wasn't okay. so great about right, actually right. the uh, words doing were any great. of it. But okay, he, was, he was good about giving speeches about okay, this shit. Fair. But, um, <laughs> you know, but so, okay, so while this is going on, you got to just look at it from their perspective. Because people will be like, they'll say things like, well, NATO is expanding, but these countries wanted to join NATO. And they'll say, well, NATO is just a defensive alliance. So why should Russia be worried about a defensive alliance? Just don't attack them and you won't get attacked. And there's several problems with that. Um, number one is that NATO is a defensive alliance, except for all the times that they're not. Um, like all the times that they've fought in aggressive wars, right? Like in Afghanistan, in in uh, right. in Libya, in Serbia, and um, by the way, this is one of the things that Vladimir Putin, he's got this like very dry uh, Russian sense of humor thing to him, and he's if you listen, he gave a uh, he gave two speeches when he first declared war, and there's one of them where he just goes down the list like needling american presidents and so last ones th- yes so bill clinton <laughs> if you know bill clinton launched this war in serbia if you remember to split kosovo off you remember the war in the, the yeah, 90s they made this claim that milosevic was going genocidal they never ended up finding the evidence the fbi went over there to investigate they never found the mass graves that they said they were going to um but we fought this war now they couldn't get a un resolution to fight this war because russia had veto power this is back in the 90s and so Bill Clinton just did it anyway. He just fought the war under NATO because he said a minority ethnic group was being uh, targeted. So we fought a war against them. Um, and uh, Made it up. so so when Vladimir Putin is uh, and I believe what a great double- easy way to make it up too. You just say that thing. People are like we have to help. I, I I go look this up. I've read this before. I'm not 100 percent sure if this is right or not. So uh, just just prefacing that. But I believe the first strike in the war in when Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine was on this like television tower and it was like the same as the first strike in the war in in uh Serbia was on this major television tower and they said that that was a direct like ode to that war but wow. when Vladimir Putin gives this speech he goes um he goes well he goes uh you know we have to go protect an ethnic group who's being targeted right Bill Clinton and he goes and we have to go see about these weapons of mass destruction right George W Bush and that. we have to go. Oh. And he went through like the presidents and was like this. Like he was saying, he's like, look, international law doesn't fucking exist. You motherfuckers don't sit here and pretend to me that You've you're not allowed all to invade things. a country. You've done all these don't things. You? And, and the truth is, like, however oh. you feel about the war, like these American politicians are just the biggest hypocrites in the world to try to get Vladimir Putin invaded a sovereign country. He's committed war crimes. Oh, has he? Like, like oh, yes. OK. You, you oh, overthrew an elected government. And like, just look at what you've done the last 20 years. Iraq, right. Syria, Afghanistan, drone bomb campaigns in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Libya. I mean, like, you know, like, so from Vladimir Putin's perspective and from an outside perspective, no, NATO is not a defensive alliance. NATO is the European military wing of the American empire, the most war hungry country in the world. And through this whole time period, right? Through the, this whole time period that, well, this this civil war was going on in Ukraine, the American CIA yeah. and FBI is doing what? They're framing Vladimir Putin for installing Trump. 
They're claiming that Vladimir Putin hacked the elections in America. Wow. They're laying the, like, now. Listen, this isn't just. It's not just like someone on CNN. It's not just like Brian Stelter saying this. Like the fucking CIA, our warfare making machine, is saying, "Oh, by the way, Vladimir Putin overthrew your elections." Like essentially claiming like the grounds for a war in some sense. Like, this is all going on at the same time. They're also spreading all of these lies about, like, Havana Syndrome. He was attacking our agents. He put bounties on U.S. soldiers' heads in Afghanistan. What's all Havana of these Syndrome? things. All It was this whole fucking made-up thing that's poison been completely, de- yeah, like, completely been de- debunked. That They were, like, trying to poison Americans with this thing. They found it's out so it was It's so funny from, when like, you hear these things, and I've believed them, too. And then you, like, look back at, like, um, uh, 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 um, Reefer Madness. And you're like, they're going to play piano all fast and eat glass and fuck black dudes. And you're like, what the fuck? And you're like, only one of those three was true. And he's like, I'll give you the black dudes. And you fully believe all this and you're in the moment. Now, looking back, it looks so fucking retarded. But like, but like this stuff is like, no, you can't go to Russia. They'll poison the fucking doorknob. Yes. So, right. So taking all of this in totality, this is only getting us up to the invasion of, of Ukraine. But I'm not saying Vladimir Putin is justified to invade Ukraine. I'll say it. I'm not saying. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I he's have the balls right. That you don't. You do. You always go a step further. That's why you tend to win these <laughs> a elections. Step further. That's why. Yeah. You, that's why you're the president. <laughs> um, but it's like. But I'm just saying. Take all of this together. The claim that this was unprovoked is ludicrous like it's just ridiculous it's no what happened was we poked him and poked him and poked him and poked him until he finally did it and i gotta say i think i really do believe and i can't prove this but i i really believe that america wanted this war i think this is what this is what the plan why to knock him down fully I think the goal there was a um it was an admiral or someone who said this to invade to russia excuse to invade russia that basically no that it was more like, look, we basically figured out that we don't really we don't really know how to defeat an insurgency, but we damn sure know how to arm one. And we can kind of give Russia their own Afghanistan. So you their know what own happened. Vietnam here. Yeah. We can bleed them dry by doing what we're doing right now. We don't even have to fight them in a war. We can just arm the other side of the war and get them into this long drawn out conflict where they can bankrupt themselves. You know who did this? Who? Iran. During okay, America went into uh Afghanistan and Iraq. And I forget it was one first. Maybe it was Afghanistan first. It was but maybe, Afghanistan okay, first, but, yeah. but maybe Well, coming... I mean, Iraq with George H.W. Right, Bush. right, right. Yeah, 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 Afghanistan first under George um, W. Bush. Yeah. And they go, uh, so I forget which one it was. The details I don't have. And they go, and no one expected them to roll over that country that fast. It was either Iraq or Afghanistan. It was like two weeks. Yeah, Iraq and like, probably. Yeah, you take over a country, you're America, but a year, six months, you know, unless you use nuclear weapons, it'll take some time. Right, right. And it was just boom, 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 goodbye. And everyone at that point in the Middle East was like, oh, fuck. We knew they were powerful. We didn't know that much, you know? Uh, it's like going to a Yankee game with Chris D. You're like, I thought you were famous, but I didn't even realize, you know? Right, right. Uh, so yeah. like, you're gonna <laughs> we can't even go get a fucking popcorn. Um, and at that point, Iran, who had been negotiating with whatever – uh, with U.S., like, we want this, we want that. They go, hey, what's up? We're Iran. Uh, we'll do it all. We'll do it all. Let's just get peace. Whatever you wanted, we'll do it. We see how powerful you are. We're not going to fucking do this. You have dragons, clearly. You know, we're right. done. We're out. And America was like, nah, fuck you. You're next. And so at that point, they're like, what do you mean? They're like, you're next. They're like, we'll give you everything you wanted, the nuclear stuff, everything. They go, nope, we're taking your country. And they go, Fuck. Well, now all we got, Iran, is let's throw a bunch of money into Afghanistan and Iraq and they're, and they're fucking – so America's got to sidetrack themselves with trying to take over Afghanistan, all these insurgents, and keep them occupied well, so they don't come for us. Well, I mean, I think they – it's more so in Iraq than Afghanistan. I mean, you know – But, like, let's keep them busy was, there, was well, Iran's look, game this plan was, somewhere else. This was Osama bin Laden's game plan. This was the – he and he explicitly wrote this, that he was like, yeah, we can't, like, defeat – America militarily, but we can lure them into a war. This was the With point of nine yeah. eleven that we could draw them into Afghanistan, where all empires go to fe- to die. You know, like this was the whole game. Wow. And um, there's a uh, 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 one of Osama bin Laden's sons gave an interview 
uh, years after the wars were going on. Jimmy and he Lund. said, he said, my dad could not have imagined that he would get so lucky that you guys would also invade Iraq. Like that you would lock yourselves down in both of these quagmires. And like, I'm not saying it destroyed the United States of America, but if you look at where we are now to compare to where we were in say the year 2000, yeah, it weakened us a lot to do all of this shit. So anyway, that's kind of my guess on this is that this was the plan. Now, I don't know. I could be wrong that maybe the plan wasn't um, to lure Putin into invading Ukraine, but I will say that the official stated reasons for why they sent in the big weapons packages to Ukraine was they said it was to deter Vladimir Putin from invading Ukraine. So best case scenario, no, 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 this is before, oh, before, okay. before he invaded. So best case scenario, they're really, really bad at deterring and it actually turned out to be a provocation. And worst case scenario is they knew it was going to be a provocation and they knew what they were doing. I, I'll say this. We definitely did this to the Soviet Union in Afghanistan in 1979. Set this set. is how we lured them in to uh, to Afghanistan. And we learned nothing. Then, and, we, then we went right in. Or, you know, we learned something from it. To, you know, took down the Soviet Union that way, and now we're trying to Got take it for down 20 years Russia. On the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. We still fucked, you know, we still didn't learn the lesson in the fact that we did it ourselves. Um, but... So that's so that's kind of what leads up to the um, and by the way, I just want to say, because I know there'll be people who like when they listen to this, if the ones who don't agree with me, who will be like, OK, well, you said all this shit, but you left out that Putin did this fucked up thing or this fucked up thing or this fucked up thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. but that's what everyone's talking about. You know what I mean? Like everyone already knows that, that part's Putin's covered. That part is covered by everyone. So I'm just saying this is the shit that no one talks about. And back to this this point that I made earlier yeah. um, about look at like I was saying, Rogan versus Fauci. Yeah. Like, take their words God, from two what a years fucking, ago. If that was actual combat, what a one sided fucking fight that what would if, be. But what if Fauci just caught him? Like, he just caught him in a guillotine. <laughs> He's like, you wait, like, you know leg locks? We'd all, we'd all just watch him go, <laughs> no. Nah. Dude, he tapped him in a minute. Yeah, he goes, like, ah, I can't believe it. You get up and Rogan's like, Fauci, no, no, no. Rematch. Like, no, it's over. Yes. And he's carried like, out by weak, weak minded like, people. Like, the next day, like, like Rogan calls you and he's like, hey, dude, come do the pod. And you're like, Nah. I don't know, man. You're kind of a bitch. I just, I, I just, I got other things I'm going busy. on. Yeah. You go. Sorry, what dude. I just, my dog needs walking. You go. Ah, uh, it's I, I can't. I got invited on. Are you garbage that day? Sorry, yeah. dude. I got just other things. So. Yeah, yeah, it would be something. Okay. Do anyway. you want anyone else to be interested? Like, so, I don't think so, man. So, um, just to say this, right? So, in 2014, rewinding back a little bit, when the the Yanukovych go government's overthrown. So there, sure uh, went to China. there's this guy, uh, John Mearsheimer. He's uh, one of ours. And uh, you're, um, so he's uh, <laughs> the, the dean of the realist school on foreign policy, like a world-renowned scholar. And he breaks down all of this shit really brilliantly. I mean, go, go listen. He knows a lot more about this shit than I do. Um, but he was right about all of this. And he's not coming at it from my perspective. Like, I'm a non-interventionist libertarian. I don't believe in fighting wars unless they're, like, necessary wars. I definitely don't believe in fighting proxy wars of choice on Russia's border. Like, this is insane. But he's just, like, a realist. He's not against state power. He's against, like, smart... He's for smart wars and not for stupid wars type thing, you know? Um... But he said in 2014, after the, that government was overthrown, he said that his exact quote was that the U.S. is leading Ukraine down the primrose path and it's going to end in disaster. That basically they're leading. I don't exactly know what the saying comes from, but meaning that you're leading someone down this path that looks real nice. Oh, that's going to end with your total destruction, because essentially they're convincing Ukraine to get really tough with Russia and Russia's going to end up fucking you up. And these are my words. not Th his. That's kind of what's happened in in Iraq the first time in Iraq the second time in Afghanistan. We're like, no, no, you guys help us. We'll be cool. And then we and just then leave we, and like go get slaughtered. This, yes, this is what we did with the Kurds in yeah. uh, in the first Persian Gulf War. And yes, that's right. We've done it with a lot of. But so and he says that this was his his prediction. He goes, this is going to lead to disaster for Ukraine. Like this is this is what he said in 2014. And we're like, in 2014, Victoria Newland said, now that the Yanukovych government has been overthrown, Ukraine has chosen to be a part of the West and they can be a liberal you know, country in Europe and they can be advanced and their economy will be wonderful. So like just saying like the predictions of the people who were like wow. skeptical about this policy wow. versus those who predicted that he's this like, would all he, be great they're for making them. making your promise it's not going to be great. And she goes, well, you guys, it's awesome. And yeah. Like, That's the promises I was talking about. Wow. And, and look like 
but look like and, and in many ways vladimir putin when he said that when he felt like they had a, 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 basically done it they had stepped over his red line and made ukraine a de facto nato country even if not in name um so he he's kind of right i mean look at him they're they got attacked they're not a nato country we're not under any obligation to defend them and look we've given them an unlimited budget to work with this is the obligation we'd have toward a nato country and so like we're really we are doing that and then i mean okay so that's basically leads up to when vladimir putin invaded ukraine a lot's happened since then too over the last year but i just kind of felt like none yeah. of this is really the last year but i just feel like you kind of need to like yeah no, get you need some to of this background to get it's it. just like when people get mad at jokes like you need context what is yes. it like oh it's an offensive show like oh well, that's a lot different than somebody's on the bus saying these things like right oh okay or like, like uh, you remember with like the daniel tosh thing where they're like even they're like well he made a rape joke and they're like well actually he said what do you guys want to joke about and someone shouted out rape and then and he like, was oh, like oh what's funny story. about that you know they're like yeah that's that's a very different thing than he just went up there like hey guys so what's the deal with yeah. rape i like it yeah. you know it's like yeah that's not exactly what happened right. um so again you know like so wow. so okay so vladimir putin invades uh ukraine um since that time the initial um response from joe biden was that we're going to put the highest level of sanctions on russia oh, and that this will destroy the russian uh currency the ruble um, and that, you know, it might hurt us a little bit, but it's going to hurt him a hell of a lot more. And um, that's that's what we're going to do. Uh, today, the Russian ruble is stronger than it was no, when those really? sanctions went on. Totally backfired. How's that? Um, well, because they're a net exporter of energy, and they found other clients. So basically what happened is that this pushed China and Russia much closer together. Wow. Um Russia and China, you know, I think because China's kind of like they don't like this very much because they got their own interests in Taiwan there and they don't really like the standard that they're not allowed to do what they want to do to countries around them. Now, I'm not saying that's great or anything, but there, it, it was very clear that like, OK, if they defeat Russia here, then the the most war hungry force in the world, the U.S. federal government has its eyes solely set on China. So they're like, okay, we don't want Russia to be defeated here. Like, we don't want Russia to collapse. And so China is now working with Russia. Um, they went over just recently. Right. She she went to Moscow and met with Vladimir Putin. Who's she? She's the the president of China. She? I believe that's how you're oh, actually oh, pronouncing oh, it. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 you're saying the woman? Yeah. No, no, no. She. I'm yeah, just trying to. Yeah. I'm just trying to insult the Chinese president. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this chick goes over there. They signed an economic agreement that they're going to trade in Chinese currency. So they got currency. a partner now. They're fine. They, well, they also got... Uh, then China went and brokered like uh, an agreement to normalize relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which is a really big deal. Because wow. those countries have like never gotten along. Something America was never able to do. Wow. It looks like uh, India is joining up with them. It looks like Brazil is joining up with them. There's been a major shift in kind of like the global dominance of america and as some of these countries who were supposed to be under Relying our thumb the dollar and the, are now are now moving away standard, from the dollar yeah, yeah. um and wow. so also in the process of this war you say in the last two years i mean it's been it's been awful i, I don't know exactly what the numbers are because there's different like accounts for them and there seems to be um like this this push in the corporate press to say russia's getting destroyed in this war yeah but also if we don't keep giving ukraine money then they're gonna collapse in a second and you're kind of like well which one is yeah it? Like, yeah yeah it's it... uh, yeah what what's the deal i i because that's another thing you said last time it always it's something i repeat a lot to people is russia this super dangerous power that can roll over everybody and we have to worry about because they can roll over us and that's a real possibility or are they having trouble with this country that you couldn't place on a map uh, can't be two both years ago can't be both of those yeah. things either he's about to reconstitute the soviet union yeah. or he's being utterly humiliated in ukraine but it is My not both of those was things. the only way to like uh bring those two things together and make sense of it is he's not looking to take over all of ukraine he's just looking to like take certain regions and then he has well he has done that he certainly has done that the truth is there's no indication that he's looking to do anything more than than what he's doing in ukraine and he's never said he's going to move on poland he's never said he's going to reconstitute the soviet union he has said things about how like russia was once a great respected country and they're going to be a great respected country again but that's fairly standard for a nationalist leader he's a nationalist he's, he's like, a, he's like he's I, did, I don't like i remember when we were the ussr yes we were powerful I'm I'm very much into Russia. I want us back there. Yes, that's more or less it. Yeah. He's not a communist. 
He's like a corrupt Republican, wow. basically. You know, like yeah, they're an oligarchy. Um, there's so you know it's and they're fucked up. And he's a thug, and he has committed lots of war crimes uh, in this war. He's killed tens of thousands of innocent people, yeah. maybe more than that. Probably over a hundred thousand uh, soldiers and civilians Where? have died in Ukraine since he's since 100, he's invaded. hundred thousand, probably more than that total. What? Um, I don't know exactly. You know, Ukrainians, seen, uh, mostly military, but civilians as well. Um, Whoa! Yeah, it's awful. And the military office is a lot of people are just like you're in. You're, oh, a lot of them got drafted. Now the other thing that happened is that. Uh, Ukraine has gone from being like a corrupt uh, country to like a full blown authoritarian uh, like, you know, country in this war. They've banned their political opposition. They've nationalized media. They're instituting the draft. They're not letting men flee the country. They have to fight in the war. Um, now, it does seem from some polling that an overwhelming majority of them want to fight. Um, but it's hard to tell exactly how accurate that is. And also, that might have something to do with us sending them a hundred billion dollars in weapons. You know, yeah, he sends them a lot of weapons; they're more likely to fight. Now, it was reported by Fiona Hill, who is again not a libertarian. She is like a never Trump Republican type, yeah. um, who like turned on Trump and I think testified in the in the January sixth hearings or or if it is impeachment. I can't remember one of those. But she reported, and there's been some other people who have reported about this too, that they essentially last year had a deal worked out for a ceasefire. And the deal was essentially in pencil, not in ink, but had it been in principle agreed to on all sides, Excellent. was that uh, Russia would keep Crimea, the Donbass region would be independent, the rest of Ukraine- uh, Independent, like new country? Yes, an independent country. Um, the rest of Ukraine would go back to Ukraine, and they would make an agreement to not join uh, NATO in exchange for Russia pulling back all of its military, a ceasefire, and security assurances. And that they had basically agreed to that deal, and that Boris Johnson, uh, went be as a surrogate of America, basically, went over there and and convinced Zelensky that under no circumstances can you sign this deal, that you they should not get one inch of territory, you're giving up too much, keep this war going, you can win. Uh, so there were lots of... There were lots of like opportunities to for a deal to be made and Blinkett, the secretary of state has has openly said he has not been meeting with sergey lavrov who's putin's right hand man about working on negotiations on this that way they won't negotiate with vladimir putin until he leaves or surrenders everything and now Explain zelensky yeah. is saying zelensky has said several times that his demand is all Ukrainian territory returned, including Crimea, which is just not gonna straight up not going to happen. Like, no, that's like, still That's ours. just not going to happen. Also, it's, and, too, it's too important a base for them because if it's that warm weather yeah, base. Yeah. Now, they're, again, they're not, explain to me the, the Donbass region. What? Why would they get that, Russia? It's, well, it's, it's, it's mostly ethnic Russians? It's at least... You or know, I don't know the, the exact Nazis? percentage. Why, there's, why more, there's more ethnic Russians there um, than in any other region. They were the region that was that that kind of wanted to break away. Right. They were at a civil war. Is this uh, like Basque and uh, and um, and um, fuck the other thing in Spain? Where like we don't want to be part yeah, of. Yeah, kind of. I uh, kind of. Although I don't really know. You know, I think. I think in 2015, 2016, that was certainly the case. I've heard. Some people say, and I've heard firsthand accounts, but I don't know. I don't have like really good like data on this. But I've heard that Vladimir Putin invading actually drove a lot of even those ethnic Russians into supporting Ukraine because people tend to not like being You're invaded too mm -hmm. much, you know. Yeah. Um. So like I I, I so I, I I that sounds like it that sounds right to me. I don't know that that's true, but that does sound right. Um. So I don't know exactly, but the 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 truth is that the the only way this war ends is with some type of compromise and i know people don't like that and they're like no he's got to pay That's but you're like end. yeah you know it's also it's pretty funny for america to have this attitude of like no you got to pay for that you it's get like, nothing okay, fuck it's, you forever it's like okay so like what part of like what are we paying for the fucking seven countries we've like went to war with over the last 20 years Damn, what do we have point. to pay for all good that point. like i don't know can we just get the war to stop like i'd be pretty happy with that i think that's a, a reasonable starting point that's better than where we are now you know yeah. and I think the thing that people really get wrong is that they're like, there, there's this fear that um, that they they the the corporate press and kind of like the political class are constantly saying like, well, what if he wins? Then he moves on Poland, and then he moves on that, and then he moves on whatever Estonia, and then he moves on like all these other countries, and and it's like, okay, that. To but it's me, like no, that's what he's saying about uh, if if Ukraine 
does whatever, and then America's going to move on to Poland. Yes. They're going to overthrow, and, and Norway's going to get whatever. Right. So, but to me, I go, I don't know. I mean, clearly this hasn't been a cakewalk for him. Right. Um, I don't see any reason to think Vladimir Putin wins this war. He now has, like, bragging rights and goes, yes, I'm the victorious one. Russia is strong again. We've won this. And then he goes, all right, now let's directly go to war with NATO and Poland. That just seems so far-fetched to me. And, like, whatever. So that does... Now, the, the major concern, I mean, the immediate concern is like people are dying in this war. Yeah. But the major, major concern with this is that Vladimir Putin is sitting on the largest uh, stockpile of nuclear weapons in the history of the world. That's really the major concern. And, and we think he's a lunatic. Think when, well, when might nuclear weapons be used? I mean, nuclear weapons haven't been used in a war since 1945 when we used them on the Japanese. USA, uh, number one. Number one. We killed a lot of innocent Japanese people. We only did it once, though. Um, Oh, shit. Ari, I got to tell you something. What? We dropped another one after that. <laughs> USA! <laughs> USA, dude! What? That's crazy! She goes, we only hit Hiroshima, though. We're not going to drop yeah. another one. Yeah. What's the Nagasaki? Why? I was All about right. to visit Nagasaki. Should I not go? No. But I'd, I'd say this, right? So, like, why is it, say, even in the unipolar moment when the Soviet Union fell from 1991 to now, how the U.S. has been in a whole lot of wars. How come we haven't used a nuke in yeah. any of them? Because, like... Why haven't we? You don't use a nuke when you're winning. Like, you don't use a nuclear weapon. Usually Other get, countries have nuclear right. weapons. You know that if you use a nuclear weapon, another nuclear-armed country might retaliate, and that might be the end of the world. And the elites in Washington, D.C. are not interested in a nuclear war. Like, they die, too, if that happens, you know? So, like, there's... Now, if Russia and America go to nuclear war, the human species is extinct. Nice this is cool. the biggest... Yeah, this is the biggest, like, you know... Um, the the biggest danger in human history, the biggest priority in human history is so that this does this. not happen, right? Now, I'm just saying Vladimir Putin is not going to start using nukes unless he thinks I'm dying anyway, so fuck it. I'm taking you out with me. He's not going to win the war in Ukraine and then nuke a bunch of countries. But if he loses the war right on his border and is then convinced that he's going to be overthrown and dragged through the streets like Gaddafi and sodomized to death, then like, he fuck might. You guys. Fuck you then guys. he I'm... might. So actually, for, in my opinion, the like this is also why I'm so for them all just negotiating some type of reasonable truce. It's like, let him save face. And Joe Biden, this idiotic, senile president we had, has said like three or four times that we're that the we want nothing short of regime change in Russia. And then the White House, whoever that is, comes out and corrects him and goes like, no, that's not the official policy of the United States government, which raises some interesting questions like who the fuck in the White House is correcting the president. You know where they did this wrong but, as well? Arafat said right. we won't be happy until all Jews are driven into the sea. And at that point, the Jews are like, oh, so... Yeah, we're not going to negotiate with you. You're going to not stop till you kill us all? Doesn't help. You, you've said that publicly? That's your actually in your constitution? It's like, oh, forget it. Then right. So, like, where's our incentive? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. But anyway, so so that's, that's kind of like the danger here that looms over all of this. And I'll say there's been, you know, there was one uh, incident a few months back. Where there were, uh, I, I I don't know if you saw this, where um, Poland got hit with uh, some missiles. A few people died. From where? And, well, right away it came out that Russia had uh, bombed Poland. And you had senators and people in the media saying, it's time, to, that's it. It's time to invoke Article 5. He attacked a NATO country. This is it. And this was probably, like, the closest we've been to it all going down. Wow. And Zelensky came out and said... Vladimir Putin just attacked uh, NATO. You guys should respond with a preemptive nuclear strike. He was like, you guys should do it. You were just attacked. You got to come catch our back now. Like, you got to go to war with Russia. And then it came also, out. Also, why nuclear? Why not just put ground troops in and get in there? Why well, nuclear? Well, because the thing is, when you're nuclear armed countries, there's no doing that. You can't just send ground troops in. We, we do. We'll, because they'll fucking nuke us. They know they can't win a conventional no, war against America. No, they'll nuke us if we nuke them. Well, th no, I think if we invaded them, they might nuke us. Because right. they know they can't stop that. Right. Our conventional forces are much, much stronger than Russia's. But believe right. me, we wouldn't be having trouble in Ukraine. Like, we still have a really badass fucking military. Like, not, we're not good at um, defeating insurgencies. 
we're not good at installing yeah, no. new regimes. But if you're just talking about blowing shit up and killing the regime in there, America, fuck yeah, will blow that shit up. Okay, so um, so but so then it came out that actually it was Ukrainian missiles. It wasn't it wasn't Russian missiles. Zelensky knew that. So well, I don't know. What he knew and what he didn't know, but he certainly didn't know that they were Russian. You know, he he either didn't do his due diligence, or he knew and just lied through his teeth and tried to spark a nuclear war because, or or, or at was least tried like, to spark. Oh shit! Sorry about the, sorry about the Ukrainian bombs that went. Oh, right. it turns out it was not only was I wrong about Russia, but we fucked up. Well, they said it was uh, an accident. And they said basically it was an accident, and it's still Russia's fault because if they hadn't invaded us, this accident wouldn't have happened. Um, but but just to be fair, Ukraine attacked a NATO country, <laughs> maybe accidentally. But so Ukraine your, your attacked. Rule said right, you right, have to, yeah, like yeah, so. That's you, another interesting question. The other thing is there was another major attack on NATO, um, which was the Nord Stream pipelines being blown up. The Nord Stream pipelines. Yes, um, and it was certainly not done by Vladimir Putin. Uh, according to Seymour Hirsch, who is one of the best. What is that? What's uh, a Nord Stream pipeline? Uh, so there were these two pipelines, Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. They were pipelines that were built uh, from oil, Russia to Ger natural gas, from Russia to Germany. Um, and uh, <laughs> and um, they uh, this was they had been turned off, um, I think, because Germany was like, oh, during the war, we won't buy any natural gas from from Russia. But they were going into the winter. Um, and Germany is having a lot of trouble um, producing enough energy because they also have crazy climate restrictions on energy. Um, and so I think reasonably there was a concern that they might agree to turn them back on. And then they were blown up Whoa. and they were done in a very sophisticated way that only like a really sophisticated military could have done. It certainly wasn't. They tried to blame Putin for it at first, which just made no sense at all. All right, all right go somewhere um, else. Yeah. Like it goes, why would he blow up his own pipeline? He could just turn them off. He doesn't have to. Like, what? Why would he do this? Makes no sense at all. Um, and then recently, Seymour Hirsch, a couple months ago, who's like done really great reporting all the way back to like Vietnam and shit like that. Really, really good reporter. And he did a whole report about how it was it was America who did it. And he knows, you know, he had sources who like were saying that they know how it was done. Did it and then try to blame it on? Yes. And then the New York Times most recently said uh, they ran an article where they were like, I think the title was something like I'm not making this up. It was something along these lines where they were like, we still don't know for sure who uh, blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. And it may be best that we don't. They're almost just like, kind of like, it's like, ah, you know, what are we going to get into the who's and the what? This but reminds me to of To be like, clear, NATO's yeah. been attacked twice in the last year. It was by Ukraine Us. and by most likely America. This reminds me of like after Trump got elected and um, they were saying like it was Russian collusion, you know, they colluded with Russia. And then Obama, and that's all been dropped, right? They're like, oh no, there's maybe Hillary Clinton's lawyer. Some people will still it. say something. Yeah. But there was, whether it's been dropped, some people heard it so much that they still believe right. it. But there was. The most thorough investigation in history, and they came up with nothing. And then, and then they did come up also with like possibly Hillary Clinton's lawyer was like, "I'm starting this rumor." Oh yeah, yeah, no, it all started from Hillary Clinton's like opposition research, in which they actually did collude with Russians to like frame Donald Trump for treason. But Obama was like, "Hey, I've actually seen the proof. This will come out. It's a hundred percent real." I don't remember. This has that. happened. I know a lot of other people said it. The um. I'm blanking on his name, but the uh, sorry, belt's tight. Uh, the uh, who is it? the guy who was the head of the House Intelligence Committee said it several times that like this evidence will come out. You will see. I've seen it, and you haven't yet. But wait for that Mueller report, and it'll all be in there. And then it came out, and no, he just said we did not conclude at all that there was a conspiracy between Russia and Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Uh, fact check. Why didn't Obama stop Russia's election? Uh, Trump claims. Um, I don't know. I can't see it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that may have not happened, folks. Yeah, I may not have. <laughs> I, I don't remember him doing that, though. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't it be surprised. It is true. It it's it's going to come out, uh, but it's a, for sure. It's like I've seen the inside papers. Pretty much that's what he was saying. I've seen the inside papers, and it happened. Yeah. Um, well, Okay. Well, none of us have seen them yet. This brings us to the next thing. Maybe we go to the bathroom. But I don't trust the press anymore and all this stuff. And See, there's a note of optimism. 
Good. You shouldn't. So I don't know what they're telling me is true. Are we having trouble there? Are we not? It's like this pipeline thing. I don't trust this press. What has happened to the state of the United States journalism? It it I I, I just know where I am. I'm like I don't believe any of it. It might be true, might not. I just can't believe these sources. Well, what's happened is they've been exposed. That's all. It's not that they ever were trustworthy. I mean, uh, we were lied into Vietnam. We were, there were lies all throughout. The you know, press like, lied in that, or the press was lied to and used. Eh, all right, maybe the government you'd say lied in that, and the press was used. But it, you know why I don't give the press a pass is because even after they all found out that it was a lie, they didn't like for years go. This is a huge story that our government lied us into this, and this is why we don't just trust the government anymore. And yeah. yada yada, you know. And so, like, no, they were they're really willing participants. They're one all of the of first this. State of the Unions was like, hey. George Bush was like, you can't show soldiers coming home in body bags and caskets. We're just not allowed to show that anymore. We're like, that's crazy. How the press can't do whatever. And then Obama came in and goes, hey, that's ended now. And then I remember going, and then the press just didn't show it. And you're like, oh. You're like, it's not like a, it's because it's not all of them decided it's in bad taste. It's like, oh, we're just not allowed, but it's under radar now, under Something the cover. Something like that. Or they're all just, they all just are part of the same club and they didn't want to make Obama look bad. Some of it I know is that I'm still looking at the three networks, MSNBC, CNN, and, and Fox News as journalism and not entertainment. So I'm still like looking at them as the wrong thing, you know? And they're not even just entertainment. I mean, I don't think that's the right way to think of them either. I mean, they're, they are, they are state media. I mean, they're maybe not like not in, officially maybe just in effect but they are the propaganda arm of the regime and it's not just to the entertain Pfizer you because there's lot crazy. there's lots of entertaining shit that they won't do there's lots of shit that would get huge ratings that they won't do you know it's not just like they're driven by like yeah, that's kind of like i think kind of like left wingers sometimes like kind of misassess it well they'll be like well the problem is that you know it's it's capitalism and they have their advertisers and so they're just trying to get clicks and stuff it's like no there's shit they could do that would get a ton of fucking clicks sure but they is. don't they don't well, yeah but uh, like real corruption stories that they could really cover and that they don't um and well, well, so, the snowden thing came out and it was like nobody wanted to cover it and it was the number one story and people, that people like we didn't think about. it was newsworthy and i remember going wasn't newsworthy for page nine Oh yeah, it was, you know they have off, local crazy high, news. They have worthy. local high school basketball covered. Yeah, no, it was so crazy so newsworthy. Like, I mean, forget that you were wrong. How unnewsworthy was it? And so it's like, no, that's they, that's not true. They're like, we'll get in trouble. Yeah, dude, there was a thing. Fucking Rogan actually sent me this earlier today. Sure, Rogan. Uh, Seth, and um, he's Harry back. But it was just I saw this uh this clip, but um, he he's I, I saw the press conference, but he sent me like a uh like a fucking clipped up version of it, which is just really funny shit. How do I make it start from the beginning again? Ah, shit. You Hold on. Back up. Hold on. Let me just play this almost for you. As you might. Um, so this is, there was the, the, this leaker who came out and leaked information about like uh, the classified information about the Ukraine war the other day. Did you hear about this? Nope. So he leaked some information that showed like basically the government's been lying a bit about the Ukraine war, that there are American forces embedded in there, that it's not going nearly as well as they say. Behind the scenes, they're a lot more concerned about uh, what's going on uh, than Ukraine losing, that they've exaggerated the death tolls of how many Russians have died. And it's actually, okay, so this guy leaked it. And uh, this was the press conference um, with the guy from the Pentagon. And this is what the reporters. Okay, in the days after the leaks came to light, what steps has DOD taken to reduce the number of people who have access to not only these classified briefings, but the classified material in general? But you are taking steps to tighten that, I guess, population who might have access to this level of information. General Ryder, you say that there are strict protocols in place, and yet a 21-year-old airman was able to access some of the nation's top secrets. How did this happen, and isn't this a massive security breach? What is your message to anyone who might be thinking of leaking these kind of documents in the future? Can you tell us, where are there less people who have access to this type of information today than there were a week ago? Yeah. To follow on that, these documents were available long before April 5th and 6th. So what took so long for <laughs> DOD and the intelligence communities to, to locate these documents? Are you going to release this airman's service record? 
What technologies is the Pentagon applying right now to both spot leaked documents okay. online? So you get it. So the point it's is that the point is they're saying, hey, this guy actually shared stuff that should have been shared. No one's and, asking. And they're a like, hey, about- how do we stop these guys from fucking telling us the truth? No one's asking a question about what was found, what they, he revealed about. Are we going to come down to this guy and show his service records? Are it's we going to just so you go if let's just like, say well, what's in here, though, if the CIA and the State Department and the Pentagon ran the news agencies. Would the questions be any different? It's just like exactly what they're just all asking them. How did you let this information leak? And what are you going to do to make sure this information doesn't come out again? That's our journalists. And not a little bit of like, hey, now, hey, so these Russian deaths are massively over. So what's going on? Now my, are we losing this war? The point, like the reason I, I thought of this and that it, pull, it ties into the point I was making is that this is not a play for ratings. Right. Ratings would be the fact your government is lying to you about this war is a much sexier story. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a much more clickable story is you grilling him about why he was lying to you right. in this war. Yeah. But they're avoiding that. Wow. It's not clicks. It's covering for the regime. That's what they're in the business of doing. Damn. There's much more effectively, I think, than some state media. Uh, so what's the deal with. I mean, I I saw those Matt Ta- Taibbi, um, Matt Taibbi, you Matt got Taibbi it. Um, mm-hmm. hearings, and it was just so weird where they were like grilling him, and they just kept saying like, "Give me your source, give me your source." It's like, no, I'm a journalist, you know, I don't give sources, and they just kept going like, "Can you tell us if it's Elon Musk?" And he's like, "No, I won't say it one way." He goes, "Why can't you just say it's not Elon Musk?" And he's like, "You'll just name seventeen names until I say I won't answer that one." Yeah, that's not how it works, and they just kept going, and I'm like, "What are they doing to journalists?" It's it's am I wrong? It just seemed like what the fuck? Yeah. And it was because and also I hate saying this like Democrats used to be this, Republicans used to be this. And it's like it just seemed like because his findings were against the Democrats. And so they were like, let's shut him up. Yeah, that's all. And he made them look very bad. And they, they kind of feel like um instead of what they should have goes, thank you for bringing this to my attention. Well, it's it's they feel and part of this is like the atrophy, I think, of being in control for so long being so dominant for so long and now having that slip away from you and i think a lot of them really feel like that this is ours like you don't get to just report news we control there's three channels and seven major newspapers and we run all of them right and what do you mean right if somebody's out there telling i don't want pfizer's money this well this is why people are so upset that elon musk bought twitter it's like wait you mean this guy can just buy a huge platform where ideas are spread. and Even he though can just Jeff Bezos rules. did that with the Washington Post. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because he was serving the regime. Right. So he was with them. This guy's like not saying, at least indicating he's not with them. And so Matt Taibbi is doing this journalism that exposed like this huge story that the FBI and all different like levels of the government were deeply in bed with social media companies telling them who to silence and who not to silence and like what ideas are allowed to be published and what aren't and like that's a huge news story he and bought so it and then found the old papers yes. right he fe- he bought and it so and they go it might have been Elon Musk might have been someone else but anyway somebody in the new company has looked over the old records mm-hmm. and go, wait, what? It's almost like we went into fucking Poland to get the k- k- Germans out. I was like, what's this factory? What's that awful <laughs> human body smell? And you're like, whoa. It's like once they went in, they found all this. And then the deal that they found was that the government was telling, stop me whenever I'm wrong, big media company, big social media companies, how you can't promote an anti-Pfizer idea. Yeah, you can't I mean, promote a, a, an anti-whatever idea. They, they could probably hide behind some, like, mob-like technicality where they're kind of like, I didn't tell you to silence this I guy. You I to. told you to go see about this guy. You know, but the, the FBI was having regular meetings with Twitter. Twi- Twitter was also receiving millions of dollars from the federal the government. Was and then they Twitter. were telling them people and, and telling them people and misinformation and pushing them to crack down on them. And in the same way that it's like, it's kind of like, you know, if a mafia guy comes into your pizza place and he's like, maybe you start buying this tomato sauce instead of that tomato sauce. Right. And you're like, okay, yeah, you could technically say he didn't, he didn't say. threaten you, but everyone knows why is what he even you're doing there? there. And he's why is, there, the, why and is anyone from the government we talking all to know, we all know what this talking is. to any company yeah yeah so it's um so yeah that was basically it and everyone's known for a and, long but they should have gone i mean there's gotta be somebody honest goes hey guys this is crazy wrong we want free speech we want uh, dialogue we shouldn't have done that or i didn't do it i'm a democrat i didn't do it and, and so what the fuck 
Yeah. Well, it seems like a bunch of them bought into this idea. That it should have been done. It was worth it. Left, right, or center, they all end up letting the ends justify the means. Yeah. Well, you right. I mean, you see that, right? And you see that, um, you know, like when George W. Bush and Dick Cheney were running the the federal government or the executive branch at least yeah. all the all the lefties were you know all like it was real easy to be like hey we're anti-war and we're anti-government spying and we're anti you know warrantless wiretaps and we're against torture and we're against censorship and all of this but then once they got in it was like, like well let's censor some oh, stuff it'll help yeah. us yeah you know so just to to back up your point there you know um, jake hanrahan i don't think so he runs this company called popular front he's a war reporter independent okay and he won't i think you might have told me about him maybe yeah. he won't take ad money right he does patreon only because he goes if you get a dollar from even me undies and then they go hey dude it, it might even be so devious they might just be like do you know i have a i have a cousin who lives in myanmar i think more people should talk about that yeah. it's like i don't want i don't want to feel like i'm gonna lose my me undies ad um if Sorry, sheath underwear ad. <laughs> um, if if you don't cover this, so he goes, I can't, I can't be. I've, yeah, I'll be I've, in the pocket. I I remember I came to that same conclusion. I was sitting back in a pair of sheath underwear. It was like the most comfortable underwear you'll so ever own. So the pockets, own. yeah. And great. I was just I was uh, enjoying some yo kratom. So I was like yeah. nice and relaxed. And I was like, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have the same model. I'm gonna have the same exact model where I don't take advertising from anyone. You yeah. know what I mean? As you go to yokratum.com, you know, you, it is only 60, <laughs> 60 bucks for a kilo. Yeah, it's a pretty great yeah, deal. It is a great deal. And sheathunderwear.com, if you use the promo code PROBLEM20, you will get 20% off. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not in business with them anymore, but that, that, that promo code is still working. Um, but no, but I understand where that guy's coming from. Yeah. Like, that's, it's, it's a fair thing to say that, like, yeah, okay, there are. And when you see often, that ad of like sponsored by Pfizer, sponsored by Pfizer, sponsored by Pfizer, US, uh, the Good Morning America, sponsored by Pfizer, and like, maybe Boeing you gotta take or this, something yeah. like that, you know. And it's like, well, you're at least, even if they're not saying it, you're at least feeling like, shit. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Yeah, it's at least a conflict of interest, yeah. you know? Um, and so, but yeah, but I mean, then the end product, when you see it, it's like, it's it's pretty hard to look at that and not go like, yeah, you guys are just working for them, yeah. essentially. But you see these independent ones, and they don't have the reach, uh, or no one really respects, like my mom's generation wouldn't really respect a Matt Taibbi, they're like, who? But- they seem like they're the only ones doing like to be like I'm gonna tell. So what Jake Hanrahan does is like he's like, listen, everybody knows about Ukraine, everybody knows about this. I'm gonna show you some conflicts that you don't know about, and I'm gonna fully show them. They're not sexy ones, you know. I'm gonna show you the protests in France that are still going on. Right, I'm gonna show right, you the fucking, yeah. you know. I'm gonna show you shit, and you're like, damn. But like, so few people are doing it. Yeah, and and, and it's it's amazing how um the the corporate press and they, they have less of an ability to do it now than they used to but it's amazing how they have this ability to like craft a narrative still where there's there's this all entire together. there's this entire planet there's seven billion people or whatever there's all types of things going on all over the world and yet we're all supposed to like our our it's like you have to focus on the outrage in ukraine and then you have these people these like blood-soaked monsters who are just like standing in like a football field sized swimming pool of the blood of innocent people. You know, just like just just killed hundreds of thousands of people throughout the Muslim world in the last 20 years. And they're all like, we are really, really concerned about the innocent loss of life like, on Russia's border in this country that would undermine Russia if we were to care about it. <laughs> like, Geez, that seems awfully convenient. And then I it's wish like seeing a fucking joke thief go like that guy stole a joke. And you're like, like shut up, you. Right. Yeah, no, right. don't steal jokes. So, you like, get almost, the fuck out of here. I'd say even if like someone like if you fucking even if you disagree with me completely on like my take on the war in Ukraine, which I think it's insane. I don't think we should be supporting it at all. I think we should pull out every inch of support. Like, fuck that. It is not worth flirting with a nuclear war over this shit. And I also, like I said before, you know, Vladimir Putin's wrong for invading and killing innocent people and all of that. But the initial thing, him saying that my brightest red line is Ukraine, like entry into NATO. That was totally fucking reasonable. Yeah. It was totally reasonable for him to say, hey, man, like back your military alliance off my fucking borders. That was totally and We did reasonable. that with Syria. We're like, if yeah. you use weapons of mass destruction, we're going to go or nu whatever, chemical, chemical weapons. weapons. That's yeah. our red line. We will go. Yeah. In. And like so I'm, and that that's much less reasonable than him saying, I have a little sphere of influence here that can be independent, but it can't be your puppet. Right. That's totally right. But even if you disagree with all of that. If nothing else, at least grant 
that our political leaders are the biggest fucking hypocrites in the world for saying Vladimir Putin's a war criminal. And that when you just kind of repeat that and you're just like, yeah, Vladimir Putin's a war criminal, you're kind of falling into their trap. Like, at least go like, he's a war criminal, but all of you guys are fucking war criminals too. So, like, don't manipulate me like this. Like, I'm supposed to care about Ukraine, but I'm not supposed to think about the last eight years in Yemen where we fucking starved hundreds of thousands of babies It'd be nice if they did this. They go, okay, hey, Hey, uh, the new guy, Biden or Kamala, which brings up a good point. But let's, before we get into it, let's not forget you fucking killed 17,000 people in this. Okay. But now let's bring up what they're talking about. You Fine. know, at I, least I'll, I'll tell you one of something. the most honest pieces of journalism. Uh, right after those amazing racist videos kind of came out and got like big on the internet. That's the first time I ever saw you. Thanks. We those saw, and we, uh, me and Lewis, <laughs> those were me fun. and Lewis got the DVD <laughs> yeah, on, National um, on National Lampoons. And we had never met you. We didn't fucking, I had maybe. No, I don't even think yeah. I'd, I. No, I hadn't met you. I'm pre, saying that if pre I see them on the internet, I don't think I don't think I'd ever seen anything of yours. Yeah, and we fucking loved them. It was so funny. You know, we were. I mean, it really, me and Lewis must have been like 22 or something like perfect. that at the time. Just the perfect, perfect. age for that. Yeah, we were yeah. like this 14 is just to 23 everything. Year old yes, man. yes, that's just great. But there was one article. It was by I think WhiteNationalist.com or WhiteRevolution.com. Same, same. I, I tried to get it, but it was already taken. And, and so they liked the point of it, but you know they're not behind my people. And they, the article said, the headline said, Jew boys got the right idea. And that seems honest to both sides. <laughs> you know, We're like, listen, obviously we're not for Jews, but let's talk about the message for a second. <laughs> and it was so honest and clean because they're like, we don't want to support this dude, but you got you to gotta love this one thing. <laughs> I would funny. love to see our media do something similar. Yes, be a little bit war, more like- War criminals it. got the right idea on this, it, on this war crime. So you're unironically saying if, if our media could just take their cues from neo-Nazi websites a little bit more. Yes. Just, just the good stuff. At least the honesty was there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is like- Renna um, ZC had a fun line in one of the There's Not Happening stories. That he was at a bar and then he like went to the back smoke pot and Kid Rock was there. Um it's all been legitimized. He lives in Nashville. There's all, we, no one, none of us knew he lived there then. This is one of the real and, ones. Yeah. He only made up one story. And he guys. goes, he did only make up one story. It's very few, little, really? but like, um, but he goes, he goes, I don't send my kid rock, and he's like, hey, can I hit that joint? And he goes, guys, I know that I'm a known liar, but I'm telling you the truth, <laughs> you know. That's fucking. But hilarious. you gotta own up to like, I, I can't just skirt by the past. Yeah. And if these fu- fucking politicians or these or these press people would own up to it, I could believe you a little more. Yes. Yes, and that's th- that would be, that. yeah, like, but that's all I'm saying, is at least have that. And at then for, like, people, because obviously they're not going to own up to it because they're all pieces of shit, but at least for you, just person listening to this podcast, if you're not, like, completely on board with what I'm saying, or if you disagree with what I'm saying, because I know there's some people who push back, even though, do your research, I am right about everything I said, uh, but th- that at least recognize that, like, The biggest war-hungry country in the world over the last 20 years is the U.S. federal government. It's not even close. And so, like, if you're going to fall in line with them when they're telling you to be outraged about a war, let's, like, stop and think about that a little bit. You know what I compare it to? Where it's like we have to go and help human rights abuses. We have to go help. We have to go help. and go. Okay. But we've only fucked it up in the past. We've been way worse. We've got a million people in Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever. It's like it's a crazy number. At least at least a hundred thousand, depending on the lightest yeah. analysis. I say it's like, oh shit, the sink is full of dirty dishes. It is right now. So let's send in our brother Jimmy. Well, Jimmy's retarded. And he's got Down syndrome. And the last seven times he tried to help with the dishes, he just smashed a shitload of them. And you're yeah. like, well, we can't leave the dirty dishes in there. I'm like, I know, but if you send in Jimmy, it's pretty clear he's just going to smash most of the dishes. Yeah. And that's what we are. And we keep going, you got to do something. Well, like, and it, and but not like, Jimmy. Well, it's like what I was saying about Victoria Nuland talking about how wonderful it is that uh, the, that um, Ukraine is embracing liberal democracy and freedom and prosperity and all of this. And this is what they do, man. They, these people, they do it over and over again. I mean, they literally said will be greeted as liberators in Iraq right. and the war will be paid for in oil and democracy will sweep through the region. This is how they sold the American people on the war in Iraq. Like, look, I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. And they just every single time and every single time it's like a fucking disaster for those people who you're claiming to want to liberate. I'm not but, saying but it's a disaster like, for Russia. I'm saying for the Ukrainian people. It's, it's funny a disaster they could do for that them. for an English speaking or even France, to be honest, white country. 
you have to be able to do it. That's why we could bomb Laos and Cambodia. We're like they're like halfway to animal in in they're, in in the Americans' mind. Well, the Ukrainians are kind of white, you know. So yeah, uh, they yeah, are, but it's but, like. But yeah, yeah, no, I think that does help for sure. But it's funny because you know I was literally I was li- I was reading back on this. I think I might have it here because I was reading back on the some of the documents from a project uh, for a new American century because yeah. I, I was just like kind of I wa- I knew that might come up today and I was like oh yeah let me just read this again because it's been a fucking while since I've uh, actually read this shit and like get, getting like um it's really something, dude. When you see that like even back then. In uh, th- there's this their major piece was like rebuilding America's uh military or something like that. Mm-hmm. This is major piece rebuilding America's defenses, by the way, is what it's called. And if you read into it, they actually say at a certain point these crazy neocons. This is in the 90s before they really took control of the government, but they're like making this plan. And what what's it called? A project for a new American century. Like the 20th century was ending, and this is the project for look. The 20th century is ending with us as the dominant superpower, and here's the project for what we do to make a new american century and you know we're 23 years into it and they even say so this is uh back in the late 90s when they write at present the united states faces no global rival wow. america's grand strategy should aim to preserve and extend this advantage uh this advantageous position as far into the future as possible and then a Germany. couple pages a couple pages later um they say oh shit hold on let me find it god damn it oh yeah here it is Okay, they say, the, so this is their course of action. Uh, they say to establish for uh, the core mission for the U.S. military force. And they say first is defend the American homeland. And then number two is fight and decisively win multiple simultaneous major theater wars. Major theater wars. So it's in a, other yeah. words, to establish our dominance, we should fight and win. What's a these, theater war? Like a th- meaning it, it, the place where it is. A war in Iraq. Iraq is the theater. You know, it's so like fight. So they're saying that this should wow. be our strategy. They literally say it's funny on because one they page, couch it as as we've got to make sure democracy is is followed, but it's not democracy. It's just our influence. But think about how crazy this is, dude. It's a ninety-page document. They talk about NATO expansion in there a bunch too, and that this was the whole plan. This is before it happened, you know, yeah. and they got their way. These fucking retards. And um, and so I'm just saying it's a 90 page document. It's on page 11. If you want to go look this up on page 11, where they they explicitly say fight and decisively win multiple simultaneous major multiple theater wars. Simultaneous. Think Afghanistan and Iraq. And yet two pages earlier, they had written at present the United States faces no global rival. So they're literally sitting there going, we have no rival. No one threatens us. Here's our plan. Let's fight multiple wars. Like, just think about that. And this was their project for a new American century. And now look at it. What a fucking disaster they've caused, man. Like hundreds of thousands of fucking people dead and trillions of dollars wasted. Who's involved in this? All the billionaires and the fucking... No, it's the neoconservative groups, um, which are mostly, I hate to say, Jewish intellectuals. Um, But the, the founders of this organization were Robert Kagan and Bill Kristol, and they're, they're, the signatories on uh, the, their founding document were like Dick Cheney and, um, and uh, fucking the whole like neocon wow. group that went in there and, uh, and, and ran shit. Paul, Paul Wolfowitz, um, uh, the neocons who all took positions of government um, under the, in the George W. Bush administration. But you look at it now and you're like, it's in the same sense, like on the in each individual theater, um, like Iraq will be like this, Ukraine will be like this, Afghanistan will be like this. For 20 years in Afghanistan, they were telling us, this army we're building up is really great, the government's stable. It's like a week we were gone before it collapsed. And in the same sense, yeah. they go, this is the project for a new American century for America. And we're 23 years into this thing. We're 30 plus trillion dollars in debt. Our currency is being fucking destroyed. The country is more turned against each other than it's ever been in my lifetime like you got fucking from every level down to like there's fucking there's trannies grinding on six-year-olds and shit like what a your fucking project sucks balls man so so that's a, a funny thing it's like they go uh they go um they, it's talking about um what was it gonna we gotta get into the social stuff soon but like sure. um you're just convincing people, oh, when you talk to a military person, you see a military, like, if you're a service, you protect our freedom. And it was like, if you examine, like, Vietnam, like, no, you didn't protect anything for us. So, sure, World War One, Two, you can make a case for it, absolutely, you know? Yeah, one's uh, tough. One's tough? 
Yeah. Whatever. But you can make a case for it in certain certain places. Uh, Even uh, in World uh, War II. 1880, 1812. The War of 1812. There you go. Okay. You got one. Yeah, okay. But then it's like, I have to go back like a while. how do this protect? So we're still selling that. Thank you for protecting our freedoms. And like in 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 Crimea? In what? In, in Sudan? Yeah. Like what? Uh, and, and the funny thing is that it's like, They'll sell the the American people and the politicians like the politicians who sell this idea and then the American people who are convinced by it are you'll be sold on the idea. And just think about it. Like you said, when you look back in the past, yeah. even when you look back in the past, like your Kobe shit, I think almost most people are like, were you really that offended by that? Yeah. It's just in the moment. You were caught it seems up. Bad. You were caught up. Exactly. You know, but like, exactly. like looking back at it, you look back at what Roseanne got fucking fired for. You're like, what? Really? Were you re- but, yeah. it, but now looking back on it, you're like, so you mean to tell me. That George W. Bush, that idiot, actually convinced you that Saddam Hussein was a security threat to you. That like Iraq, this little puny he did. He third world country, could what? We they, would they, just they, 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 attack there. And this guy I heard has even bigger weapons yep, and you're, plans. You're in the moment, and you got. But so you're telling me that you could be sold, and you could convince other people that Iraq was a security threat to the United States of America. But you can't even see how Vladimir Putin could argue that Ukraine being in our military alliance is a security threat to him. Right. Like, it's not like fucking Saddam Hussein was fucking setting up a military base on Cuba. It's amazing you know, like, how you could orchestrate the emotion. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, if I heard there was a coup to get Roseanne out of that show, I'd be like, oh, this makes sense why they got it going. That, it was just, that one just happened. Right. You know? Certain ones just happened. You know, sure, uh, uh, sure. Kim Congdon's uh, little niece getting threatened that they're going to fucking beat her up because of a Kobe joke, you know, for our two year old. We're here. We doxed your fucking kids fucking school. It's really? like I didn't even know about that. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, that side was nuts. That side was nuts. But anyway, the point is that just happened. But if you're thinking about it, it's intelligence. It's like, well, let's create some of these. Let's create some of these. Uh, well, that's Russian where the collusion. Let's create come some in. of yeah. this. This in order because like we can just rile them up. We're easily able to be mob liked. Yeah, yeah. And there's no. And I do think like my personal view is that it's a mix of some people like conspiring these things. And then they kind of just fall into some people's laps. Like I think that Hillary Clinton was just trying to do opposition research and kind of come up with a story to help her chances of winning the election. I think once Donald Trump won, they all kind of went, Oh, this is the perfect Let's narrative. Right. So it, no, it wasn't a big rejection of us and our entire system and the entire media and political apparatus. No, 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 that's not. You see, in her it book, was, she, yeah, in her book, she goes, "Listen, it was my campaign. I, I take full blame, but let me blame twenty other people here." Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, um, yeah, it's total. It's fucking hilarious. That she, it's crazy. She didn't have one person around her to be like, "This comes off really." This bad. doesn't. Um, yeah. But. You know, I think also Donald Trump was running on, um, the, like he was explicitly running on let's have friendly relations with Russia. That was his, and this, the the, the oh, Trump-Russia collusion thing really worked in the sense that it put him in a box where he couldn't make a deal with Russia. And Trump, being Trump, being the bull, he, he fell right into it. And he went, let me prove how anti-Russia I am to you. That's part of the reason why he, was he said with him. Like, I like Putin. He's done great things. It's like he's a cool leader. So this is what they do for uh, movie premieres in Hollywood. They'll hire 15 people to show up to uh, the, one of the West, West, uh, Westwood uh, movie theaters, one of the big right. ones. And uh, 15 people show up at cameras that they give them. And so just take pictures. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, Tom Cruise is coming for the movie premiere. Uh, really? Oh, cool. Um, and then... Can I stay? Like, sure, yeah, it's open, open the sidewalk. And then now you got like 60, 70 people showing up. Now those first 15, you guys can take off. We're good now because now we got a mob of people right, like, I can't right. wait for Tom Cruise. But it's based on zero. It's based on nothing. Right. And right. I feel like the, the press in cahoots with whoever. It might not be the, the government. It might be the Illuminati or whatever. The, just the billionaires what, are just like, let's mob up. Let's mob them up. Duncan said this. He goes, they were testing for a while on what we can do to us. And he goes, 50% of the anti-Star Wars tweets were Russian bots testing to see how much they could rile us up against each other. Yeah, that's Like, a, who cares about that. Star Wars? But let's just see if we can get them all distracted. Huh. Now, this was 15 years ago, but let's just see. Now, that should bring us to the social stuff that's going on sure. right now. Because, God damn, we're distracted. With a yeah. fucking can of a beer that you never drank. Yeah. It's um 
that that stuff is you know it's a, it's weirdly it's like it started as a distraction yeah and it worked so well that they just kept pumping it up and pumping it up and i do wonder sometimes where it gets to a point where oh man i don't even know if this is a distraction anymore i mean i know it's a distraction but it might be a distraction that needs to be confronted for me like the line was really all the stuff with kids and i find this to be like really sick and disturbing and like i didn't really i think it's pushed a lot of people like myself included to almost take a firmer stand against this shit than i otherwise would have like if it's you had funny, you I, know, i've talked to a lot of liberals we live in new york yeah it's almost all liberals um um especially manhattan um and i've talked to a lot of people who secretly kind of go like they're pushing me to be conservative with yeah. their super super like like uh this way the highway view and i'm like what and in certain there's certain lines where it doesn't quite make everyone comfortable and i'm like well i can't fall in line fully hey listen trump's breaking up the national parks i don't like that i love national parks hey trump's doing this oh i don't like that he's a nazi well I, my dad's a holocaust survivor so i can't get behind that you love trump no yeah. guys i'm just saying uh, my dad's a holocaust survivor so i just don't call him that and it's like fuck you and I'm like actually let me see what this other side has to say because you guys are being cunts right there now. is a there's um okay so both sides have a fault with this it's sports Where, well let me say that so the left is becoming increasingly totalitarian, totalitarian and demanding complete compliance. And the right, I think, in some ways, is being way too open to the lefty who just wouldn't comply on one thing and then letting them be their leader. Or something what do you like mean? That. So, like, you take um, someone like, like Pierce Morgan is like, uh, he literally, I think at one point he was saying people should be jailed for saying the N word. Yeah. Double check me on that. Chris uh, Fago was telling me about this the other day, uh, but then so then he was uh he was for like rounding up guns. He is was awful on COVID. He was saying people who are unvaccinated shouldn't have all the rights that normal people have. Um, wow. He, he's all for um like this oh. war. Unless this is uh, not his Twitter account, uh, Piers Morgan. What would I do with white people who use the N-word? Jail them. Well, yeah, that's pretty... Uh, uh, June 22nd, 2015. Yeah. So, okay, so he's... 8.4 million followers. So it's gotta he, be his. He's horrible on free speech. He's uh was horrible on gun rights. He was horrible on the <laughs> rights... great. How about mixed race people? Just fines? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great response. <laughs> yeah. So, so, bad, so awful on free speech, awful on uh, gun rights... Awful on the rights of the unvaccinated during COVID, said they should be second class citizens, completely pushing for the war in Ukraine, all this stuff. But he will, on his show, tell a dude in a dress that you're a dude, not and a so chick. Like, he's, and our so he's our guy. He's, he's our guy. And you're like, like no, wait, 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 okay, wait a minute. This. Okay, this is like insane. He should not be your representative. He's bad on all the things that you're good on. Okay. Yeah. So, like, there's, but there is this thing, I don't know, where. I find myself being pushed in this direction. Yeah. Where, so, years ago, five years ago, say, there's a debate on transgender bathrooms. And I'm like, this is such a distraction. Such Who a distraction. the fuck cares? I don't care what bathroom someone uses. Can I quote uses. Michael Che I don't this? care. What did he say? When he's like, still egging people on on Facebook. I don't think he does as much anymore, but he was always needling. Yeah, he used to. I remember when he used to Because it was that. also like. I'm a I'm a black. You can't get me. It was like he saw that power, and it's fun the way Michelle Wolf goes after like Karens. It was like you can't yeah. get me, or Tulsi Gabbard goes after military. It's like yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in. Uh, he goes, I live in New York City, where there's more trans people than almost anywhere in the world. Uh, literally, maybe outside Bangkok, it might be true. Um, he goes, there's more trans people there than anywhere else in the world. I've literally, I grew up here. I've literally never once seen any trans person go into any bathroom. <laughs> this is a non-story. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's that's it, right? So this felt like a total distraction, and I was always kind of like the thing, like, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you live your life how you want to live your life. I don't care if you if you present as a woman, I'll call you her. You know, like I don't fucking care. Yeah, who gives a shit? But there's been such a push over the last few years to push this shit on kids, and I, like, listen, I don't know exactly how prevalent this is you know you see like the libs of tiktok accounts and stuff like that now 
they, some they of these are fakers who are just trying to rile people up. Maybe. And then they get quoted. Like, look what they're doing. Like, that's a fake basis. Well, okay. But I'm saying specifically the videos of these fucking wildly over-sexualized events with children at them. I don't know how prevalent it is. I know at this point I've seen dozens and I'm, dozens and dozens of these videos. And the fact that it's happening at all is kind of insane. Devil's and I know, Advocate, I remember in... Er, uh, I, we went to a Jewish school, a religious schools. We didn't do sex education. But I remember hearing about you can't teach sex education. It has to wait till your senior year of high school or something like that. It was like you can't do that for fourth grade or whatever whatever age it was. That was a, it, and it almost, I'm just remembering this right now. It's very parallel. Well, what do you mean? In what sense? You can't teach any sexuality to anyone who's not ready for it yet. And what's the ready for it yet? What so is that? So you're saying it was too far in one direction at one point and too far in the other direction now? Well, it was just like they want to like, teach kids about trans stuff or have drag shows at fucking, you know, kindergarten or whatever. And also it was like the same thing. It was like you can't have sex education, which was just here's what condoms are. So you're saying like uh, the opposite here's reproductive. Of, so we are too crazy in the opposite direction. No, it was now. both. The, the stance was these kids are too young to hear about this. Yeah. Well, I think this is um, this is kind of a different beast. But I would still say, like, you know, if there was Well, they something... might have been right also. It's like, wait, why third grade I think about they condoms? Pro I think they probably were right. But even if they weren't, and you're like, you know, it's almost like if what we're in right now is like a tornado, and that was a hurricane, yeah. and you're like, hey, you know, the tornadoes are bad, but hurricanes are also bad. It's like, okay, but we're in a tornado right now. So, like, I'm just saying right now, okay. this is the issue yeah. that's happening, is that sure, they are good. really, I do know this, they are aggressively, like, pushing this kind of gender ideology on kids that they ought to learn about this early that you better learn that there's not just boys and girls and you can identify as whatever you want to i think it's really confusing to put these it's ideas into kids like, head i don't i personally don't think we really understand it fully yet yeah so then we're pushing stuff and hey you might be right but like we're we're kind of still guessing you're on the experimenting. You're experimenting on a generation of kids. Yeah, and, and, I've, and I've met, and so have you, trans people that you're like, 100%, I get it. I'm talking to a, a Judy Gold's old uh, co-host. I forget her name. It was like, you talk for 20 minutes, like, I'm talking to a dude. You know, yeah, you might have tits and a pussy, but I'm talking to a dude. There's something in there. And then there's the other ones who are like, you just stuck a dress on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. Well, and there's I, there's some that you're like, oh, I get it. And I'll, I'll, yeah, I, we just don't understand. I'm it almost. Yet. I wouldn't care if you're just leaving the kids alone. Yeah. Just leave the kids alone, and then adults do whatever adults want to do. The fact that they're that when they start aggressively pushing it on kids, it does have the effect on me of making me go like, oh, okay. How about this? No, and it doesn't actually exist. And I'm not, you can live your life however you want to, but if we're actually going to have this fucking conversation, like, no, it's not a real thing. You can't change your sex. You're not a woman. You're a guy. You're a man who's living your life as a woman. And, like, you can identify however you want to, but I can't identify as a goldfish, but I'm not a goldfish. And there is, rea biological realities do exist. And I, it's almost like a thing that, while what I'm saying is true... I kind of felt like I don't want to be a dick. I would have so I just myself won't say for a that. while. The, I, fat, but, the fat is beautiful thing. Fat is beautiful. And it's like, okay, sure. But absolutely. Have the confidence of Lizzo. That's great. But when you go like, you can't show um, NIH um, findings that obesity leads to higher um, uh, uh, cancer rates. Like, you have to bury yeah. that. I was like, hey, actually, fat's not beautiful. And, and fuck all this. Yes. You know? And, right. I was leaving you alone so you went too far. Yes. And I do find this shit. And again, I don't know exactly how prevalent it is. I know that it's in the schools. Like, pe they're talking about it. Yeah, I wonder it. if it's real um, stories or just like... No, I know that like there's, there's been a major effect. I know, like, my, my, uh, my wife's nephew in uh, the ninth grade in his algebra class, and this is in a very conservative area, um, they went around and asked all the kids what they identify as, like at the beginning of it. That's too and early. I just don't, I don't think this is good. I don't think it's healthy. Your kids at that age are so impressionable that you're not just like figuring out if there is a legitimate, whatever that means, trans person in the room. You're putting this idea in their head now and making them and letting them know that like there's this other thing you could be that's really interesting and cool and, uh, and all different. Like, I'm than just playing with blocks. Yeah, like it's. Uh, just, I don't think any sexuality yet. And it's like this is fucking algebra class man like what are you doing do you know Stop the um, do you know the this. um there's a, a style of education i forget who it is good job bennett way to figure it out um and they don't teach kids to read until like third grade it's a well-respected education system hmm. 
and that they seems go insane but I'm yeah it, I'm it's not um, fucking I, but they're like you got to play with blocks and learn how to make friendships learning letters at, at four years old is pointless Hmm. You'll figure. I, you started well, I've been wasting a lot of time with my four year old. Yeah, then. I know, but it's like we have to redo the education system. Like, why do we? Nobody researched this. Why fourth grade? Why, why four year olds? Why not three year olds? Why not two year olds? Right. Why? No, I, I see what you're saying. You know, and they're like, well, we found that socializing is way more important at that young age. Uh, learning how to be with other people is way more important, and you'll pick it up just as fast in third grade as you would at three years old. Yeah. So, so like this, like, w- w- is anyone thinking this out? Or are we just kind of experimenting And are you allowed to say, hey, actually, my findings show the opposite? And I think the idea of, like, puberty blockers for minors and shit is really crazy. I think it's really, really crazy to, like, chemically castrate kids and do this, like, kind of irreversible thing to them yeah. when they're at this stage where, is I mean... Is that happening, though, for real? I mean, it's not happening. It's it's happening to thousands of kids. I mean, it's thousands? not... Thousands? Yeah. I mean, I don't. it's not happening to hundreds of thousands of kids, but it is, like, it's more than ever... And it's it is happening, and it's like the problem I see because I don't I don't give a fuck. I have a joke about it. As long as you shut up on the subway, be whatever you want. <laughs> you know, black, white, trans, tall, short, it doesn't matter. But but um, when you same thing with the incentive for like financial incentive to report a certain way. There's a social incentive. It's cool. It's cool to be this other thing, especially at, when in this made, day and age. It is, so it's like it's going to push me to well, say maybe I am. But especially when you've made the entire worldview based around this oppressor versus oppressed thing. So it's like now you get to be in the oppressed class. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like it, that is it's, the value. There's something I'm oppressed now. Yes, I'm higher up. Yes, and so there's something really perverse about that incentive. That this is your way to join that category or if you're already oppressed because say you're a, a black woman but now you're even more oppressed because yeah, you're a trans enough. black woman or what a trans black man or whatever. I heard someone um, we know in the comedy said, said to another person we know in the comedy scene you can't be a feminist because you were never raped and then it shut her up it was like what and it was like but it is that thing of when you push victimhood so much and it's like I guess you win but that seems wrong yeah, like, I can't be for equality between genders right and so it's or like when you have questions, when you go like, hey, there's a guy, a, 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 a clearly someone taking advantage of it and saying, I'm in prison. I'm like, oh, I'm a chick. I'm not saying everyone does that, but definitely there's some slip through the cracks. Well, because there's. And so if he's doing that and then raping women and you can't be like, can we get him out of there? And you'd be like, that's not him. That's her. Well, this is like, the issue is that dude. it's and it's and all this shit is a distraction, you know, and True. it is pushed by the most powerful people because they know this is the thing. But at the same time, there is it is taking a real toll on our culture in a lot of profound ways. And so then at a certain point, you're like, fuck, I don't really want to talk about this because I know fucking the CIA is pushing this shit and the Federal Reserve is pushing this shit, not because they care about this shit, but because they don't want me talking about the Federal Reserve and the CIA. And I'd rather talk about that. But it gets to a point where you're kind of like, look, people are really starting to believe this shit. And there's, I'm sorry, I think I believe, like, I really believe in the truth. I think there's something really powerful about the truth. Yeah. And for people who stand up and tell the truth, it not only helps people see the world for the way it is, it helps them think about things the correct way, it empowers other people to tell the truth. And when there's a perversion of the truth, that does, a like, that affects society in a profound way. And the truth is that, there's just so much flaws in this whole like worldview. And so like to your point, the reason why they can admit that that one serial rapist who then all of a sudden identifies as a woman to get in a woman's prison might just be making it up. Because once they admit you might just be making it up, they admit that you're not automatically well, so the, the, NRA the, had the opposite same problem. sex because NRA you had the same problem. You are. They're like, wait, you need a semi-automatic weapon. You need a fully automatic weapon to do whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. We actually don't think like regular citizens should have that. But if we give you an inch, you'll keep going. Right, so right, right. they're like, we can't give in on this. Well, they do give in on a lot. But I get, I get the point. You know, you're making anyway. so yeah. that's what that's so, what their side said too. So it's like, oh, the, the ch- you can't buy a video game of Harry Potter now because you support this terrible shit. Like, whoa, whoa, isn't that four steps removed? Well, it's also you know, like I, there's that Matt Walsh guy who did that uh, "What Is a Woman" documentary, or yeah. whatever. He was on Rogan, I think. He does a recently. lot of. He's in my algorithm you know, right now. Yeah, he's just debating he's, tra- undereducated trans people. Where he's done I'm lots not, of research and they haven't. I'm so not they, a big fan of adults debating 18 year olds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's general. what I mean. It's like it's like what are you even kind of proving? But yeah. in his documentary, you know, it's not that. 
he's going up to like experts and people who have like their doctor's degree in this stuff and he just asks them what is a woman over and over and they get more and more furious with him and then like well and it's it is kind of revealing and the truth is that this stuff it's almost like to me even arguing about it just just feels like I don't know. It, it already feels like beating up on children. Like it's like this is like in terms of an argument, this is so stupid yeah. that how are we even having this? But like, look. But then it does end up mattering. But once if you, you can't, push it that much. but if you if you can identify as a woman and therefore you are a woman, trans women are women, as they say. Like okay, but like, then why can't you do that for race? Why can't you do that? For oh, age? I think they will. Why I think Rachel Dolezal. Can't I think do in thirty for, years we're gonna all apologize. Right, well, why to her. can't we? Why can't we do it for species? I mean, like. There's no real logical argument. Like, if you're going to say how you feel and how you identify Trump's biological reality, then why should it just stop at this one biological reality? And there really is no counter to this. I'm sorry. There's in the entire, there's this huge dominant ideology that's being pushed in every university and every corporation yeah. and schools, and no one can respond to that. That very simple thing. Okay, I'm a lizard. I've always known I'm a lizard. But also, it's like, yeah, I was always like, why can't I be a tree? It's like, then be a tree. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Sure. But there's, but this but is you the don't point tell I'm your making kids, about truth. You, don't, you no, can stop going the... to school and just plant your roots. Look, dude, this is the point. Okay, this is like where the intersection of like, like the two things I care about meet, okay? So it's like I care about liberty and I care about truth. So like, yes, you can identify as a tree. You can live your life as a tree. You can say you're a tree. If you look at me and you ask me, Dave, am I a tree? No. Right. You're a dude. And and I'm I like, say, I'm sorry. I say, I'm just not going to lie. I could say you're wrong, but to <laughs> fire you over that is like, whoa. Like, don't, don't, it's, it's, it's corrosive to like the soul to make everybody pretend that we believe you're a tree because we all know you're not. My thing is, the, the, so the more they talk about it, like, what makes a woman? And it's like the way you feel, whatever. It's like, well, also, the more you think about it, it's not that binary. You know, uh, 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 I might like ballet or show tunes. Now, yeah. that's generally a, a female type of thing. And, and and sports is male. But I know lots of women that are into sure. sports. Uh, Katie Nolan knows more about sports than I do. Yeah. But she's, and she's not gay. And she's not a she's not a dude. She, but so that's like, what is masculine? What is feminine? These things are guides, but they're not 100%. So at some point, I get to be like, well, there is no gender. It's just well, genitalia. Well, no, I mean, there's two sexes. That's a binary, and then there's individuals. Like this is it. It right. all comes there's down sexes, to individualism, but gen, right? The gender. And it's like it's just what a wide scale of what you're but, into. But the idea that they're completely removed is also silly, because like no, there are characteristics that tend to be more male characteristics and tend to be more female. And yes, you don't have to fit into any box. Right. Like you can be Tom an Boys individual, thing. but that doesn't mean you're. You know, right. <laughs> I think like, none of it matters because it's like, well, say you're whatever you want. Who cares? <laughs> but also, your penis doesn't make you a man in that world, right? Your penis is just something you have. You well, still could be a woman with a penis. So then, well, then why would you cut it off? I tell you, expecting water and getting seltzer oh. just throws you for a loop. <laughs> it's not even that much different. I was just drinking water and you refilled me with seltzer. <laughs> it's a weird thing, but it's not just this this debate because I think then we're losing the point point is how everyone's at each other's throats yeah and that's more what i want to talk about not like oh i think you're wrong so i had a friend who who uh, he's been needling me over i'm too dirty and he's a rabbi now in israel um okay and he's Checks one of my out. best friends growing up and he just every time it comes up that i do he just needles me and needles me you want something else yeah maybe just some water i don't know why i'm fucking yeah um, it maybe choke on my shit oh wait i got <laughs> And he needles me and needles me and needles me. And eventually, and I just take it, I just take it. He thinks I'm wasting my life. It's come it's come clear. He thinks I'm wasting my life doing what I'm and doing. He's got a point. He's got twenty eight kids or whatever in fucking Jerusalem. And um and I'll take it and I'll take it because I know how he grew up, you know? And then I asked him for some advice just for like a, a source material for stuff for my special. Uh, I was like, Hey, what just just what book from the Talmud was a thing about um, women having sex in their period. I can't find it. It should be in like uh, relations, but it's not. It ends up being a totally different one. And he goes, "I'm not going to tell you that." I'm like, "Why? I'm a I'm, you're a rabbi, and I'm a Jew asking you for Talmudic <laughs> knowledge." And he goes, "No, you're going to use that to mock the religion." I'm like, like, "That's not up to you, dude. I know like, enough to say that's yes, not up to you." Obviously, I yeah. Am. Meanwhile, it was a fucking love letter, and Jews were like, "This was actually quite polite." 
But at some point, and he was like, no, you can't. I'm like, hey, dude, fuck you. I think you're wasting your life. And I've been holding on to it for 20 years. You have your fucking 78 kids. You rise and shine. Just study a fucking antiquated culty religion. And I've been holding it and holding it. And go eat a dick. You know, and that's what happens when you keep shutting people up and talking down to them. Instead well, yeah. of like you're entitled right. to your opinion, they go, "You're an idiot, though." Yeah, it's gonna rise people up against each other. Yeah, I think I think that's that's a, an interesting story, and I think it does apply. And it's kind of like what you would hope people recognize that it's like, look, man, no, neither side in this culture war is going to be vanquished. They're not going right. away. Right. And so, like, we do kind of have to find a way to live with each other in some capacity. And so, like, that's even if we were to split up into different countries, we'd still be our neighboring country. You know what I mean? Like, there would, it'd still be yeah. Spain and fucking, you know, Italy or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, um, like, and this idea of, like, kind of imposing this totalitarian mindset of you must agree with all of this shit is crazy. The other crazy thing about it is that it's like, and again, specifically, I'd say the best example of this is the trans ideology stuff, although there are other examples. But it's also like, look, you guys, I'm sorry, like, I don't. You know, like, the, the thing you said about me that you remember from the fucking way back when, when we first, like, became friends and we were talking about the shit, and you're like, well, you're more a Democrat than a Republican, and I'm like, oh, man, I fucking, these are my beefs with all these teams. I believe in freedom. Like, that's my, my, in my heart of hearts, that's who I am. I believe in freedom. I don't, I don't feel like I fit into either of these teams, like, any of right. these teams. Like, am I a socially conservative person? Like, I don't know. I mean, I got a wife and, and kids now, but, like. I don't know. I'm on the Legion of Skanks. Is that a social conservative? I, right. Like, no, I don't know. I'm not any of these things. You're not disgusted when a potato but, walks in. Right. But you go, look, you guys have this rapidly changing ideology where you are pushing things that you wouldn't That's have, the thing that too. would not have been consensus five minutes ago. And then acting that would like, how ridiculous. dare you not catch and up? And on top of that, you cannot defend it. You can't even, like, defend the argument. This isn't something, like, look, if you were saying to me, like, look, we had slavery five years ago, and now I'm an abolitionist, and if you're not an abolitionist, you're a piece of shit. You're like, okay, but you could defend that with an argument. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, slavery is fucking evil, man. Like, these people They're deserve their beings. freedom. Yeah. But I'm talking about the basic question I say, if you can change your sex by the way you identify or change your gender by the way you identify, why can't you change your species? Why can't you change your age? Why can't? There is no response to that. Because you, you just either can or you can't change biological reality. Right. And so if you're going to say we have this rapidly changing thing that five minutes ago we no one believed, but now we insist everyone believes, and you can't even defend it, you can't even define a woman, you can't even, like, then, sorry, I'm not on that side. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm not with that. I'm going to be more on the side who's, like, resisting that. And, and But, you know, to your point before, I do think, like, my belief is that, uh, this is uh, that all this stuff is was created as a distraction. I think it is um, it is pushed by all of the most powerful institutions in the country because it pits people against each other in the way that it does, and that this is how it they really you know, does. It's a divide and conquer technique, man. I I was I do a bit about the the trans swimmer. Uh huh. And my my general stances on all these is I go a third way. I don't go right or left. I go backwards. Um, it, I, I just I just choose not to get involved. I think there's 60 percent of us who don't care about yeah. your left. I, I kind of have and, a, a bit about it. But that's a a third take on it too. Yeah, and that's why I have a joke where it's like 9/11 was it inside job or or or, or terrorists? And I go, yeah, I don't think it happened. You know, yeah. or it's like you just like have fun and do yeah. a different way. And so that's my stance on this transformer. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. It's how I was in the statues in Charlottesville. I didn't know where Charlottesville was until I heard about this. I don't think we should let women swim. Yeah. So anyway, I was doing it at the cellar the other day, and someone's like, I was like, do you know about this? And then some lady's like, yeah, and she's awesome. And then just for a moment, I was like, okay, because I don't care. So, yeah. And she's ready for me to take a stance against hers, right? And everyone else might be ready for me to take a stance for them or against them. And I go, you really like her? Like, yeah, I'm like, what? Uh, what's her race? Like, what's her, like, uh, breaststroke, butterfly, freestyle? Yeah, that's great. And she was like, uh, I'm like, yeah. I mean, so relaxed, lady. Yeah. You don't really care. You've you, gotten riled up by the fucking news. You don't I, care. I remember um when I was cuz I don't really like work out and I don't really do city spots much anymore. Like I pretty much just do the road 
I'm like, I kind of, it works for me. Like, mm-hmm. I can work new material in through while I'm doing a headlining set and shit. And I just, I live outside of the city and got little kids and shit. Um, but when I was, like, Libertas, the, the hour that I put out a few years ago, like, I worked all that out in the city. Yep, and it was right kind of, like, in the rise of Trump, which was, like, a big theme in the special. Yeah. And I remember, like, it'd be so funny. And I joke about it in the special, where it's like, as soon as you start talking about Trump... You immediately see this like sizing you up of like, are you against him? You haven't said you're against him yet. You better say you're against him yet. And you're like, listen. So they're against you before you even took a stance. Yeah. Just because you said it, it's like you almost had to like relieve them by being like the joke is getting him. Right. It's not like pro him, is it? And you're like, no, listen, this joke is going to be about how he's a fucking buffoon and you're retarded. That's what this joke is going to be about. Yeah. Or I want to find out his wig store. Shut up and just like like let it happen. Like you do, it's really f- funny. You see that happen as the culture war heats up. It is where weird. people it's a culture ro- war. they're like ready to they're like ready to fight instead of just be like, oh, let me hear you take on a thing I don't care about. Yeah. Even if you don't vote, you're still like, what's that supposed to mean? And because uh, people like us, because first off, we're older than this culture war. We've seen and it before. We the were, dirty, too much and sexual we were talk. Married to comedy, so we fell in love. We, and like committed our lives to this whole other thing yeah. which plays by different rules so it's just easy to kind of be in this position where you're like hey guys how about like i don't know i fucking think colin quinn's hilarious and i think nick DePaulo's hilarious and i think nate bargetsy's hilarious and i think yeah, my brother's like, like fucking... nate's my favorite comedian i was like oh cool yeah, yeah he's great he goes yeah but ari i'm saying that because like he shouldn't be <laughs> you know he's clean he's not he shouldn't be my favorite comic but but i i love him and you're like no then he should be because right. he's your favorite yeah comic. he just doesn't like, fall like, into the yeah like whatever turns out you actually he works really like super this. hard at this well clean like stuff. i know people will say things like they'll be like you know i don't like political comedy or something like that and you'll be like okay but like listen to this joke yeah because like this is really funny joke. it's like it turns i dated out- a girl and she goes i don't like dirty jokes i'm like none she goes none zero they're all bad i'll go okay can i tell you a david tell joke that i like and she goes yeah. okay what but i won't like it if it's dirty i'm like okay it goes he goes, you ever try a condom and put it on inside out? It's dry, so dry. It's like inside the actor's studio. <laughs> and uh, and she goes, yeah, no. I'm like, oh, you're, you're, you're married to your fuck it. That's, yeah. that's, that is funny. Well, that's the thing, because you're like, you could be like, oh, like, I don't like, you know, whatever, Nate. Like, I don't like Southern slow draw clean comedy. It's like, well, maybe you've just never heard it done really, really well before, you know? like Because, yeah. like, he does it fucking fantastic. Or people go, I don't like country music. You go, oh, I think you listen to top 40 country. You should right. listen to this independent. That's like, then there's really good country music. Right. You're like, no, come on, tell yeah, me. There's a really good like, song, oh, dude. shit, this is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Just the same way you wouldn't like Bieber, but you might like Arcade Fire. They don't get played right. on the radio. And so there's, so it's, so it's interesting. It's an interesting perspective as someone who's like, you know, married to comedy, was around before this culture war shit. Yeah. And who can kind of see the rise of it, you know? Yeah. Is that, is this leaving you in the lurch if I listen to you? Huh? No, let's just take a break. I don't want to talk to you while you're pissing. <laughs> It'll be quick, <laughs> but that's fair. Let's, let's just take a break. Okay, okay. Let's get into two more things. One is Chi- is China is the China spy balloon? Is that well, that seemed like a distraction to me? It seemed like a bunch of hype, a bunch of much to do about just nothing. China in general. It's like also like. Yeah, I TikTok. I'm like, what? Aren't we spying on all our apps? There's, there's. Um, I'd say this. China's a fucked up government, yeah. you know, and they're uh, certainly like a pretty authoritarian uh, government. They're like, uh, they're, the party is communist, but they're not really communist. No, they're not communist. They're kind of fascist. Yeah. You know, like they're, they basically, they figured out that they need business. The, the kind of old commie model is kind of dead. No, I don't think they even say they're communist anymore. Well, they call themselves the Chinese Communist Party. Oh. But- they also said they it's also the declared that that like making money is good yeah. and business capitalism. is good mm-hmm. and so it's like it's just it's a weird kind of hybrid of both the governments are very in bed with their corporations for sure you kind of have to do what the government tells you um that being said the um tr- china is not an expansionist power they're not conquering a little other bit countries. on the, on the vietnam just like the regions but right they don't go nuts 
They don't. That's they, not. They're their not deal. looking to take over. Amer- yeah. I also don't think that like I don't think China is looking at America bankrupting itself over the last twenty years and saying we got to get in on that now. <laughs> like we got to get in on all these these foreign wars abroad. Yeah. I think they do like to exert influence where they can. Um, however, they are, you know, first they are they were under Mao Zedong. At one point, you know what I mean, and something like eighty million people fucking it's a died. A lot nicer. Like now. they, you know, they've made a lot of progress. Yeah. Um. So you got to keep that in mind. And number two, there's like a there's a huge huge incentive for our military industrial complex to sell you on the idea of this very powerful bad guy, and therefore we need our military budgets up. I mean, you know, if you think that like uh, if you think these spy balloons are a problem. Go look at the war games that we practice right off of China's coast. I mean, we're very provocative toward China um, for absolutely no reason. Um, I think that China is essentially no. They're a country with a lot of H bombs. They have no conventional military threat to us. They are an economic competitor. Right. And so, okay. Yeah. Let's win that. And so, like, this is my thing. It's like, okay, so let's, like, we they know. They make cheaper stuff. Like, you should make cheaper look, stuff. Look, it's, we know, I mean, the 20th century, you could figure this out theoretically alone, but the 20th century empirically proves the case. Um, free markets are what produce wealth. Central planning is not. So, central planning? Central planning, like communist central planning. Like, the All government's right. going to run the economy. That's not what produces wealth. Now, if you want to make some argument that, which is kind of what a lot of progressives have accepted no, i shouldn't even say progressives what neoliberals have accepted is something like um well yes free markets produce the wealth but you need the government there for safety nets or something like that in case people fall through the cracks okay i don't agree with that but there's at least an argument to be made there but we know what produces the wealth and we know it does not work communism doesn't work capitalism does um for if, wealth for making. wealth for, for for prosperity for yeah. producing wealth um now if that's the case and we're economic competitors with China, then what we should do is free up our economy and have as much we'll of a free market we as we can, and we will be more successful than them. That's kind of my take on it, more or less. I think that uh, China is certainly working to spy on us and to bribe our politicians and to try to take over institutions. We're working on the same thing uh, toward them in this Afga- uh, in Afghanistan, in this Ukraine uh, leak that was just put out the other day. One of the major things that was leaked was that we're spying on everybody, our allies and our enemies. Kind of something you already knew was You already knew. Be the Everyone's case. spying on everybody. That's what you're supposed yes. to do. And it's like, and- trying to spy on us? It's like, what? Yeah. And also, like, the TikTok thing was like, you know, Facebook spies on you in, I think, am I wrong? The same exact way they're accusing TikTok of doing, just like taking your info and selling yep. it to advertisers. Yeah. And, you know, and there was one of the things that they've uh, th- that they've pushed about, which is which is interesting, um, which is that if you look at like the, the algorithm, like what TikTok or what the Chinese version of TikTok shows you, like if you just start scrolling through it mm-hmm. is like, you know, some Chinese kid like doing 50 Rubik's Cubes at once or like someone playing violin and like all these. And then what American kids are seeing is like some ghetto chick twerking and like, so, you know, and OK, so. And you're like, damn, you, their system on that alone, just that is better. Well, yeah, I mean, you but then you look at that and people go, aha, see, the Chinese are like manipulating our kids to see this shit while their kids see that shit. And you're like, it's just not clear to me that that's not just the algorithm reflecting back where our it culture is no, at what they've and where is, their so, culture is So they have at. this in Judaism. You can't a Jew can't charge interest to another Jew. Right. You can charge interest to a non-Jew. And then this long Talmudic argument it's like, what are we saying? Are non-Jews not not humans? Don't they have the same rights? And you're like, no, no. And they go, the standard should be if you're loaning money, you charge interest. That's There's no other reason right, to right, charge right. money. Yes. But for your brother, your fellow Jew, you don't do that. You afford him that right. You afford him that privilege because he's your brother. You know? So, like... Yeah, you really Jewed your way out of that one, didn't you? So, like, the standard is let the algorithm take you to whatever dark place your mind will take you. But in China, like, no, no, we're going to cook our algorithm so it guides you towards education. Right. So it's not... Right. So now, should... <laughs> We I should mean, be look, doing that maybe. to ours it's, it's instead debatable. of getting everybody angry all the time. By the way, this trans thing, before that it was fucking blacks. And in between that, it was fucking Asians. It's just like, it's not, a, it's not just that. It's just that today. 
it'll be another thing. No one's given a shit about Black Lives Matter today as much I do as think, they did two I do, years ago. Yes, I do think the trans thing is different in kind. It, yeah, sure. Scale. They're not teaching but kids how to be black. There's Well, uh, right, and it's also like black, sure. is, black is an objective thing. You know, it's just right. a little bit different. But but fair enough. I but mean, the there same, is some truth to the that. Same yes, there is some truth about to that. It. Now, what, you know, I would say that there's no question that whether the, these companies are manipulating their algorithms or not, mm-hmm. that does expose a problem. And I've this is something that, like, I've become much more aware of and concerned about since I've had kids. Um, whereas, like, before I probably would have taken more of the, like, you're sort of like, I don't give a shit, whatever, it doesn't, like, affect me. When you have kids, I'm like, yeah, it, it does matter what, they're bombarded with. No, see, this one I say does something matter. to me. I that, say yeah, it does yeah. affect me. Yeah. I, like, no, and I, it does. And it does. And and all of those things, everything, look, like I'm an individualist, I'm a libertarian, but that doesn't mean like what happens as a society does affect all yeah. of us. And like and like a, de- a decay of like values and decency. I think and you like lose standards. it when you say values. I think it's, I think it's a decay of decency to each other. Yeah. It, it's not the value because like, your values are not my values, but it's like, well, but your values are not you ever see that video yeah, being of that lady sla- slapping that old dude in the face because he wouldn't yeah. pull his mask while he's eating on a plane? And then Russell Brand's like, listen, no matter what side you're on, we all can pretty much say with certainty we're against slapping elderly people. And he goes, so what's happened to us? Right. So I think I got through to you one time ever with like my stance on things. At most. Yeah, at most. And it was the when he did it in your, back, your old backyard. And you go like, no, it's a free market. Let the let the social media companies do what they want. I go, no, they're turning us against each other, and we didn't give them the right to do that. It's not just let me see what I want. They're making me hate my friends, yeah. And we didn't sign up for that. And now they've made us so n- needy to them. Your wife can't not be on a Facebook moms groups. She'll be yeah. a bad mom. So we need them, and now they're turning us against each other. And we didn't say you can do that. Yeah. No. Listen. I think I, there's definitely something to that. And I mean, it's it's a real problem. It's a um, real problem. I wouldn't I, let my care, kids on there. I care about that. Um, that my my kids are not like inundated with this. Just like fuck. And this is why I say when I mean values. I'm saying I, I'm not saying we all have to share 100 percent the same values, but like very general broad strokes like it's not right to hit an old man because he didn't have his mask on like we got to at least agree on that and just like the idea that it's like it's better for our children to see a kid who's awesome at playing the violin than see a chick twerking like that's just better for them like you know what Uh i mean like these very basic things it's not like is there any way it's not like we have to agree on everything we don't all have to be religious we don't all have to be that but we could agree on this and even if it wasn't basic it's what you want for your kid, and right. you still can't control that. Yes, and that's that's something that's very concerning. You know, you can say, hey, TV goes off at 9 because it gets too dirty after 9 when we were yes. kids, you know, or 10, whatever. You can't right. watch the 10 o'clock shows. This is, it's it's open. Yeah. And, like... and, and and forget the, I'm turning everybody against you, I'm, I'm making you hate. Just forget that. Let's just talk about, like, I'm looking at my friends be beautiful in every moment, and I'm not beautiful in every moment, so I'm starting to hate myself or think I'm less valuable. Yeah, I'm seeing a party I'm not invited to. Uh, shit like that is like damaging. I I think I worry about that. I mean, my kids are still very young. Still I, t- I worry yeah. about that particularly for like my daughter, and probably the shit I'm worrying about won't even be the thing when she's a teenager. It'll be some next thing that I can't predict. <sighs> but yeah. I do think there's something about like you know like it going on Instagram and just being like flooded with these. First off, like like incredibly good looking and incredibly like slutty like girls and then you're just like walk out into the world and that's just like not the case that's not that's real not life the case. You this never is see not a people. reflection you of see them real all life. the time on this yeah, it's, and it's constantly like the, no the standard isn't that you have to be a 10 who's showing your ass yeah. to everyone like that's not the, and then you realize like a lot of these pictures are filtered I a know. lot of these things are like not yeah. real and also but that you're it's like, seeing it as real and also that you're saying this this is the world there's an innocence that i think is lost from having the internet that like i was of the last generation to like be fortunate enough to grow up without yeah we're like i had internet when i was in high school but it was like i needed an aol disc Dial to it. get on it mm-hmm. and i needed to convince everyone in my house to not use the phone so i could go on it i like maybe i could get like a picture of a naked chick yeah but there weren't even that many and it was and and then like it was when, about on the level of going to the woods to find the magazine yeah it wasn't much different than that yeah. and then when i was in college you could get some videos online, but it was like really low quality. It, it was still really shitty, you know. And I, there was something where, 
you're like when you're like a teenage guy, if you just had like a cute chick who was into you, that was fucking awesome. There were just no like standards of like, oh my god, yeah. it should be that. There was something like innocent about that. Yeah, and I think that that's being robbed a little bit from kids today. Yeah, and, and I, I know you think that's bad. I know you're probably concerned with also going. Well, I know my parents were like, this music today sucks, and I don't want to be that guy. So you you got to be conscious of not doing that, right? Uh, because you if you see kids doing like sometimes even Hasidic like little kids will do the fucking dances, and you're like, well, I was doing higher level shit than this, but like there's nothing wrong with it. You know, but it might maybe be, pickleball might be silly, but it's fine. But you know what? It starts to make me think is like maybe there was more wisdom to that than I recognized to your parents. Like maybe there was more wisdom to that that it's like yeah, it's kind of not great that you're listening to this trashy thing because it does then kind of like put into motion this cycle where it has to go like a step up and a step up and a step up from that. I don't know. You know, I don't have like a solid opinion on that. When when but... you when the algorithm says, well, everybody seems to be looking at a super hot chick that doesn't exist in real life who's had plus surgery or filters, or whatever, and the algorithm says everyone's watching it, so everyone will be interested in it. So then that will push that to your daughter in 10 years, not now. Push it to her harder. She's now seeing more because of this <clears throat> algorithm, a fake damaging version of the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think it's good. It's, I think it's, it's a very bad standard, particularly for uh, young girls. Yeah, and that's just what I'm saying, whatever. But then now it's the most devious of us. They're actively turning us against each other. Yeah. Yep. And and it's working. I, there's so many fights. I, I mean, after Trump got elected, I'd sit on the subway and have every woman, and I don't vote, have every woman stare at me, you did it. And it was like, well, you fucking white women did it too. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God. And it was just this you against us. In New York, we're all liberals here. And everyone's looking for a fucking monster. And yeah. they just aren't there. And and it's not it's not a great time in this country. Well, and I do, I think, um, like, I really do blame, like, so much of it on all the people I was talking about at the beginning. Like, I blame so much of it on, on these motherfuckers and their project for a new American century. Because I do think, like... Look, the technological advances, like, they come, and there's kind of no stopping that, and there's no putting that back. Like, Pandora's box is open, and the next step is going to be, like, all this AI shit, you know? And I don't know exactly what effect that's going to have, but it seems like this is going to be on the level of the internet. Like, it's another game changer, you know right. what I mean? And um, It's not there yet. No, it's not, but it seems like it's going to yeah. be, you know what I mean? Like you're looking The same at way a, the virtual reality was like, oh, I'm getting nauseous, and now... I'm not getting nauseous. Anymore. Yeah, it's it, you're looking at a Nokia flip phone, and right. it's like, okay, this isn't that crazy. It's just a phone that is but attached you can see to the wall. The angle on but you're like, oh man, this is gonna be an iPhone, you know, yeah. and that is gonna be a game changer. But I really blame those guys so much, and all of them, like you know, it's Bill Clinton and and George Bush and and Barack Obama and Donald Trump and all of them for just taking this kind of like this inheritance, which was '90s America. The, the richest, most powerful country in the history of the Peak world. white. And, and just squandering it. And I think that it's like the fact that they had this project for what the new American century was going to be like, and it turns out that it was all they, they, it was all a fucking disaster. They ignored all the wise people. They tried to You know, by the way, when I, when I was telling you earlier today, you know, I, I mentioned that, like, George Kennan, the Cold Warrior, opposed the NATO expansion, uh -huh. but it was so much more than that. It was, uh, um, you know, uh, John McNamara, who was John F. Kennedy's uh, Secretary of Defense, he opposed it, and, um, you know, uh, the Obama's Secretary of Defense, um, William Perry, who was Bill Clinton's Secretary of Defense at the time, like all these really smart people, all these people at the Council on Foreign Relations, even like the people in this bad guy apparatus, they opposed all this shit. And I think that, when the establishment destroys, starts destroying the country, it has this effect of like leading to what you're talking about, where everyone spins out of control and everyone's furious at each other because the institutions, the, worst thing ever. Uh, the institutions are no longer able to like wrangle people in because they can't go like you know. You know, they can't go... Microaggressions became bigger than full aggressions. Well, well, right. Everything spun out of control because what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Like, we should trust CNN? We should trust the scientists? You know, this COVID thing. I mean, God damn, what the effect of that's going to be over the next few years. Where the, during the biggest crisis, all of the fucking medical establishment got it completely wrong completely misled you know what I everybody. Saw really I mean, down to, dude, they were telling you to wear cloth masks outside and wipe down your groceries. And like, so how are you next time going to tell people you have to trust the experts? Like At they, least when you said like, uh, well, uh, 
based on what the knowledge I had then, that's what we said would be the safest course. But now we see we have a little more knowledge. Like we said, it can live on surfaces for 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 six weeks or whatever. And you're like, oh, but it can't transmit into your body. Then, like, right. oh, well, I didn't know the difference. That we hadn't done the test. Sure, but, but you got to get some stuff right. Willful ignorance or knowing this is wrong, but still pushing. When the well, when they the, did that. When the medical community said bad. for Black Lives Matter protests. You can go outside like, and you can on. be in groups. Well, like, now you're not doing science anymore. Yeah, that's now just, you're not doing science. Now you're doing like what have your you done the analysis are. on? Yeah, if it's racism if, is a pandemic too or whatever. You know, it's like that. Um, that like, stuff. Yeah. First off, you're supposed to. If you're the experts, you're supposed to get it right a lot. I'm not saying you have to get it right all the time, but you should be getting it right a lot. True. And you shouldn't be wrong about everything. And then you really can't lie through your teeth when you got it wrong. And you so really I fucked can't, it up. I got it wrong. You can't know. keep pushing shit after you knew it was wrong. And so, in the same way that you went, um, well, I just can't trust the the corporate press anymore. I can't trust the media. Yeah. And you oh, okay? Well, like if the media hadn't fucked everything up so much, and it just fucked a little bit up. CNN might be able to say to you, okay, look, I know we got a few things wrong, but what, you're going to trust Alex Jones more than you trust CNN? But they got so much wrong that you're like, kind of, and yeah. so much wrong like, on purpose. Yeah, like, yeah. When you're, you're getting things wrong on purpose yeah, and not firing those people? Yeah. You when, kinda, when that guy, Sanjay Gupta, goes on Rogan, oof. and he goes, hey, you said, I, I got to take a task on this. You said that the thing I was saying is a horse tranquilizer when it's been prescribed to a billion people already. For long-term use, it's it's been in it's, one of the safest. It's won a Nobel room. Prize yeah. for science for human use, and you're doing that. And he goes, "What do you mean?" And he goes, he breaks it down for him. And he goes, "Listen, that's regretful, and they shouldn't have done that." And he goes, "Okay, great, we've gotten to a place." Then he goes back to CNN, and he goes, "No, actually, Rogan's wrong." Yeah, and it's like, or he Whoa. at least kind of agreed with Don Lemon while he was saying that he's wrong. He didn't stand up to him for sure. And then at one point, which I thought was equally damning in that interview, he goes. Uh, Dr. Gupta goes to Rogan. He goes, uh, "Are you going to get the vaccine?" And he goes, "Well, no, I just had it. I just had." He just goes, "He just had it. This is what you were saying. I took horse paste for. I just had COVID and I yeah. beat it." And he goes, uh, "He goes, I have stronger immunity than the vaccine. Like all the studies say, natural immunity is stronger than the vaccine." And uh, Dr. Gupta goes, "Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. It's probably you probably got some good immunity from that." And he's like, "So why should I take?" So the why did you bring that up then? And he goes, "Um, well, maybe just to have some more protection or something like that." And while he's saying this, there were vaccine passports in effect all throughout the country. You couldn't go to a restaurant. You couldn't go to a Knicks You're game. A you couldn't go to these places if you weren't vaccinated. And yet here is CNN's doctor, and he can't give this guy an argument for why he should take this thing. And so. Anyway, the point is that when the center becomes the extremists yeah. and they're advocating for policies that are just these disastrous, horrific policies, they right, like you weren't they wrong. Lose, you know you're already you know this is already wrong. You're still saying may as well just get it. Right. They they lose their ability to pull people back into the fold and to be like, no, don't go into one of these radical political views because look, isn't the establishment a little bit better than that? And you're like, no. You're not. The establishment is what? Fucking Lindsey Graham and Hillary Clinton? Let me talk to some radicals if that's what a centrist is. It's bad news. It doesn't... We got to talk about two things, but maybe now is a good time to be like, what are you hopeful for? <sighs> Shit. Like, what's going Shit, well? Shit, What's going well in this country? Well... I think because the establishment is so corrupt, it is a good sign that people aren't trusting them anymore. Yes. We are turning to other sources. Yeah. It's starting to be like, hey, you fucked it up so much, we're going this way. And that's what you got to hope That is for. good. Now, you know, the most evil shit usually happens when people are united. You know? Like, it's not good that we're so divided, but at the same time, it's really not great if we're all united to go fight a war in Iraq. And we kill a million people for no reason. Beating up Indians. And so, we all yeah, hated the idea of yeah, like, like Brown. So at least you have the positive of the the fact that, um, you know, there's it's going to be much much harder to unite the country around one political leader to do something really really bad. That's going to be much harder now because now no matter who's in, they are vehemently opposed by the other side. And there's something good about that. There's something very good about that. Call, we, that's what I said when Trump got elected. And I don't care, but I'm like, this is good. And like, my liberal friends, are like, how's it good? And and I'm like, well, because we're going to call all politicians on their shit now. I'm a corruptionist, yeah. you know. So I'm like, I don't want anyone to get okay with it. Uh, anything they're doing, look into it now. Right. You know, I read an article a long time ago. Like the problem is, 
uh, Obama got elected, the whole left goes, we did it, we're done. And they go, no, no, no. And then you let it all go to shit. You got to stay on these motherfuckers. Well, right, and put no pressure on him as he just became George yeah. W. Bush's third term, you know? And so, like, yeah, I think there's something to that. I think also, like, look, like, we are we live in the super information age now. Good ideas can have at least a, a competitive fighting shot to spread. Yeah. Um, bad ideas, too. But good ideas have a shot now, whereas they could just be completely snuffed out before. I think that you can do... You're, it's easier for people to... Um, have um what's the term i'm looking for to have like a mobile income than ever before where now you can like kind of make your money at from you don't have to necessarily go into a job in all the, the time you can yeah. you can kind of make your money from if you have internet access you can connect to the rest of the world yeah. you can kind of like remove yourself from crazy areas i think there are some areas you that need are a really... boss less than ever before yes you still mo most people still need one yes. but like there's there's more and more opportunity to not have there's someone more at opportunity you. to make yourself economically productive without having a boss or at least being tied to a location mm -hmm. i think that certain areas only are, fans are, are going go great yeah there you go that's you, you always have that fallback yeah i actually don't think that's so great but you know but i mean regardless. like yeah but like the, yeah i mean with, that's what i mean with values but like a karen feehan is like should oh be it was the best she was gonna should do. be barely paying her rent on comedy as it's growing She's at the point now where it's like, fuck, she should be frustrated right now about 10 years in. And now she's like, I'm financially, it's not an issue. That's great. Listen, I'm not, not even saying anything about her specifically. Yeah. Um, that's great for you in your current. I, I'm not saying this about Karen because I, I don't <laughs> like, I, I'm really not. I don't know yeah. if this applies to her or not. But if I were just, if you were to just say that about a comic, I would say that's really nice for how your comfort level right now. That's really bad for the prospects of you developing as a great as a comic. comic yeah, it's, because you have if you get, to if your mom buys your new car every year, it's not great for right. stand up. Well, there's something about like in stand up comedy, it's like the tough years. At least this is how I see it, and I know a lot of comics agree with me. But it's like the the first few years are not the tough years in stand up comedy, especially if you start young. Um, the first few years, you're carried by how romantic the whole thing God, is, so and nice. you're so in love. You're like in love. It's it's literally like you, you know when, like when you yeah. like the first few years after you met your wife. It's like you're you're just in love with this beautiful creature that you've found, you know? And it's so amazing and you love it so much and the highs are so high and the lows are so low and it's just like it's what and you have all the dreams in the world. You have all the potential in the world. You could be huge in a few years and and you go like 6 months in you're like, "Hey, I'm pretty good for 6 months. If I'm this good in 5 years, then I'll be getting TV and if yeah. I'm that good in 10 years, I'll be selling out theaters." And about you can you can dream about all this stuff. The real tough time, and this doesn't happen for everyone, but the real tough time is when you're like seven eight nine ten years in comedy and shit's not panning and out. shit's not panning out and you've dedicated your talent's gotten better your careers is not you're like it's like this yes you now you're good and you're not getting what you feel like you deserve and you've dedicated you know you look around and you go i'm 30 and i put 10 years of my life into this you know i fucking fuck my, it's too late to my go first back. 10 years i was a kid right. the second 10 years i was just doing high school like what everyone else did at this point i got friends who are buying houses and i've put this and if i go start now i'm a decade behind right. everyone and i don't even think i could go do that because this has ruined me for anything yep. else and i'm struggling to get like that's the tough part but feeling that burn and getting through that when you get to the other side it's what keeps you hungry on the other side, and it's what makes you appreciate the other side. It's like there's just. There's I mean, something... look at Louis G. Gomez. He had to like he had to go and be like, I'm about to have a kid. Um, I gotta make some fucking money at stand up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but not like I gotta get a day job. It could have easily gone that way. Yeah, but yeah. he went. Let me buckle down on this comedy career. Yeah. Anyway, I okay. Um, yeah. I, I digress from the point, but I do think there's a lot yeah. to be like there's there's a lot to be optimistic about. I think that like we have um the the institutions that have really been fucking people over have less trust than ever before. I think the fact like it's a hu it's still very new. It's a huge game changer that like Joe Rogan can counter the propaganda of CNN and win. That's a really big thing. They can try to cancel him and lose. You know what I right. mean? Like they went. They went all the way at an independent. I hate saying news source, but sometimes yes. Well, just the biggest um, platform. You know, right. whatever you want to call went, it. They didn't just like eh, whatever. They were like, no, let's try to destroy it. Yep. And then it didn't work. Yes, that is that is a white pill, as yeah. they say, something to be encouraged about. A case for optimism. And you know, there's also just like amazing things happen. Amazing things happen in human, you know, like this is a, this guy, Gene Epstein, who I know is a really, really uh, smart economist. 
uh, brilliant guy. And he always said he, he would say his case for radical optimism is uh, and the two examples he would use is he goes, you know, if you were sitting radical around, optimism, I like that. If, if you were sitting around in 1845 and you said to someone, you go, you know, in 20 years, slavery is going to be abolished in the West. You know, they'd be like, oh, you're out of your fucking mind. It was like the height of yeah. slavery. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, there's just no way. Like, what are you talking about? This is like the oldest institution in history. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. No one's even pushing for and that. Like, and yeah. yet, uh, yeah, at the time, abolitionists were like maybe 1%. Or seven of them. You know, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. And they were getting lynched. Like, yeah. it was, you know, and yet it was true. And if you had been sitting around in like 1981 and you said, you know, in 10 years, the Soviet Union won't exist anymore. It would just would have been insane no way, yeah, to imagine yeah. it. But all of those things happened. And so, like, now with all the technology we have and all the advances, it's like, I, who's to say, like, some radically, amazingly positive developments can't happen? That doesn't mean everything was perfect after slavery. doesn't mean everything was perfect after the Soviet Union. But, like, what an improvement. You know what I mean? Like, what a fucking, like, it's way better than having it the way it was. Things are better than 15 years ago, technologically. In a lot of minimum. ways. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, this is something that I'm, you know, I, you know, like my, my, uh, my son, uh, had, um, like a, a congenital heart defect mm -hmm. and he needed open heart surgery when he was three days old. Uh, it was a very difficult thing to, uh, to go through. Um, and he's doing great. He's absolutely fine. And there's a, just a few decades ago, he, he wouldn't have made it. They wouldn't even done and, the surgery. Yeah. You know, and like, and, and they would have, they started doing the surgery in the nineties, um, but it wasn't nearly as good. You have a much higher risk of of dying. And before then, you're just that's it. There was just nothing you could do. You just my kid would be dead. And so, like whatever other problems there are, it's like if I had to pick to live back then or live now, there's not even a choice. It's like I yeah I I choose the place where my kid lives. Yeah. Like that's you know. And so there's just yeah, you talk about politics and this and that, but it's also like way of life or, or f is like it's a real thing you know it's well, like just that just medical yeah like, advances medical is like exactly humongous. everyone overlooks that it's humongous you know and yes people still go broke over like medical things and stuff like Duncan that. had still full problems. testicular cancer and he doesn't anymore yeah, yeah. like that's that's pretty just incredible a little lopsided yeah there you go but like you know it's like that shit is like oh yeah that's right you were dead <laughs> you were a dead man and now we hang so like that's that's pretty huge and and like what's more important than that you know right not much uh, so that's, that's a pretty big thing. And there is like, there's a lot of crazy shit out there, but there also does seem to be a big movement against a lot of the crazy shit that's happening now. And that's, I mean, it's, well, I just mean, whatever crazy policy it is, you can find people who are really challenging it now and you can connect with them. You can kind of find your tribe and your people and there's something positive to that. So, yeah, I, um, uh, there's one reason I, I love Berlin as a, as a, as a city. It's one of the most, it, they're so for you something. You wouldn't have loved it in the 30s. Yeah, I would not have. They're so for something and they're very little against things. Yeah. So everyone there is is that I've met. Sure, I'm sure there's other things, but they're like what what are you in? It's what they're into is not what they're against. You know, what they're into is I build boats or I'm doing this weird like art now. I'm trying to do uh, combine rap and and fucking country or whatever. Like, oh cool. And they're all doing things. It's so active and fun. Some of that shit's happening here too. Yeah, and I think if you find your tribe, like well, let's let's do something. Let's all play basketball. Let's do stand up. You know, the way you're like, dude. When you find a new stand up, you're like, good Jeffrey Osmus. I just saw, and it was like, hey, I've seen you kill like four times in a row. You're a good comic. I'm yeah. glad to know you now. Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if you stand for comedy, there's so much positive. Yeah, no, I agree, and I also just like this is another thing I think about having kids. Yeah, that it does is like I just go like. No matter how much I live in the world of like, oh, this fucked up shit this, the government's doing, it's like I don't have an option to not be optimistic for right. the future. That's you just got, not you an got option your chickens? for me. Do you have got, chickens? No, but we're doing. You're, it. We built it. We built them. the coop and everything. That's a yeah. fun thing to get yeah. behind. Yeah, the yeah. fresh yeah. eggs that you'll see a different color of egg that you can know could exist. Yeah, there'll be a deep orange. You're like, no, these are wrong. Like, no, they're right. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot. Like, oh, personally, I'm very like I have a lot that I'm very happy and grateful for. And like, I think there's an unbelievable time for comedy. Like just an incredible time. <sighs> Make right a now. living. Like, it's just like, it's, you don't have to be one of the few people plucked. You can, yeah. a lot of people can make a no, living. No. And so many of my friends were not plucked and are fucking crushing right now, you know? Uh -huh. And like, I'm fucking, you know, it's amazing to me. I get to like go out and fucking perform for my fans and then talk to them directly on these podcasts and do the huge podcast. Yeah, that it's technology like, has really helped it. us. Well, I'm when COVID hit, like your job's over. It was like Zoom, like what? 
And like, yeah, you can keep doing these. You can't meet up in public, but you can just still like, whoa, yeah, technology has helped us overcome even the, yeah, even and that. like, um, you know, like for me personally, like I'm a guy who, I mean, aside from I got just for laughs a few times, but two times, uh, but I've never, I've never been a guy who like got anything from the industry. Like all of my success has just been from like working at stand up and getting good at stand up. And then, like, fucking podcasting and developing an audience that way. And so it was like, wow, what a great time for me that there is this option. You know what I mean? Where you and like, That's what I always thought Stern should have said. Instead of going, like, fuck these podcasters, he should have gone, man, I wish I had that when I was, when the FC was fucked with me. Would have been great if I had that. You guys are lucky. Yeah, dude. I remember um, listening. I'm not going to name who it was, but there was a comedian, like a dinosaur, who was trashing a younger comic. Um, who's got like a, a big following online and stuff. And he goes, uh, he was like, he goes, ah, dude, you're not even passed at the cellar. You're a fucking loser. And I was like, dude, you sound like such a fucking dinosaur right now. No one cares. Yeah. No one cares. I know it means something to you because you hold on to like that. It used to mean something. And yes, once upon a time, it meant something. He is lapping you yeah. in this game right now. It doesn't matter. He sells tickets and you don't. Yeah, he sells like, tickets. That's, it, that's the it, point it, of the seller is to go build yeah, up. Yeah, it was always on. to get. That and was that's always when there was one seven, room. There's five rooms now. Yeah, dude. it was always. It was seven layer like levels after that was the end goal was to be able to sell tickets. Yeah. That like this is nothing. And that's that so was funny. what Stern said that about you. It was like, oh. Oh, dude, he literally told you. He goes, "Here's what you do, kid. You come down, you work the midnight you move to Hartford, shift, Connecticut. You go, yeah, you move to Hartford, midnight. Connecticut, do a 2 a.m. radio show. You're like, rather than I pay my rent money already, like, what are you talking and fucking about? like just living a great life and doing whatever you want. There was this do. time Bert was on radio and he got, he loves like talking about money, and he was talking to the radio guy and he goes, "Let's say how much we make on because uh, he didn't add, you know, and he, then they were on commercial break and he goes, oh, you do whatever it was." Um, a uh, uh, blue apron. He goes, I do it too. I go, oh really? He goes, how much do you make? He goes, oh, I shouldn't say. He goes, same time. Let's do it. And the guy goes, um, it was like okay, off air, right? They're just it was like okay, and and Bert, he goes one, two, three, and Bert's like I don't know six thousand or, or whatever, and the guy goes seventy five dollars. What? <laughs> He goes, yeah, that's your cut from CBS Radio. Yeah, <laughs> and he hears this guy say thousand as he's saying a two digit number, and he's like. It was like, what? yeah, we have that now. We have a direct. Yeah. It, it's it's nuts. You can make money on YouTube, but that's just us in general. In the in the in the in the population, I guess it's similar. Well, it's not necessarily that, but there are there are just more opportunities. I don't mean to like say it for people who are out there who are like, well, yeah, fucking good for you. We're getting crushed. Like I'm not downplaying any of that. I'm yeah. just saying that like, but look, if you're a the world is the world is what the world is, and so you got to find a way to adapt to yeah. it, and you have more tools now to find a way. If to you're adapt a skateboarder, I can look in slow motion in any trick. Without having to go to get a tape, if you're, I can just look and find them, and then go. Oh, now I know how to do that. Look, if you're in a fucking dead end job and you hate your fucking job, yeah. and you like want to like, you're like, look, I gotta develop another skill so I can do something else. You would have had to like go somewhere and pay for a get class an education. and like get a fucking or something like that. Whereas now you can fucking find that shit. Yeah. You can do it. Like it's just like you got to figure out what it is you want to do that you're good at. You know that you you at least well, reasonably we can before. like to do. You your coffee machine broke. Um, oh yes. And and it was like oh I'm fucked. And you're like, well, I do have a shitty espresso machine. I've never used it before. Yeah, it was in the middle of a snowstorm, by the way. And my coffee machine broke. And uh, the, fuck, I got two little kids. I need coffee. And then we were like, I have this espresso machine. But you go on YouTube. You're like, let me figure, yeah, out, let how figure out how to use it. Instead of like, we don't have the manual anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, if I can write to the company and maybe get it in a month. Yeah, and I, in general, because I like, I, had it that I, day. Uh, I bought a house, and, and I'm like not a handy person at all. I'm a Jew from New York City. Yeah. And then there's like all this shit that I want to do. And then you're like, you know, there's a YouTube video for everything, just explaining to you how to do everything. And that's actually goes against what no, I'm saying I'm not going to do like electrical yeah. wiring. But, but like, how everyone's well, you know. like at each other's throats and against each other. The, what the joys of the basis of YouTube is, I'm putting up an educational video for almost no profit. Nothing. It's just like, how do I inflate my hot tub, my inflatable hot tub? How do I uh, pull this? And it's just like, hey, world, I have some expertise. I'd love you guys to have this. Yeah, yeah literally. That's what it is. Isn't that a beautiful yeah. thing? How to, make a, how to make a scarf out of a fucking uh, blanket they give you on American Airlines. Yeah, like, it's oh, true. Okay. I don't even know if I actually really appreciated that aspect of it. But you're, at, you're 100% right. Like, this person is, like, taking some time. Out of his day to like just do something for yeah. you, and he so connects like, yeah. with that with that charity to a bunch of people who need it, and you kind of get it in a way because you know how like 
You know how like if there's like your f like your fucking favorite movie that you just love so much and you find out like your girl's never seen it and you're like, yo, you have to see this movie. And she's like, OK, let's watch it. And you're like, I'm so into watching this with you right now. Yeah. And it's not. And you're like, right. I've seen this a million times, but I'm so into being here while you see this for the first time. Yeah. And then I went, hey, wasn't that a great recommendation? Right. Yeah. And like you love it the way I loved it. And it's kind of like people who know how to do shit a lot of times get a lot of joy from being like, OK, let me show you how to do this. Like, it's not actually that hard. See, and now yeah. you know how to do it, too. So and that really is beautiful. Happening. Something that really beautiful happening. about that. Nate Marshall, you know him? The uh, like Central PA comic. Uh, the name sounds familiar. We got we um got into a talk about racism and stuff like right after COVID, and he said he was so overcome by the media that he thought all white people wanted him dead. <laughs> you know, and he just he goes, I could tell you it's wrong, but I felt that it was right. And he goes, and I was fishing one day. Me and my couple of the black friends, and we saw this fucking redneck white guy fishing also on a rowboat, and he goes, and then he starts rowing over like fucking shit dude what the fuck's this gonna be and then they're waiting and waiting he comes over and they're like can i help you he goes hey guys you got you're casting wrong you got to let go right at the top and you'll get like can i show you and they're like okay goes right there you let go and then he's like try it and he's like okay cool anyway good luck to you and then right. he was like immediately met with maybe my version of the world has been misconstrued but he goes yeah. also here's some guy who just wants to help two new fishermen yeah, when I had an RV and fucking at a at a at a at a festival in Georgia, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's starting to stink. Some guy's like, can I show you how to empty your fucking septic system? I'm like, no, you don't have to. I'm like, I'd love to help you. I'm like, okay, there are people helping people. Yeah, and I guess but like the the point of all of this is that like there's still a lot of good in right. people and right. like don't forget that you yeah. know what i mean and i also like try to just remember you know just like the case for optimism like you know like my grandfather grew up in Nazi Germany. Whatever complaint I have to complain about, his literally his whole family was killed. He's the only one who made it out. Came over here, joined the army, and then fought as a soldier in Against World the, War II. Wow! And like you know, full circle. So whatever I is going like, no, inflation's really bad or something. Again, I'm not trying to downplay how much inflation yeah, right. has destroyed people. I'm just saying it's like just kind of keep that in mind. There are people who went through much worse and kept trudging along. So like that's your job. Is to like keep bearing your burden, move forward with it. It's something I should tell myself. You probably should tell yourself too. In moments where like, it's like, put it in context. Yeah, you know, like let's like even this microaggressions. Like I'm like, okay, but relax. Yeah, yeah, and it's stupid, and you should like speak out against it. Well, this joke reminded me this. Okay, so I can see being a little bit upset. You're overreacting. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Climate and then finish. Let's do it. And then also, you want to just give me your like 60, 40, 70, 30, who's going to win from each? Okay. Uh, I'll do it. Sure. Do I'll do that. that first. Do you want to do that last? Um, well, you so know, much could happen. I, I'd say it, it's this is of all the years the most impossible to fucking predict because like there's just so many variables. It's, and, it's when you get to the Sweet 16, you're like, well, I think this team, but they're going to have one big test in the round of eight. Well, so you got Trump was just arrested. You know, like, what are they going to actually do with that? The charges to me seem to be completely ridiculous, but it's also in the lower Manhattan district. And if it goes to a jury trial, you're getting 12 New Yorkers on that trial. What are the odds they're not voting guilty on whatever no Donald what. Trump's accused of? You right. know, I, I don't know. This is a, a Soros backed D.A. who ran on I'm going to get Donald Trump. You know, who's the judge in the case? Wow. Because that's that's really what it okay. all comes down so to. Barring that, you, you know. So and then that could also strengthen. And then them. also, does DeSantis mount a real challenge to, to Who's John, DeSantis, Donald Trump, Florida, okay, the Florida governor, who flipped that state from a purple state to a deep blue state because he really, you know, pulled back on all the COVID restrictions much earlier and kept Florida Which open and free. What's purple? What's blue? Purple is like a flip, uh, a swing state. And blue is. I'm sorry, a red state is a Republican state. So he won by like a couple thousand votes in his to be governor, and he just won by twenty points in his reelection campaign. Is, twenty percent. You know, oh. yeah. Uh, so and he's huge. He's Republican or Democrat? Republican. Oh, right. He's and they're thinking he might challenge. So Trump you said in he moved primary. from a purple state to a blue state uh, to a red state. To, okay, I get to it. like a deep red state. Um, so and he. I'll tell you so, what. One thing he did was he got that monoclonal antibody thing, mm -hmm. and I don't know all the details, but I just do know that it was legalized or, or made available midway through when Steve Simone's parents were dying of COVID. Right. And they were telling him like, "You you come in. You should be saying goodbye. You should figure out what to say to them." The doctors were like, "They're done," and then they're like, "Oh shit, some experimental treatment," and they pulled out of it. Wow. Wow. And That's I got something. COVID, I was there, and, and Rogan and everybody else was like, oh, you're so lucky you're in Florida. 
Yeah. Just go get one of those right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's all right. That's that's huge. And this guy was so, like, we're not going to shut down the economy. But we are going to treat this disease. We're not just going to ignore it. We're going to fucking so, go full on on treatment. So I. All right. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to give percentages here. OK. But I'll say. Right. I think the most likely scenario is that Trump is the Republican nominee. And you think DeSantis second most? DeSantis definitely second most. And then there's always um, the field of like and, and just, But I think there's like almost no chance for anyone else. Okay. I think it's going to be one of those two. I'd say 95% is one of those two. So maybe I'll go Because you have a 70... bunch of people going like, give me anybody but Trump. If they're yeah, the, the but not within the Republican primary. You know, within the Republican primary, he's still very strong. I'd say 70% chance Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Um, I think... I'm. Le- I don't think Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. He won't run. I. Th- I think he's. Or they'll not say run. we're not letting you. Uh, we'll they say- won't say that publicly. But, but I'm usually saying- when a president after his first term, they don't even have primaries in that for that. Party, usually right? they're they not challenged. Go, it's done. Usually they're not challenged. Right. Um, Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr. has already announced that he's running to challenge Joe Biden. The kid who was. No 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 no. He's dead. The kid who saluted oh, he him died is in dead. Fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in the man, plane that's crash. Right. No, but it's uh not not JFK's son. I oh, believe Robert, he's Bobby yeah. Kennedy's uh, son. Um, but he's, he's running ch- to challenge Joe Biden. Uh, he was real against the COVID stuff, and so the, I don't know if he, he's a big enough name to really get momentum going. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling, and this is my prediction. It seems like a long shot right now. I have a feeling that Gavin Newsom is going to be who's that the, the, the California, California governor. California governor. I think he is going to be the Democratic nominee. I think they now there's a lot that has to happen for this. Is why is I can't California give a percentage. California falling, falling into disrepair. Sure, but that's never stopped Democrats before. Um, the I think that he, I think they're going to somehow get Biden and Kamala Harris out of the way. Yeah. For him. Okay. So they have to ask one, one on side. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are both done. done. They're not, neither one done. are running. Done. Bernie Sanders is just too old, He's too, too old many now. heart attacks, yeah. and also just I don't think he can inspire that type of movement. He again. had it once and it was over. And I then Hillary so. Clinton's always a chance she comes back, but it's already I also just don't, done. I think she's too old and crazy. And people like you, you let us people down. People just don't like her. Okay, and so and so, um, and then why not Kamala Harris? She's too intensely awful and stupid and unappealing. Her approval ratings are like disastrous. No one wants her. She got like one percent when it she seemed ran like in from the... an outsider. It seemed like she made like a campaign to get that nomination instead of was chosen. She was like, "You better do it or you're racist." She kind of like played cards. Yep. yep, that's that's I think that, that's essentially right. And they had to do it to they, the Democrats needed to add something historic to the ticket. Yeah. So it's not right. just like, hey, an old rich white guy who's been in the Senate for forty right. years. No, it's the first ever. This historic. But she's going to run. She's got a. Uh, she's got an eye on the prize. I think so, but I think uh, Newsom beats her, and I think, uh, yeah, that that's my guess. I could be wrong about Who, that. Anybody else? Newsom, Robert Kennedy. No one else. Kamala. I can say. That's about it. And then if does Trump beat everybody? Does get does does uh the DeSantis? Beat? I'm like fifty fifty on it, man. I really don't know. I really don't know. I can, see, I can see some Republicans turning coat if the Democrat is going, hey, we want to bring you guys back. We're not going to call you guys assholes, but I know you don't want to support him. There's a bunch of conservatives who are like, I don't want to support that guy. Give me an option. Be cool about it, and I'll come over. I think more likely is that if it's not Trump as the nominee, yeah. the Trump supporters are not going to get on board with whoever's there. What are they going to do? Trump's people are loyal, dude. So like, they just won't fucking vote. Loyal. Yeah, maybe. Right. You know? Um so, but that's kind of my feeling right now. Very hard. The hardest presidential election this far out to predict it's far out. in my life. It's far out. And But yeah. even this far out, it's a particularly difficult one. At least as, as I far as remember, I see it. I think I was wrong, but I kind of remember like Obama wasn't even really in the running and then just kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. He, yeah, he he was like a, a candidate, but he also had a lot of establishment backing behind him. But yeah, he it was Hillary Clinton's nomination. But like everyone said that was a sure thing. And then he just fucking turned yeah. off. Are you want to do climate and wrap it up? Let's do it. Okay. How are we looking? We're fine. You think so? Uh, I'm much, much, much more concerned about the insane climate policies that they're pushing than I am about climate change. And the, you know, there, there's the level of hubris of the like expert class. 
I mean, just think about how they performed during COVID. And now they're telling you what the global temperature is going to be in a hundred years. You're telling me you've accounted for every variable in a hundred years. What Trump the global thing? temperature is going to be. Did you see that Trump um, campaign thing? Uh, and I'm not sure which one you're talking but about. It's like, they tell me that the temperature of the earth is going to go up one tenth of one fucking percent. <laughs> Whatever. It's pretty funny. Uh, wait, I want to see it. And yet you have people like John Kerry worrying about the climate. The climate. Oh, I heard that the other day. Here we are, guys, threatening us. He's worried about the ocean will rise one hundredth of one percent over the next 300 fucking years. Um, well, it is kind of funny that, like, these people who say the Earth is going to, you know, they're all buying beachfront property and flying in private jets. They don't actually seem to be that concerned about it. Um, I think the, like, the way I look at it, oh, here, you pull this up and then I'll... Yeah, no, go keep going. On. Well, I look at it like, so you've got a lot of people, it's almost like when it comes to climate change, they'll ask like one or two questions when there's really many more questions that you need to ask. So they'll be like, is climate change real? And yeah. if the answer is yes, well, then you better support the Green New Deal or you better support, you know, all of these policies. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's yeah, like, right, right. Like, it's like, well, you haven't drawn the line you, there. Well, yeah, there's so many more questions to be asked here. Like the, the question, like it's like in the same sense as like, is COVID real? Well, then support lockdowns. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Like the real question there is, is COVID real? How bad is COVID? How bad are the lockdowns? You know, like what yeah, are the right, costs? Right, right, of, right, right, what are right. the costs of the lockdowns versus the costs of of not locking down? What effect on COVID will the lockdowns have? And is that effect greater than the damage that lockdowns? Yeah, they won't will do the create? research anymore. So, so with climate change, it's not just like is climate change real? It's like is climate change real? How bad is it going to be? Um, will this the this proposed solution solve climate change? How much damage will this uh, this proposed solution inflict on human beings? And is that damage worth the trade-offs for the damage that it saves from climate change? Now, what technology you, will also catch up with things. Oh, sorry, well, go ahead, go ahead. no, no, no. But that's and then another question is: um, Can we? What are the immediate costs of uh, these policies that are being floated out going to be? And you know. The the major problem with climate change is for the, this is my they perspective. They present it as, dude, we're almost too late. Well, there's this environmentalist um, type, this radical environmentalist type of outlook on the world that almost looks at like, um, like Mother Nature is in a state of perfect harmony, and then human beings are kind of this plague on the earth that throw it out of harmony. Mm -hmm. I just like completely reject that. Um, I don't. Okay, I think na Mother Nature, while beautiful, is a state of like viciousness and just like horrific, you know, things. It's yeah. like predators killing prey, you know. And I think that the Earth is an old George Carlin bit, right? The Earth is fine. We are fucked. Um, but what I care about is people. I'm on Team People. I'm not particularly concerned with animals going extinct. 99.99% of animals who have ever existed have gone extinct, and Ooh. that's just kind of the way things go. Um, you know, I like dogs and stuff, but aside from that, I don't really care. Um, my concern is people. And if you look at, like, climate-related deaths over, say, the last 100, 150 years, the slope is just going down and down and down and down. Less people die from climate-related really? injuries, and that's because of technology. You know, a hurricane comes through, doesn't kill as many people as it used to. Now that's one aspect but i'm just saying that's my mentality about climate is like what for, for people but you now, do worry that it's some shit's going bad there's pol pollution of like resources oh i think or... pollution in, is bad yeah but the reason i think pollution is bad is because it makes like i want clean air for people to right. have so i'm just saying like that's where where i judge this off of is like what's I best for my children and their I children and stuff so um w now when you look at it like that you have to like understand that it's not as simple as like fossil fuels are bad. Fossil fuels are actually really great if you're on team human because that's what allows us to live the standard of life we're living. That's what allows us to like live in advanced economies. We have no other substitute for that right now um, other than perhaps nuclear, but they also don't want to go with with nuclear. And I you know, whatever, that's a separate kind of issue. There was this great exchange 
um, between Thomas Massey, who I mentioned earlier, who I think is the best congressman in the country, um, and Pete Buttigieg, who's the uh, transportation secretary now. And he was talking about his plan, I believe it was to have all um, electric cars by the year 2030. And uh, Thomas Massey is, uh, first of he's like an MIT genius. And he's also really knows his shit with alternative energy. Like he built his own solar panels on his Damn. house and he's like really into that shit. Nerd. He's like invested in like wind yeah. and solar. Like he's big on it. Yeah. So he was like, so he, starts, he goes, first off, I'm a bull on green energy. Like I'm invested in green energy. I like green energy. He goes, here's the issue that you have. Um, and he just starts breaking down like the numbers. I don't remember them exactly, but he just goes through like, he goes, okay, look, electric cars charge at charger charging stations those charging stations are powered by the power grid okay electric cars take up about like i forget the exact numbers but for the sake of argument it was like it's about 12 refrigerators running in your home and he goes now if this summer there's a heat wave everyone's running their air conditioner what do you think would happen in your town if everyone started running 12 air condition, uh, 12 refrigerators? And he goes, oh, yeah, you'd have blackouts because right. the power grid can't support it. And in fact, we, we would need a bigger power grid. Like, right. Uh, that, was that, that, was that was Pete Buttigieg's uh, answer. He goes, yes, on today's power grid. But that's why we need a power grid of the future. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like, yeah, but we're not getting we're that talking about 2030. Years. We're not man. getting that seven so years. So in California, they've passed a law that you can't sell any more um, uh, cars that run on gasoline by 2030. This summer... Or maybe it was this winter. This winter, they were having um like uh they were having power uh, uh roaming blackouts, and Mayor Gavin Newsom came up and said, "Please don't charge your electric car if wow. you have an electric car because it takes up it overloads the." Where do they get solar powering so for those? This is just it's we're not there yet as a technology. And then the if you pull it back further, even if you look at all of the climate scientists and their models for what's going to happen in the next hundred years, yeah. If America went completely carbon neutral tomorrow, it doesn't change anything. If America and Europe went completely carbon neutral, it doesn't change anything. You'd have to get China and India and Russia on board, and the likelihood of that happening India. is near zero. And they're like, India's like, zero. we can't afford to. We, yeah, we're they're, not they're doing going, that. Well, we barely staying business as asking, lives. What you're asking them to do is go back to living in brutal third world country yeah. conditions, and there's no reason why they should agree to that. And that, and then also, I'm not sure that that damage is is not better. Like you know, over the last 30 years, there's something like a billion people have been pulled out of extreme poverty. It's like the greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of the world. Rarely come up um and it really came up because they like went to more free markets in places like china and india and um what that meant was burning a lot more fossil fuels they also have a much higher carbon footprint than they used to this is but what there's I a talk about billion a people who are not in yeah. extreme poverty and if you're if you look at that and you think that's a bad thing like to me you're not on team human it's a, you know like when you see a, a city and you go back there in a third world country and you go back there seven years later you're like i want to see it again. you're like oh there's all this development there's like high rises and these people are wearing like not, like all oh, right you don't want them to develop right right but if you like if that was your brother and he'd be like i'm looking for air conditioning I'm like let me send you some yeah you know? exactly I, you could live like that full time if you wanted to. Yeah. There's woods. You could go. Oh, live dude! In the I went to the woods. Amazon with my partner, and uh, and uh, and and uh, he was like, uh, he was like, uh, I could live here. I'm like, do it then. You could buy a house for eighty bucks. <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? You don't yeah, want to really? live here. Yeah. You don't want to live it. You can just do it. This option is open yeah. to you. You can live. <laughs> they take you very reasonably. Yeah, they love you've, the got, you've got enough money to like. You're lying. You're you just the love the, the romanticism of yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, no, I'm not concerned about climate change. I'm very, very concerned about the kind of like radical climate policies that very much do impoverish people and do ruin and people's might not really lives help. And, and, and make basically no difference. And especially with the president of COVID and how there seems to be this transition from COVID into the climate stuff where it's like, oh, what are we going to have? We're going to have climate lockdowns now. Are we going to have, you know, climate credit scores now? This is stuff that that really concerns me. So that's what I'm concerned climate about. Credit scores, not the yeah. fucking, not the, because uh, they're already starting this with like the. You know what's the, uh, what? 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 Like the, um, you know, this stuff with like the, um, the the like ESGs and there's kind of there's kind of like these these scores for companies on how diverse they are, how climate friendly they are, how all of oh, this. Right, right, right. It's kind of like that. That's the stuff that really uh, freaks me out. I think let freedom. <sighs> Like rain, 
that there will be technological innovations and improvements that we can't possibly predict over the next hundred years. We have no idea. The most brilliant minds in the world could not a hundred years ago have predicted where we'd be at today. It's, and so, like, I don't they think get these clean guys, drinking water from the Dead Sea. Yeah, and I really don't like these like Klaus Schwab guys who are saying like eat the bugs and you'll own nothing and be happy and shit like fuck those guys they're the bad what's guys. what's disheartening is i don't know that guy that's funny what's disheartening is when you realize the recycling in new york and then you find out the stats on it you're like mm -hmm. oh almost none of it gets recycled yeah. it's just um what do they call it um theater yeah recycling Where, and, and you're like no but i've been doing it and it's like i do feel like i'm making a difference but that same way I say is, is when you vote, you feel like you're making a difference, but you're actually not. You're just voting into a corrupt system. It's like voting or wearing a mask. It's yeah. Just, you, and it's, it's like, well, it's better than nothing. It's, like, it's not better than nothing. Yeah. It's literally the same as nothing. Yeah. Or, or In terms of voting, I'd say even worse because then you're just like allowing. It's like having a shitty manager. It's better to have no manager so you do shit for yourself. Yes. In a sense, you're kind of legitimizing the system if you you're vote for these the evil people. And so when that happens, you're like, what? Or like when you go, uh, if you recycle and it does get recycled for one year- you taking one flight offsets that completely. Yeah. Not even like, not even like the entire flight. Your additional weight on that flight right. offsets a one year of recycling. And you're like, oh, this is pointless. Yeah. Yeah. But there's something liberating about that too. Because there it's is not, something planet, liberating about not having not a gonna, chance. You know, as I heard one of these progressive commentators the other day who was like, you know, the planet's on fire. We have to do something about it. And you're like, no, it's not. Like, stop with this fucking I love when alarmism. they use words. It's he like made this. his followers get branded. Like, what? Look, well, tattooed. I'm like, why'd you say branded then? Yeah. yeah what a like, weird thing to say then. Yeah. Yeah. M made? Also, what do you mean? He forced them? Right. Like, no, nah, just ask. So you're like, if he said, because you know. Ask for a tattoo? Force the branding? Those are different things. Because it's kind of like, you know that if you said a bunch of his followers chose to get a tattoo, that just doesn't sound so well, bad. Well, okay, yeah. So you have to say, he made them get branded. And you're like, yeah, but that's not. That's not what happened. happened. That's like, not at that all That would be happened. horrible. Yeah. If he held them down at knife point and forced them to be branded, <sighs> then yes, I would be with you. What an yeah. outrage. Meanwhile, fucking black fraternities make them get printed. <laughs> it's like a real thing. They burn it. Yeah. Well, Dave. Our final State of the Union? Yeah, I think so. You want to have a drink? I, not really. I actually got to rush back. Okay. But I would love to. I mean, like, right now, one little one. All right, fine. One, right toast. now, one little one. Let's do it. What do you got? Uh, just some scotch. My favorite scotch on ice right now. Nah, let's just have a little bit. Um, I I will say, dude, with yeah. the at risk of fucking being a faggot at the end of all of this, I really do. I fucking appreciate you for having me on all these years, dude. And you really, you were, you were always uh, for people who don't know this, because you know you're such a goddamn psychopath. <laughs> Uh, you were really always like such a great friend to me, man. I remember like, I remember, I don't even know if you remember this, but I remember you like, ca you calling me and being like, uh, you were like, uh, what are you doing today? And I was like, oh, nothing. And you were like, okay, we're going to lunch. And you took me out to lunch. And this was like years ago. I mean, this must be fucking at least 10 years ago. And you were like, all right, I want to talk about your career. And you were like, why aren't you doing more? Like, you're really funny. You should be doing more. Like, what's your plan here? What are you doing? I remember and at the time, like, I mean, not compared to like where we are now, but at the time I was like, you're really doing stuff like you were fucking doing huge things. You know yeah, what I mean? This headline. And like, yeah, yeah like and I was like, I always thought it was just so cool that you like were like kind of gave a shit and took an interest. And you were the first one, man, who put me on like a big platform and let me talk about this shit. So I'm always very grateful to you for that. Yeah, I'm glad we could do this again. This has been a, a, the, a, a regular thing on this podcast. So I'm glad we got it done before it's fucking over. Yeah, me too. Um, and you'll do this same message in other platforms. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, of course. Um, but it was a cool way to just like talk honestly and openly about everything going on because you do your research and I, I'm not like kowtowing to anything. No, I like that you'd always kind of like, you, you always, um, you'd listen to what I have to say and kind of, you know, rattle that around and go, okay, that well, sense. here's oh, wait, what I think. Here's a, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. and I always appreciate that. I thought it always made for great conversations. Yeah. Well, buddy, you're great. You're great. I'm glad we could do this again. Cheers. Petey. It's like chewing your scotch. Yeah, I'm more of a bourbon guy. I'm not used to scotch. Yeah, it's, it's not sweet. It's it's very, it's run through moss for sure. Um, Yeah, what do you got in the future? What's going on? 
I'm going just fucking. Uh, I'm trying to put an an hour. Part of the problem out. still going. Oh, cool. Part of the problem. I'm trying to do an hour for this summer. I got it. Like I'm really happy with where it is right now. Yeah. Like a kind of like couple little things that need to kind of come together, and I got to just like kind of figure it out. You know, kind of whittle it down from like an hour fifteen. It's all puzzle to, pieces. You know, but like that's fine. I can record it as an hour fifteen, an hour twenty. But I'm really happy about the, this hour. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good. And um, then I'm just I've been hitting the road really hard, so just doing that. And it's cool, man. Like fucking selling tickets for the first time. It's and, cool. Like, it's really people great. show up to see you do like talk out loud. It's like a fucking cool thing. And I try to like fucking remind my like I I really like. It could have gone the other way. Yeah, and and dude, this is like I kind of have in a lot of ways like everything I wanted, and now that I have it, I kind of I'm like, okay, well, let's set my sights for a little bit more than this. But if I had, if you had told me like a few years ago what I'd be making on the road in a weekend, I'd be like, dude, that's fucking insane, man. This yeah. is just so I'm just really enjoying it, and I got you know I'm very lucky. Like my son who had like health issues is doing great, and yeah. fucking I just bought a house. Really love living there, and. Got a great wife, great little kids. And Jealous about that, the way you talk about it with the, in the woods. It's like, that is my dream, and I love this city, but also, like, I love the woods. Yeah, yeah. No, there's something cool about it. And it's not that far out either, you know? So I can, like, get there in an hour. Yeah. Except right now, when I jump in an Uber, I might hit crazy traffic. Because it's not the best time. But Yeah. Sunday, at least. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, take that through. I'll probably okay be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, well, it's a real comedian thing. You go, yeah. oh yeah, it's not a weekday. I guess that's <laughs> we not, don't have weekdays. I guess that's weekends. not a thing. Yeah. I, don't know. I always say comics can't have insomnia because we go to sleep at four a.m. when we want, so <laughs> it doesn't even exist. Um, well, yeah, man, fucking, you're the man, dude. Oh, yeah, so are you. Best of luck in your next chapter. Thanks, thanks. All right, everybody. That's the 2023 State of the Union address. One of the most, I think, the most common between the Danish and O'Neill. Every 50 episodes and this the most common repeatable fucking uh, podcast I've done so it's a good way to go out I got one or two left uh, my fucking hero of, of interviewing Ron Bennington he'll be coming up to talk about interviews and that's it uh, see you guys <laughs> I don't know it's been a fun run um, alright bye this song is owned by Ari Shafir. this song is owned by Ari Well, that's the episode, everybody. Thank you very much, Dave Smith, for coming in, as always, and uh, doing a great job really t- telling, like, interesting stuff. That Ukraine thing is, like, doesn't justify it, but, like, man, it does help explain why it went off. When they present you a story of, like, someone does something just because they're evil. I remember this from um, film class. We were talking about maybe Travis Bickle. No, it wasn't Travis Bickle. I think it was the it was Mean Streets, and it was like, no, no, it was Taxi Driver. That was Travis Bickle. I remember asking like, well, why was he like this? Why did he why would why did he act like this? And someone's like, because he's or why? I know. I asked why was he going after the politician. Um, and someone in the class was like, he's because he's crazy, and I'm like, no, no, that's why he's trying to kill him. But like, there's got to be a reason he's going off on him. You know, like if you want to kill yourself. Um, because your shoes are untied and you don't feel like tying them. Like, okay, that you're crazy, but there's a reason. You know, you have a, something to point to. Uh, and it's nice now. I have something to point to. Man, the sun is down on me. Um, so that was interesting. That was interesting. Like I said in the intro to that that <sighs> gender stuff. I I really think it's just kind of over. Um, and the idea, and I've talked to Dave since the podcast. The idea that like they're coming after your kids and going to change them. I mean, medically, it's not going to happen without re- permission. So I don't see what the issue is. And then when they're like, I, I guess the other side is that they're, they're mentally deranged. But like, I-, I don't, dude, it just seems so backwards. It's like, it just really mimics h- how we treated homosexuals for the longest time that they've got a problem. I, I- and like I said, in Berlin, you just see that it's like no one gives a shit. Even that side doesn't give a shit. They see you trying with the vase. They see you like, oh, you're just behind. It's okay. No one cares. They're like, what are you? It's like more like, what are you into? You know, that's why I love this city. What are you into? It's like the standard question. 
It's just a standard conversation. What are you into? Instead of what we got is what are you against? I've talked about it before. I just don't like it. I don't like that. Look at me. I'm against that. Point taken, Berlin. I'm into dancing. And it doesn't really matter who's there. I'm into dancing. I'm into getting fucked up. And I'm into jumping up and down the way white people do. And uh, <laughs> this is a city for it, bro. Uh, um, but yeah, it is interesting. It is interesting. And that they're going to teach in your schools. I remember that. That was like a, I had a bit about it, about gay marriage. And I was asking the crowd. I got a lot of my material from the crowds. Uh, definitely got a lot of Jew material from, from asking crowds. But I was like, um, what, what's the problem? And somebody's like, they're going to teach it in your schools, homosexuality. And I was like, I remember getting a good bit out of it. I was like, do you think they're going to teach your kids how to be gay? And the guy was like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, I don't think that's what it is. I think they're going to like present like, in a scenario when you're doing math, they're going to present Adam and Bill instead of like, you know, Samantha and John. <laughs> I think that's really all it is. Um, it is a little early to start with sexualization, but at the same time, like maybe not. I don't know. I don't know anything about the education system. Um, didn't they used to revolt against that? Against the idea of recording? I am about sexuality in general. I think they did. Like don't ever t don't teach uh, sex ed in my schools. I think that was a thing too. So I really don't know if you're supposed to teach it at a young age. I will tell you, all the people I know who smoked weed with their parents when they were 15. They they handle it way better. And all these people out here handle alcohol and drugs a lot better. They know how to do it on weekends. That being said, there's a lot of addicts on the streets, but not as many as New York. Um. And not nearly as many as, as um, L.A. or Austin. Joe, I love your club, but that city is fucking disgusting. Um, downtown, just downtown. Um, okay, again, the pre-sale is uh, May 17th for Parks Casino, just outside Philadelphia. Um, St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Kansas. St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, on November, Parks Casino is October 21st. Uh, I gotta get this. Um, hold on, just keep going. Uh, but St. Louis, I'm excited about it. I'm also adding Omaha. This won't be in there, but I'm adding Omaha. Um, on November 1st, it would be a good way to start the theater tour. I got a theater tour. The wrong side of history, everybody. It's a great, oh, I'm getting some good, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I talked to McVader, Torelli, picks. Uh, one of them was me. I'll, I'll put it on my Instagram. It's me um, um, serving a <laughs> nice hot toast to Michael Jackson. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see what Kyla said. Um, Kyla, Kyla, Kyla. Okay, here we go. Okay, promo code evil. Oh, Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut. That's a good one. That's a 23rd. February 3rd, excuse me, that's right after Boston. Dude, Boston, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say again, except for the clubs, except for Omaha, um, I'm saving 50 seats at $20 a pop for you. So you want, if, you, if you're if you poor and you can't afford them, again, they're not going to be the closest ones. They're going to be far away, but I'm saving them for you. Only 50, you know. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a percentage. It's like 5% of the size rooms I'm doing, you know. I mean, I'm not like, if, if we were doing Segura's rooms, <laughs> 15 tickets would be nothing. That's his comp list. <laughs> I'm not doing the Hydra Dome in Glasgow. I can't, I don't do any domes. If it's a dome, I'm not doing it. Not even dome with a rock. They won't even let me in there for different reasons. You know, I could draw for sure. I could get a crowd if I went to the dome with a rock. I would get it. I would fucking get it hyphy in there. But I'm talking about playing shows. Um, yeah, 50 tickets at 20 bucks a pop and limited service charges. So you want to get in there fast. Promo code is EVIL. Goes on sale uh, May 17th. Uh, Parks Casino, Fox, uh, that's October 21st. Foxwoods, February 3rd. And St. Louis, Missouri at the pageant on November 12th. I also should have in there Indianapolis. I think it's already in there. Um, Indianapolis. Wait, there was another. Oh, Indianapolis. No, Louisville uh, could be there. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, 
some other places, the clubs will go like fast, fast. That's going to be like on the Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. I'm doing a bus tour. It should be interesting. Hopefully, I can get Adrian to open for me for some of these shows, but I don't know. Anyway, regardless, it will be great. But use promo code EVIL. I'm also going to do other stuff. It's going to, I might wait till then. I don't know where they're going to finish up. It might be Atlanta and stuff like that. Who cares? Guys, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Dave Smith. Don't forget to check out his podcast if you'd like to hear more of this talk and probably funnier. He's probably more in the pocket there. I know I interrupted him plenty, but it's a conversation. I want to understand. And some of the stuff, I'm like, I get it. I want to talk back. But then you got to remember, he's talking to the audience. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, until next week. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Elephant in the room. Yeah, I guess I've uh, been holding on to this for too long. The reason me and Dave Smith rush us, we usually do it over the summer, is because, uh, yeah, I'm in the... I'm ending the podcast. I don't I don't know how to I don't want to get emotional. It's not my way, as you know, if you follow me. It's not my way. Um I, What was that? Was that a hair on? Um it's just it's time. It's time. Um I mean I could go into it. It's become, uh, no one's going to really understand it. It's, it's been 12 years. I don't know. It's, you don't want to do the same thing. I'll do other things. Um, but in some moments, it's become a job. And I really worked hard my whole career to avoid those. Um, you know, help save me over COVID. I'll talk about, I guess I'll talk about this in the last episode. I got two episodes left. Um, The one I've been trying to get for a long, long time, a dream episode, is with Ron Bennington. We talk about the interview process itself, because he is who I, um, he's who I modeled my uh, my interview style off. His unmasked series was the best. I did one. Um, at Skankfest one, I think maybe Skankfest two, but in Brooklyn. Um, and we just talked about how to do interviews. We talked about what you're looking for. It was really great. We went over to his, his, uh, it's just, it's man. When do I talk about this later or now? I should have it planned out. I guess I'll do it in the last episode. That seems better. Right in the intro. Yeah, I should write out all the reasons and I should write out all the fun stuff we did. But I i mean, you guys saved me over COVID. I was done, you know, and it did become a job. But it was like, I don't know how I'm going to make a living anymore. I, I Stand-up was dead. Forget all the different stages of COVID. Stand-up was gone and it might never have come back. We were instantly trying to be like, I got to scrounge up $100 for this, 200 bucks for that. I know anyone in Berlin's like, 100 bucks is a great DJ set. Who can play? Help pay your squat. Um. Yeah, it it's time. There's a lot of reasons. but And I wanted to end this a long time ago. Uh, I was trying to parlay it right into another project. And I, I'm aware that a lot of you guys are not going to follow me um, to anything else I do. I'll do other stuff. I'll be in other people's podcasts. I'll have more time for creativity, um, which is what I really want. It's what I value more than anything. So um, if this is the end of the road for us, it's been a fucking great ride. It's been nice, uh, you know, sharing a carriage with you. Um, if the people want to follow me, you know, continue to follow me. Subscribe to the YouTube. I'll put up more stand-up now. I'll have more time to think about the thing I care about, the only thing I care about. I don't even care about my fucking dog as much as I care about stand-up. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, let me think. Of, let me get my thoughts together. But it's been a long time coming. This would have been over in October if I could have parlayed my next project. Um, you'd be tripping. Which will still come. But I got to work out how it's going to be released. And that took some time and whatever. So you guys have benefited from that, I guess. <laughs> the ads have been great too. Um, it's not like I'm not making money. I'm making more than I ever made. <laughs> and But... Uh, 
I'll go into it in the last episode. But next week will be the Jew commentary. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to sit at this table for the next six hours, seven hours, something like that. I'm going to do the Jew commentary for the special. I haven't done a Jew commentary track in a while. The first one was Revenge for the Holocaust, my first album. And the last one will be uh, for my special, my great best thing I've maybe ever done. Um, that and this is not happening. And banned it. Um, I'm going to sit right here on my last day in Berlin. I'm not going to go out on a day that's shaping up to be 65, 68 degrees and sunny. And I'm going to sit here. I'm going to do it. Um, and it's not just this time. I, yeah, I could have done it before. It, it's always. You're on the road for a month straight. You got to fit time in. So I make time. But it's become a job. But these next two are going to be great. Um, I can't wait to tell you all the stuff behind uh, that went into making Jew. Some deleted stuff. I hope I can find that deleted stuff. Let me try. Um, and then the uh, fucking dream podcast with Ron Bennington to close it out. So, um, I, I don't know. Talk amongst yourselves. There's probably a Ari Shafir Reddit out there that you can get on. Um, but come see me on the road. That's what I love doing the most. Uh, the wrong side of history. Um, coming. Let's see. Besides, it starts October 21st. Um, Philly, Benz, Philly. Let's call it Philly. Park Casino. Um, and then we got, let's do it real quick. com slash tour. Um, uh, well, Vienna is tonight. Ljubljana, Bucharest, Cluj, Nabajoka, Athens, May 16th. Oof. Hey, anybody bring stuff to Athens? I'm going to the islands afterwards, and I'm going to need stuff. Um, wrong Side History Tour. Uh, Austin's sold out. That's a good place to kick it off. There's Austin. My buddy's club. My buddy owns a club. How fucking weird is that? <laughs> Omaha, November 1st. Minneapolis, November 2nd. Madison, November 3rd. Chicago, November 4th is almost sold out, so hurry up and get tickets. Iowa City, November 5th. And then we got, damn, there's a couple of gigs. Uh, I think Springfield. I think, uh, let me see. Um, I'll find it, Springfield. Omaha, May 1st. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oklahoma City, Springfield, Fort Wayne. Um, all coming out. Um, where is this tour thing? Um, Kansas City, November 9th. Indianapolis, November 11th. Probably, probably uh, Louisville, uh, November 10th. But the deal they're giving me is fucking shitballs. So I don't know. I guess they're trying to find something else. Boston on February 2nd. Uh, two shows. The first show is almost sold out. Um, get tickets for the second. I mean, hurry up. That's selling like hotcakes. And then, um, and then, um, Foxwoods, February 3rd. And then, you know, I'll fill in a bunch of dates in between that. I just don't know when those will go on sale, but definitely check back, uh, May 6th, 17th. May 16th to announce, May 17th for the pre sale. Use promo code EVIL for the wrong side of history tour, my new stand up comedy tour, all new material from Jew. Um, in case you're wondering, um, and I've been working on this hour for a few years. It's 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 fucking it's fucking crushed. I need a fucking ending to make it a real show, but man, I'm loving it. Um, I, I'm having fun out here too. I'm having fun out here doing references to. Uh, I gotta do this podcast has been nine hours. I gotta go. Um, but I'm gonna do stuff like Atlanta and all down the East Coast and Charlotte and all those things. So keep checking back. If we don't get those out in the, in the May seventeenth presale, promo code evil. Um, then we will probably get it out in like September because they told me not to do it over the summer. Guys, great. I'll do this. I'll do everything you want to hear in, uh, in the in the Ron Bennington episode. Um, all right. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 516. I know it now. The 2023 State of the Union Address. For Dave Smith, I'm Ari Shafir saying so long.
I got it that time. I got it that time. Just at the end, I'm fucking starting to figure it out. <laughs> Till next week, everybody. Next week, Orange Fear Jew commentary. Definitely tune in for that.